family dramas take center stage on airline, where patience is a virtue. I just saw their behavior, and I saw the behavior of their chaperones, and it is not acceptable. And anxious parents don't like what they're told. They're going to have to purchase the ticket for the infant. Will they You're refund kidding. it to us? And could this be the last straw? They want 3000 some odd dollars to get us the hell out of here. Whether traveling in families, group trips, or flying unaccompanied, children are a common sight at the airport. For many of them, flying can be a frightening experience. But today at Chicago, it's the behavior of a group of rowdy children on board an inbound flight from Vegas that has left the adult passengers frightened and upset. Okay, I'm on my way. Manager Colleen Bregel has been called in to sort out the incident. Um, they need me at B20. There's some customers that have just come in from another flight that want to see a manager. I'm not sure why. The police have been brought in to deal with 40 rowdy passengers still on board. Meanwhile, the other 60 passengers from the flight are at the gate demanding compensation. Hi, Hi I'm Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hi. What can I do for you guys? Well, probably the worst flight I've ever been on okay. in my entire life. Something happened with the crew? Not the crew, not Southwest whatsoever, but you've got people that will not listen to the flight crew. And in my opinion, everybody on that flight deserves a free ticket. Is that everybody waiting to see me? Yeah. Look, 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 you guys get some vouchers out. I'll be right back. Guys, we do apologize. It seems that a group of young BMXers has been running rampant during the flight, defying all requests to sit down and terrifying their fellow passengers. We've got a whole riot downstairs with people complaining about uh, the about behavior that was going on up here. Yeah, that's how bad it was. Are we pressing charges? No, I don't. Okay. It was just rowdy behavior. Well, I mean, you, your whole plane is downstairs. No cameras. Stop telling the tape. No, they're not. The Chicago police stopped our cameras for fear of escalating the situation. The sound, however, continued to record. Sir, this isn't amusing. No, you can't blame other people. Where's the crew? No, these kids are just as disrespectful as some of the adults. Okay. It's just probably the craziest thing I've ever seen on an airplane since 9-11. It's just... I could imagine people still act like it on airplane. Well, you had children that were on the plane that would not listen to the stewardess. They would not listen to the captain over the PA. They ran up and down the aisles. They wouldn't listen to their parents. They were throwing things back and forth. The captain kept coming over the intercom and asking them to please be seated. Please put your seatbelt on. We hit turbulence. The kids were still running up and down the aisles, stepping on people. Over at the ticket desk, a mother and her two sons have arrived late and missed their flight to San Diego. I don't want to go stand by. I want to be, I, I want to have an assigned seat on a flight. I was supposed camera. to be at work this morning. Okay, girl. Check out. Sharon McInerney and her sons could be in for a long wait for the next flight. If there's nothing at 9.15, we have to stand by the whole damn day. Check another airline for me. American West, any place, anything? Just check another airline for me. I want to get out of Chicago. Okay, let's Our flight was supposed to leave in 10 minutes and we missed our flight and they got nothing available. All day, you know? I'm gonna miss a whole day at work for this. Got here late and didn't expect the line to be like this. Then it was a problem with the credit card, I guess, or something. I mean, I'm They advised device. you to be here two hours before departure. You showed up 20 minutes before departure. Because the line. The line takes about 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes. Well, we've never been here before, so I didn't know this, OK? Hey, everything's sold out. It's Monday. It's a busy day, so everything's overbooked. That's ridiculous. They're pretty bored to go to Absolutely insane. It's not like this in San Diego. Sharon and her sons have no choice but to go on standby. Uh, Justin, get over here and take this. Back on flight 1448, Colleen is losing her cool with the rowdy passengers. Now, we never got out no, of our seats. I am not going to have children this is disrespecting us, this is calling us oh. names, and disrespecting us. A young kid with a Playboy magazine showing nude photos, kids running down the aisle. And you have a gentleman on there telling people, we're going to die. Grab your butt. You know, kiss your ass goodbye. And 
you have this, there was one lady on the flight that had never flown before, and she's listening to this for the very first time. She's scared half to death. Excuse me. Nobody is going to call me an MF. Yes, we did on the aircraft. Let's just leave this jetway. I'm not sure that any of you are traveling with us today. They had an attitude that they have to walk in the door. That's what I was trying to tell her. She was going to get to You know what? You should be setting a better example for these children. Oh, we're not done with it. I do apologize, folks. I truly apologize for your experience on this aircraft today. That is not acceptable behavior. I just saw their behavior, and I saw the behavior of their chaperones, and it is not acceptable. And I do apologize. And I'm not done with it. Right, I need the phone. Oh, that's, that's the coordinate. That's the one. I got to call CSC. Okay. Bye. The main perpetrator on the flight was one of the adult chaperones, and he intends to make his connection to Louisville wanted to see a manager because the behavior of the children and the adults that were on this aircraft was unbelievable. The children on the aircraft are calling the Chicago police MFers. Um, the children are being just as disrespectful as the adults. The adults are screaming. They're connecting here in Chicago. I'm, I'm denying boarding to any adults and children that are, are behaving this way. It's a tough call. Colleen may have to refuse boarding to all 40 passengers with the BMX group. At Chicago Midway Airport, there are still more difficulties at the ticket desk, but this time, it's a toddler causing a ruckus. The Temple family is going from Chicago to San Diego. The ticket agent is questioning the age of their youngest child, who looks older than two years old. She needs proof of age. Then she can go and verify it. She's only one and a half, 16 months. And now we're just trying to get home, and now they say we need to have a birth certificate or something with her birth date on it. Yeah. Do you guys have the yellow slip that you filled out? Yes. It's in that envelope. Where's that envelope that I well, gave I threw you? it away. We didn't need that. It that was in that. We threw away that yellow slip, it's just on the way out. It's nothing we need on the way back. You have it in the computer, right? That she was with us on the way out. In the record, it doesn't show that there was an infant traveling. What I'm going to have to do is you're going to have to purchase the ticket for the infant. Will they you're refund kidding. it to us? Huh? Will Can you not yes. call the hospital you, and verify? Whatever ticket you pay, and when you submit the birth certificate, they'll give you a refund. It's possible, but if not, you can come on in and call. Yeah, yeah. we'll do it. You can do that. Not a problem. I can even ask for the supervisor. Back at the gate, Colleen has to decide what to do with a group of rowdy BMXers. We're going to see if we even allow them to travel on the next aircraft. We won't put customers through that again. Okay, so I'm my, sorry. My question is, though, if you were standing in my shoes, do you think that what we went through was only worth a $50 voucher? No, not at all. And, and you'll probably get something from us. I'm going to send this into the executive offices, okay? Yeah. I, seriously, that, what I'm looking at yeah. is a free I know, ticket. I, you know, and I don't blame you. I, and, and I only spent a few minutes up there, and I am truly sorry. That behavior is yeah. not acceptable. The group in question is traveling to a bike rally and has a different perspective on the incident. There's 40 kids, they're excited, long flight, you know, and just kids going up and down, using the restroom, talking to each other, switching seats. I got this feeling that they didn't understand that they were making people very scared around them or nervous. They thought kind of everything was funny. There was lots of kids, it was just, they were just out of control. It was blown out of proportion. Totally. And the police officers that yeah. came, they stormed that plane like there was like it, there was a terror into a pissing match between both, you know, the older group and the and the police. Across the country at LAX, it's a big day for 10-year-old Mark Gomez, who is traveling alone for the first time to visit cousins in Las Vegas. I go on first or I go on last? You're gonna go on first. You'll be okay. There'll be a flight attendant helping you the whole time. Thank you. Got it? Yeah. Okay, let's move. I know he's in good hands, my family, they're good, but still, you know, he's my baby. <laughs> so, this is his, you know, trip without me, and I'm gonna be, my nerves are gonna be rattled. Okay, you want to go 
Don't hold on to that. Okay. Ready to go? Yeah. Oh. Nice. Bye, Mom. Wow. Exciting? Back in Chicago, 11-year-old Kenneth Marvo has just arrived, but has been unaccompanied since the plane pulled up to the gate. He was just standing in the hallway, and the person that was supposed to get him off the plane, she went back on the plane. He was supposed to have been monitored here. They don't even know I got him. That's, yeah, that's, that's not acceptable. Anita calls the gate for more details. That it ain't good. Anybody could have came and picked my son up. And he's standing down there by himself. Back in LA, Mark is in the capable hands of flight attendant Heather Hale. Now, you've flown with us before, right? Yeah. So you're a pro at this. But Lydia's flying solo. Last night, he was kind of upset. So I told him when he comes back, we're going to, I told him we'll go out on a hot date. We're going to have a dinner and a movie and something. Oh, I hope he's not crying. The first time on. Huh? First time on a flight. Oh, really? The boat by feel, myself. I don't think he's going to only crash that once every five times. <laughs> Back in Chicago, Anita gets to the bottom of how 11 year old Kenneth Marvo was allowed to wander around the airport alone. I don't want you to be offended if I, if I say it. And, and, and I understand that we, we get busy. But it's so important that we be attentive to minors, because legally, we are legally responsible for them. Yes, ma'am. And, and you are right. And I am. I, I have no excuse for um, we not being more attentive to your son. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, I did talk to the agent at the gate, and she said that she was busy. And when she looked up, he was gone. But that's not an excuse. We did drop the ball on, um, on that part of taking care of, of him. If you want to try to fly us again, I, I'm welcome to give you a travel voucher for his next trip. I know it is not going to make up for what happened, but we want to try to make it up. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I am bothered by the fact that that baby was able to walk away and she not know us. So we're going to talk to the agent later. The Temple family's dilemma with their 16-month-old continues. Mrs. Temple is determined to prove her daughter's age to avoid buying a ticket. So she phones a friend at the hospital where the baby was born to get her birth certificate faxed. What do you need? Like, do you need the medical record number or what? Well, do you want to verify this? Because she's looking at it right she now. Has the right, that would be fine. She has a number. Yeah, medical record number works. OK, give me just like five minutes. Five minutes. You got it. Thank Thanks, Jen. I owe you. OK, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay. So she's going to fax it. I'll probably see gonna... her Sunday at church and say, I owe you a lunch, honey. <laughs> well, what I would do? All right. Thank God it was Jan. Hey, my I know you're big for your age. I mean, I, they're upset because they know that their child's under two, and I, I'm used to having them shout at me. I mean, just coming to the airport to begin with is rough. Bye. And then she tries to blame it on me for not being here in time? I don't think so. Sharon McInerney and her sons are now on standby for a flight to San Diego. Will there be three seats left? Three, I only have three seats left. Well, there we go, Matt. Let's go. Let's go to America West. Screw this. You want to spend all day in the airport? The flight out, the, the last flight is booked. I'm just trying to get out of here. Thank you. They want 3,000 some odd dollars to get us the hell out of here. And nobody else has got anything. We're stuck. I mean, a Southwest rule is screwed. It looks like Sharon's finally run out of options. There's no way out of here. In Chicago, Colleen continues to deal with the rowdy group of BMX bikers and consults with her boss, Ginny. 
It's a group of about 40 adults and oh, children. I just checked them in here. You checked well, in the Louisville? Going to Louisville? Well, we're going to go follow up because I think um, I just checked in them in here. Okay. Both Colleen and Ginny speak to the Las Vegas pilot to get his version of events. Two hours into the flight, and I turned the seatbelt sign on and set him down, but that didn't phase right. him. No, I... And then, right. about 30 minutes later, we had to dodge some thunderstorms, and I set the flight attendants down and had them strap in. And they said, there are pe people still back there standing up and running around being crazy. I mean, they're just ignoring everybody, including me. They finally decide to deny boarding to the main perpetrator of the group, one of the adult chaperones, and let the others fly on to Louisville. Yeah. We're denying him. Yeah, because he made the comment, and he, on the plane, admitted that he was the one that was right. instigating right. and, right. you know, so. Right. Just going on the next one. You're on the next one. I already told him, make sure you don't go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, no, no more drinking. <laughs> I'm just in life to have fun, man. Right? People can't have fun. But if I would have said something, terrorism or shoot you or something, I can understand. But I say, yeah. Nothing, nothing, I said, nothing, nothing like that. that. Under the watchful eye of the Chicago police, the BMX group, minus one, finally boards their flight. I've never seen a group behave that way so disrespectfully and so rude. And we, at one point, did actually have to assess whether we were going to allow them to travel on this flight. That would have been my first denied boarding of 40. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to get out of Chicago to go to San Diego. Do you have anything available? Sharon McInerney has tried every which way okay, to escape you. Chicago without success. Great. We can't get out of here. I want to go, I wanna go home to San Diego. I want to sue Southwest, man. I, we can't get out of here. Uh, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. It's stuck in damn Chicago. She ends up asking Anita if she can get her on a flight today. Let me see. Just to make sure I don't have a better way for you to get to San Diego, just double check it, OK? I mean, if the girl hadn't screwed around with my credit card so long, we could have made her. And then she tells these guys, oh, well, she came up here 20 minutes before boarding. That's not true. OK, so let's prepare you that you're going to go through Kansas City. It's, again, a double connection, so it changes the planes again in Albuquerque to get you to San Diego. This is the only way we can do it. This is the only way we can do it. Oh, my God. I've never gone through so much hassle in all my life. Like. It's a roundabout way back to San Diego, but it's their only option. Are you available now? Back in LAX, Lydia waits anxiously for the call to say her son has arrived safely in Las Vegas. bother me when I let, let him go. But now I'm thinking, I, go, <laughs> I hope he didn't cry in the plane. We get a few, uh, they come on crying. And it's sometimes heart-wrenching, really, to see so many kids doing that. But he's a jewel. Back at Chicago Midway, Mike Temple is waiting for his family at the gate. Their flight leaves in 10 minutes, but there's no sign of them. You haven't seen them? Reunited, they head to the gate only to be confronted with another problem. Yeah, but we're missing a boarding, we're missing the boarding card. Did you guys check in? Because I didn't take any out of the folder. Okay, we're we had an hour and a half when we got to the gate, no. yeah. Let's go. I've got 10 minutes here, nine minutes before it leaves. Okay, right here. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Okay. On board at last. But their troubles continue because the remaining four seats are in different rows. You don't realize these children are five and under. Bless your heart. All because of you. <laughs> All because of you. Awesome. You were a perfect passenger for us. This must be Cousin Mike he's been talking about all day. We have fun, though. I mean, New Year's is his totally favorite. 
Okay, and then we just have to have your signature right there. We love it. Oh. Oh, there they are. Hello? Hi, baby, you made it? Good flight, have fun? Yeah. Did you cry on your way down to the plane? A little bit. I was crying too. See, you jinxed me, you're not supposed to do that. Remember, we made a deal, no crying. Right, I love you. Okay, I love you too. I'll call you every morning. I'm gonna call you tonight and I'll call you in the morning. Okay, goodbye. Bye bye. She told me she cried. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas. We'll see. Let me just take a look. Let me see if I can find Sharon. Back in Chicago, Anita is absolutely determined to make sure Sharon gets on a flight today. Standby passengers, Sharon McInerney to the podium, please. Standby passengers, Sharon McInerney to the podium. Come on, Sharon. Thank you, made it, honey. Oh, come on, guys. You didn't trust me, did you, Sharon? You didn't trust me, did you? Oh, God. I'm very happy. I'll get home a whole lot earlier than 517 tonight. You guys are welcome to board, OK? Right through the open door. Thank you. Come on, guys, let's go. OK, Sharon, have a good one. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate your help. All right. So thank God she made it. So she'll get to San Diego at a decent hour, uh, as opposed to 8 o'clock tonight. I'm going to my next battle. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> if there's one thing to learn on airline today, it's don't take no for an answer. When you need a favor. I don't need anything from you. Then don't ask me. Whoa, 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 whoa. When you need a miracle. You guys coming? And when you're looking for the light. I'm afraid of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> Early morning in Chicago. Flight 1492 is boarding. They just, I told her to call me at 14. Ticket counter, soup copy. You can do it quick. I mean, because we need to get our team there. You know what? Five confirmed people just checked in now for our flight. So we can only you have call six me at Ticket okay. counter, soup copy, your radio, please. We got our players here, and they're telling us that we don't have room yeah, keep for them on the flight. So we're trying to figure out ways to get our team to a soccer tournament in Tampa Bay. Hello. So we're in, we're in a yeah. bad way right here. Park Forest's soccer team has been let down by a rival airline. Half the team are stranded at the airport. For coach Peter Follenweider, Sandy is the team's only hope. Sandy, call me at Bravo 12 as soon as you can. Are they not responding? We actually have 12 or 14. on the Tampa flight here, and we're going to see if we can try to help these guys out. I can try to run them through the employee line. We you need to do it quick. Sandy's gonna, she's on her way up so she can meet them and bring them back to security to be you know well. We need to get our team down there because we can't pull a no-show. This is a chance for them to show how good they are in front of college coaches. There's a lot of scholarships riding on some of how they played this weekend. From now on, it's a race against time. In L.A., Deborah and Richard Lynch have been separated from their family. She said she put us on this flight at 5 o'clock. Were they on this flight? Them and us on this flight. Unfortunately, there are no more seats on this flight. Oh, that's great, because they're going to get to San Diego or Phoenix, where we have the car keys. They're traveling in a group, but they're the only ones who haven't made the flight. We were downstairs, and she put us on this flight with the rest of our group, and then we get up to the gate, and they're telling us we're not on this flight. The other agent was not aware of exactly what we were doing, and therefore, that's why it happened. And, and how long are we going to be stuck here? And most likely till about uh, 8, 8.30. So what do you want me to do right now? I can go down, give them the keys, ask them to get off. I don't want to talk about it. Exactly. If you want, I can run down the car keys to them, so at least I won't be stuck in Phoenix. And then will you drive me home when I'm stuck in Phoenix? Unfortunately, no, I cannot do that. I'm just trying to tell you what I can do as of this moment. Can you calm my wife down? I can try, but I doubt it. Frank Wisbicki Jr. survived 13 months in Iraq with his buddy Adam. Now, after a couple of hours in the airport, Adam seems to have gone AWOL. I walked in a little trinket store. He was sitting at the coffee shop, turned back around, and he was gone. 
Joined by a newfound friend, Callie, they search the airport for the missing soldier. I think he's passed out in the corner, honestly. But I don't know. We're checking all the corners, so. We started drinking when we left Kuwait. I guess my tolerance was a little better than his, because uh, we both drank about the same. He got up and I didn't. Van Dusen, are you in here? Nope, let's keep going. Negative. We didn't go down this way, did we? Any luck? No, nah, still lost. Southwest Airlines is paging Adam Van Dusel. Adam Van Dusel, please come to gate B5 to meet your party. Thank you. Yeah, that flight's going. And he's not on it. He's not on it. He holds oh more than a pinchy cup. Come on, this the love. The 5 o'clock flight to Phoenix left with the rest of the lynch party on the plane. But Deborah and Larry got left behind. I just saw him get on that plane, and they were going, come on, you know? And then he's telling us that we weren't booked on this flight, which is not what the people told us downstairs. There was a mix-up by the gate agents. Deborah wants some straight answers. Do you have another flight that's going to Phoenix We're going to confirm you on the 8.30 flight. The next flight is at 8 o'clock. That's overbooked. The one that we actually protected you on will be the 8.30 departure. No, I just don't understand why the gate agent gave us the tickets and said that... If he would have checked in with the same agent, then everyone would have been uh, protected the exact same way. So you had Thomas and Monica, but then you had a Justin Beck and a right. Michelle Gibbs. There was four of them all together. We were on a three-day cruise with uh, six of the people on board two others that are uh, here in town and then the two of us. So the party has officially been split. The agent checked you and did the correct thing. The other agent went ahead and put them on and did follow protocol, which is to send them to that gate. I plan on being home now. Not, I not, not at midnight. Three hours. I do apologize, but... But in the meantime, we're just stuck. You're number 27. There's 26 people here before you that tried to get there. So they're the same situation. And the way to be fair, you can't be fair to everybody, is to try to be at least first come, first serve. Well, you we, can apologize, and, and, and it's not going to help matters any. I'm the one that's going to suffer. I'm the one that's going to be home at midnight tonight. Had she got here early, I think she would have had a be definitely she would have had a better chance getting on the flight had she been here with her children or a bit earlier. 12 minutes before departure, two days before a busy holiday, is uh, not giving yourself enough time, in my opinion. Three hours later, Richard and Deborah are on their way to Phoenix to be reunited with their family. Is it possible for someone to get out of here? Out of I mean, the airport? Naturally walk out, I can understand that, but this wasn't in the uh, schedule. It's looking bleak, very, very bleak. At the gates, Frank Wisbicki Jr. is still searching for his army buddy, Adam. He was drunk, and it was just funny, but now it's not funny anymore because it's just frustrating because I can't find him. When you set out together, you're assigned a battle buddy and whatnot. And me and Van Duza, we were battle buddies. We've been battle buddies since we entered Iraq. So to lose him in a damn airport kind of f***ed up the integrity of your of your friendship. No, he's not booked on anything. He's not booked on anything. After a two-hour search, Callie has a plane to catch. You want a hug? OK, which one? Please. <laughs> All right, I'll see you around. She's a nice girl. She was a real nice girl. We had a lot in common the time we did spend together. So what do you see in the movies? It's like an emotional ride. Two people wind up together for some stupid reason, and they create a bond beyond whatever, fantasy, I guess. At the other end of the terminal, the race is on to get the soccer team on a flight to Tampa Bay. OK, hang on. Do you guys have the charge card? A time check, it is 7.12. That flight leaves in three minutes. It all depends on Sandy and Phil right now. Hopefully they'll win the tournament in our honor. So we're getting six of them on here, and one other person is going on the 7.30 to Tampa that uh, goes through Louisville. Zach Stan. Zach Stan. Uh, we got to go win our tournament, you know? And <laughs> we can't win it here. We got one more ticket to do, and then we're going to run fast. You got everybody? OK, I'm taking them. We're running. I need the seven of you to come around the CTX machine and run. We got to run. You guys coming? Now, come on. I know you guys are in shape. With only a few minutes before takeoff and the entire length of the airport to navigate, every player will have to pour it on to make the flight. In Chicago, a group of soccer players are running to make their flight. Come on, you guys. Here's four. Here's five. Six. One more to go. Ticket counter soup. Copy your radio, please. I should have them down here in two minutes. We should make it down there in two minutes. I have one more player coming through this line. Doug, Doug. 
Doug! Doug! Okay, let's go. We're going against the traffic. Oh, is this security guy? No, you know what? We'll swipe them. Here's the return tickets. Okay. Niles is in there, though, okay? Let's go. Hurry up, guys. Find the seat. Go. Seat third. Go. Just go. Go. You guys go. Hey, it worked. I mean, yeah, we did have to hold about 15 minutes, but it worked. And I think it's for a good reason. Woo! The team made it to the tournament, but didn't bring home the trophy. Imagine me with black hair and glasses. Black hair. Soldier Frank Wisbicki Jr.'s search and rescue mission is failing, and it's time to bring in recruits to help track down his buddy. Step up, Private Val. Have you guys seen a, a guy? He might have been a little intoxicated. Come down here with a um... blue sweatshirt on, hoodie, sweatshirt, had a panther on the front of it. Oh. You know, 13 months without drinking, we got on the plane, and got sloshed. You know. Yeah. One thing led to another, and now he's lost, and yeah. Where have you looked? Because I, <laughs> but you have Concourse A, Concourse B, Concourse C, the freaking eatery, every latrine. But this is, you hadn't looked on this side yet. No, I ain't been down here. OK, we don't see him around over anywhere over here. Negative. And then we got a drunken loser laying on the ground, passed out. I'm just thinking maybe he's somewhere laying across the bench somewhere. And nobody just really has paid any attention to him. That wouldn't be him, would it? Laying right there. No, that's not him. I already looked at it. Like a needle in a haystack. I myself have to give home. I mean, I feel like a jerk to leave him. It's not my way. But, I mean, you can only laugh in airports so many damn times. After five hours of fruitless searching, Frank waves the white flag and catches the last bus home to South Bend. Adam, you know what? It was a hell of a ride, dude. Unfortunately, messed up. You went your way. Now I got to go mine. I hope you uh, have a good holiday, you know. Hope you get to where you're going, and I'll see you back in Iraq. I hoped we could find his buddy, but and I hopefully his buddy's OK. He's in Indy chilling out. Hopefully, that's what's going on. Now, I doubt walking around in Iraq was bad. This place sucks. <laughs> At the ticket counter, Eric Stockbridge and Angela Huddleston have a problem with their rapid rewards ticket. It expires 24 hours before their return flight, and they want Angelica to change it. It's very clearly on the back of the ticket, the expiration date, and the way that we cannot extend it. So basically what you're saying is that even though Southwest told us twice that it was okay, we're now either stranded or we have to fly back early. We have to go by the rules because if not, the next person is going to do it differently and the next person is going to be doing it differently. So we have to be kind of consistent. Uh, we were up here interviewing uh, for law schools for both students down in Austin and uh, put a crimp in our weekend plans. This is our little holiday vacation. Looks like it's a lost cause. I think we can find someone who has another ticket that we can trade with. Okay, then if we find someone else who has a rapid rewards ticket that does not expire today, can we trade with them? You mean here in the line? If they're traveling today, I don't see a problem with it. All right, okay. okay. Do you have one of these? No, I don't. No, okay, thank you. Are you flying with a rapid rewards ticket? No, what is that? Are you, are you flying today? Are you flying with a rapid rewards ticket? Yeah. Does it expire today? Not that I know of. Will you trade with me? Because mine expires today and I'm not flying today. We can do that. Why not? They said it They said it was fine. Thanks. Oh my god, I'm going to be stuck here. No, you won't. I, I'm, I swear to you, I will. The couple will have to use all their powers of persuasion in the hopes of saving their romantic weekend. I'll give you money if you need it, but I won't trade tickets. No. This is Michael, K13. In LA, my car is faced with a group of passengers pulled from their plane bound for Sacramento. Hey, I just showed up here at gate 13. I guess we're we have a mechanical on the aircraft, is that correct? All right, thank you. Oh, we should just cancel this flight. There's only 40 of you. Uh, There's no light. It's white. Uh, uh, we didn't pay the light bill. Is that what the problem is? Let me go on board and find out exactly what's going on. I'll come back and give you some more information, OK? So I'm going to go up and tell these people they just hang tight for like 20, 25 minutes. We'll be back down, guys. Thank you. A defective fuse has plunged the plane into total darkness. 
The passengers were offloaded, but their carry-on luggage is still on board. Because of the delay, many of them risk missing their connecting flights. They'll need to make new arrangements, but not without their bags. I'll give you money. I'll pay you. Back at the ticket counter, Angela's pleading seems to have paid off. If I go up front there and they say it's okay, then that's fine. That's okay. fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We really appreciate You're it. You're quite welcome. Now that they're going to be able to switch it out, hopefully we'll be able to fly out tomorrow like we'd originally planned. No deal with this guy. Why not? Because he won't show me his ticket. He said he wants me to give him his, and then if he gets on his plane, he'll give me his. I'm not doing it. I don't trust him. I don't know him. Well, just give him the ticket and we'll see. He said if we tell them, then he's not doing it. Tell them if we he's... tell them with the airline that, that he's doing it, he's not doing it. That he's just trying sense. to be an <laughs> okay. You're asking people to do you a favor, have some faith. I don't even know that you have one. Well, don't ask well, me for nothing. Then I don't need anything from you. Then don't whoa, ask me whoa, nothing. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You came soliciting to me. I... So you won't do it, is what you're saying? No, not anymore. Not with her attitude. Okay, your ticket's your call. I was hoping that he would just be nice and we could explain it, because they said up there already that if we just find somebody who will switch with us, it's not a problem. But he wanted to be sneaky about it, and I didn't want to get stuck here. So it's back to plan A. This time, Eric tries his luck. I'm sorry, is anybody here flying with the Rapid Rewards ticket? Anyone? Nothing changes for you, and it's... Why wouldn't you help us out? As the situation unravels, so does Angela. But maybe a few tears will be all she needs to save their weekend. In Chicago, Angelica and James have taken matters into their own hands, and they've finally found a passenger willing to swap tickets with Eric and Angela. <laughs> Looks like it's all working out. Yeah, we're going to eat, we're going to go to the parade tonight, and we're going to see the fireworks. <laughs> see the sights. We've never been to Chicago, so we're going to check it out. We're very excited. So it's a happy ending at the ticket counter. Then the next thing I know, the plane's pulling out. At the gates, James Lout has missed his flight to Houston by a matter of seconds, and Val is suspicious. Door closes on the aircraft two minutes before departure. All I'm saying, I was here prior to that time. I don't understand why I couldn't possibly be on that flight. Tomorrow morning, I have a son that's scheduled for surgery. I'd really like to be there for this 11-year-old kid, but unfortunately, right now, it don't look like Southwest is actually going to get me there. Why did you go outside security check? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's totally irrelevant. The actually, point James came off a connecting flight with 30 minutes to spare. If he'd stayed at the gate as advised, he wouldn't have missed the announcements. So where did he go? Where's your supervisor? Actually, she's standing right here. Where? Hi, my he name's is. Colleen. How you doing? Hi. James? Yeah. Okay. I sat here for five to six minutes and watched my plane leave, and now there's no way for me to get to Houston. Did you go out to at smoke, seven, Mr. Love? At 7.54. Leaving the, the security area and going outside, what was a gamble for you to leave when you no, when your connection was less than Because I knew minutes. that my flight was to leave at 8 o'clock. No. So even though your itinerary or your time says flight leaves at 8 o'clock, if you show up at 7.50, 7.55, hey, sorry, buddy, your flight got here three hours ago. That doesn't matter. The pilot said they're leaving and they're leaving. You missed your flight, and I do apologize for that. But all we can do now is rebook you for tomorrow morning. That's all we can do. It looks like James has hit a brick wall in the shape of Colleen. In L.A., the Sacramento flight is still grounded in darkness. We have some connection passengers on board who are going to be going to Seattle, and so we're trying to get them out through Oakland instead of Sacramento because they're going to have a tight connect. So we're going to have to try to go on board with a flashlight and try to find their bags for them. OK, where did you sit when you went in? Did you have... How far down? On the left, it's about 20 down. It's a green uh, shoulder bag. On the left side. I'm afraid of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> Bag. It said it's on the left, so it's going to be either this one or that's brown. Do you see another? But Mike's having particular trouble retrieving a passenger's shoulder bag. Is this your bag? <laughs> 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 
This is not your bag, is this anybody's bag? Is your bag a garment bag? Shoulder bag. This is a shoulder bag and it's green. Is this it? You're, you're playing a trick My on me. My bag is right there. It's on the left, you'll see it. It's on the, it's like on the farthest side of the compartment. I think he's giving us his run around. Is this it? That's great. What color is that? That looks great. It looks great. It looks great. Yeah. Okay. All right, colorblind. What are you going to do, right? Bags and passengers reunited, things seem to be going Mike's way. But there's a much bigger problem on the horizon. Back in Chicago, James still isn't getting any satisfaction from Colleen. Probably at this point in time, it might be better for you to get me another ticket back to New York, and I'll start over again on another airline that can competently get me to my destination. Well, I'd be happy to do that, sir, but there are no other flights to Iceland tonight, and we don't interline with other air, air carriers. I'm sorry. Would you like wow. me to rebook you back to Iceland tomorrow morning? Wow. Um, I'm going to go have a drink, which I probably haven't done okay. in the last five years. <laughs> okay. But I'll gladly go have a drink or two. And if I can find a flight out earlier than that, irregardless of the airline, then I'll just go ahead and take that ticket and refund it, and I'll put it towards another airline ticket. You're welcome to do that, Mr. In the end, James's sneaky cigarette has cost him more than just his good health. Why would you want to fly an airline that abandons its passengers? You go over there, get a drink, probably spend the last $20 I have, and probably later on say a prayer, and hopefully my kid won't die through anesthesia in the morning. He made a choice to leave the, the gate area, and, and he, had, he has to have some responsibility for that. That's like $100 to stay at a hotel. I just assumed stop off and buy my kid a $120 skateboard. At least it'll bring a smile to his face, you know? I mean, Southwest sure is right? James flew out the next day, and his son came through the operation and is doing just fine. Back in L.A., the repairs continue. Well, at this point here, her maintenance guys are on board there, replacing the needed part, and uh, we'll soon have power and get everyone on the way to Sacramento. Okay, we are good to go. We got lights. Hang on, bud. But there's a more serious disruption than just darkness. Are you serious? I just told him we wouldn't cancel the flight. Now we're going to cancel it. But Mike's not about to let his passengers down. Especially for that kid's first time. Thank you. Hey, don't go anywhere. Go ahead, y'all. Can go on board. We're going to reinstate the flight. Go ahead. Mission accomplished. Just when you thought it was going to be a quiet day, all of a sudden, lo and behold, you get something like this. Casa La Vista, baby. Welcome aboard Airline where the delicate art of saying no is a daily challenge. From the drunken musician... You're taking money out of my mother pocket. ...who won't take no for an answer, to the man in his own personal hell. I see another nightmare coming on. And last but not least, what is that smell? Sending downwind from him, and it's really bad. With over 60 million passengers a year, not everyone who flies Southwest Airlines is going to be the perfect passenger. Handling situations like this. She slammed the you wouldn't even listen to her. And people like these. Southwest kiss my is a day-to-day -day occurrence for staff on the front lines. It's rush hour at Chicago Midway. Donna Allen has arrived at the airport to collect her daughter. Donna has brought the entire family, but that's too many for security. 
Customer service manager Eric is in the line of fire. She is 13 years old. I want to be there. We can only let one person go through. How come when I came in the first time, we, we can let you in. and your child go, but we can't let two adults go down to pick up one of them. I think you make exceptions for certain people, I think. That's what that is. There's another racial profile thing. That has nothing to do with it. Oh, it doesn't? No, it doesn't. Maybe you don't think so because you're not of that uh, You persuasion. see what it says right there? One person. Okay. One okay. person allowed through. It says nothing and, about anything and, about the color of skin. And who says that this isn't? This is also. It doesn't matter, ma'am. It's about going this stuff? through. Who makes up this stuff? Who do you think does? People like you. you. Oh, okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. No, not really. Since I make all the rules, it's easy for me. You need to start appreciating it. People that are always going to be unhappy because they don't get to do exactly what they want to do. So we have policies in place for reasons. Across the country at Los Angeles International Airport, passenger Steve Kristen should be on board a flight to Kansas City, but the bar is too tempting. I got drunk, pissed. <laughs> I missed my flight. Now I'm on standby. So, and they tell me there's there are 20 people overbooked. So probably I'll still be here till about God knows five six o'clock in the afternoon. Even though it's only 7:30 a.m., the bartender thinks he's had enough and has refused to serve him any longer. Cheers. Two. There we go. Salute. <laughs> Don't they sometimes stop people getting on if they're drunk? Uh, they, no, no, no. They can't, they can't do that, man. What do you think about it? They offer drinks on the damn plane. They did that. There would be no one flying the whole damn plane. Across the terminal, Supervisor Susie Borsma receives a mysterious call. Oh, copy that. There's a possible denied boarding. They don't want to tell us over the radio what the reasoning is for, so we'll just find out when we get here. What's going on? I've heard that he smells and they might want to deny him boarding. I haven't seen him. Is he on board the aircraft? Well, no oh, well, we're going to uh, let him board. Apparently, he has to be checked by TSA, and at that time, we'll make a decision on if he admits a smell that's strong enough to annoy other people. Have a photo ID? I have no idea. I'm standing downwind from him, and it's really bad. So. I'm going to ask him if he can maybe wash up a little bit. This flight's leaving pretty soon, and I can't cause a delay. Sir, hey, I hate to bother you, but I've been getting a lot of passengers who have noticed a smell. So do you have anything you can change into, or maybe you can freshen up with something? Yeah, I have a freshener up here. I can is, there any, what, is there any way I can get you to do that before you board the flight? Oh, I can... Uh, we have the... shirts for you if you need one, but if you want to take the time to use the men's restroom, Kind of yeah, I'll do up. that on okay. the okay. flight. As as no, I, we're not going to let you get on this flight, Michael. we got to let you freshen up first. And then when you freshen up, then we're going to give you a new shirt, and we can put you on the 6 o'clock flight. I'd like to go on this flight. Right. Yeah, I would like to put you on this flight, too, but as far as I'm... Be put in the back of the plane? No, because I've got a full plane on this one, and I don't want, you know, any passengers inconvenience as far as them with uh, the whole smell issue. So what we're going to do is you're going to freshen up. Men's restroom right over there. I'm going to get you a new shirt so you'll be nice and fresh. And then we'll put you on the 6 o'clock flight, pending that you smell better. OK. It's time for Steve Kristen to board his flight. But is he sober enough? Supervisor Steve Ramirez will make that call. Okay. When I spoke to the bartender, he said they I had to stop serving you drinks. No, you didn't have you're... to stop. I left, and I, I paid him what I had to okay. pay. Okay. There's no, no problem at this point, but Stand I do want you to understand that if we do get you on this flight, they're not going to serve you drinks anymore Okay, no flight. problem, no problem, no problem. Is there a problem Just get with me that? on a flight, I'm all right with that. <laughs> they probably tell me I'm too drunk to get on the train. <laughs> so I can sit down and relax for three hours. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, this is okay, what's going to happen, Mr. Kristen. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to put you on this flight. If you appear to be under the influence... No, I'm not under... God, man, listen to me. I just need to be on this flight. Okay. I'll be... Uh, this, look, well, this is what listen we to the way I'm talking. I know my rights. It doesn't matter how you get on the flight, as long as you don't have anything on you and you don't do anything wrong. Relax. Okay. Relax, please. Okay?
Passenger Michael Jones is doing his best to try and scrub away the smell that so far prevented him from boarding his flight to Phoenix. Meanwhile, Susie is checking the uniform cupboard to try and find some new clothes for Michael to wear. I feel bad. When I have to talk to him about um, the smell he may be emitting that may be offensive, I feel bad for him. I would not want to be approached and told that I smell. I mean, I have a hard time when somebody tells me my, my outfit doesn't coordinate. So, for somebody to tell me that I need to go and take a shower would be really offen you know, offensive. So, it matches a little bit. I'm gonna sleep on the plane for three hours. Call him. Yeah, call him. You're taking money out of my pocket, and you don't get that. Sir, enough, okay? Enough. You don't understand. You don't come from the streets, man. I come from the streets. Oh, do you? Yeah. You want to make a bet? Walk outside with me. Oh, no, that's not. I'm not. I'm not gonna debate whether you're from the streets or not. Come but. On. Walk with me. Mr. Christian. Take a walk with okay. me, and then when you see where I I'm come gonna from. Have, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to have the police. They're going to come talk to you, OK? And I don't have no police PI. Look, let me get on the flight where all, everything's all forgot. Straight out. I, I'll be nice. I won't say one damn word. And if, you, if I do, you could, you, could, you could lock me up. Every time Steve well, opens his know. mouth, he seems to make it worse. Now he could face arrest. In Chicago, Supervisor Val Brown's next passenger is having the day from hell. John Dunnigan's just missed his flight home to Nashville, but this is just the beginning. Hi, where are you headed today, sir? Nashville, 10 minutes ago. I'm not finding you with that flight number. Do you have the credit card that you used to pay for it? Maybe, I mean, hell, or someone. Look here, I'm at the airport right now. Uh, but this is the problem. They can't find our reservations, right? I mean, that's my employee now. That's not the worst of it, okay? My budget rental car got got hijacked, got stolen. They're not finding anything on, on, ever been charged on that one. You flew in here on yeah, us Southwest using County. this exact credit card. Yeah, same I, time. The next time I have a seat available is 625 tonight. Back in L.A., Supervisor Steve Ramirez is still trying to pacify the drunken passenger he denied boarding. Uh, what, they're going to beat me up over there in the corner No, somewhere? they're not going to beat no. you up. They yeah. talk to you. And I know the I've been through that ringer enough times. Okay. Well, um, at this point, like I said, I don't feel like you're going to, if you can't behave here on the counter. I am behaving. We're going to have a gentleman here talk to you. Yeah. How you What's doing? What's up, man? How you doing? Fine, how are you? How you doing? Yeah. So, is he going to be able to get on the next flight? Maybe? No. Tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. So, this no. this gets you. Uh, no, 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 no. This guy, this guy, this guy is. Mr. Uh, this guy is a little. He's already offending. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Let's take your stuff. So, Miss Perfect. No. Yeah. And what? What? This is. Sorry. And the guy doesn't have no right. Okay. This is just taking him to be able to use this. Steve's big mouth has gotten him kicked out of the airport. Next time he flies, he'll know not to start drinking at dawn. Passenger Michael Jones was denied boarding because he had a serious body odor problem. Supervisor Yolanda Martin waits with him until Susie brings some fresh clothes. Do you want to try these? It's a new t-shirt and then some of our training pants. This just in case you need. So I got him some deodorant. I think he's really embarrassed. I mean, he's being really quiet, being very accommodating, but to tell. I mean, it's an uncomfortable situation, and for him, I can't imagine how he feels. Mm, poor thing. In Chicago, John Dunnigan's missing reservation has finally been found. Oh, you're just gonna diss me now, huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. But John's bad day has barely begun. Before Val can issue his ticket, there's a more delicate matter to confront, and for this, she needs a second opinion. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Well, I want you to walk out and see if you think that's a COS. I, do, I need somebody else's opinion on it. Yeah. COS is Southwest shorthand for customer of size. It will mean John will have to buy a second seat. Our policy is uh, due to the comfort and safety and the comfort and safety of people around them aboard the aircraft. That, I mean, some passengers who are of size, they have to purchase an extra seat. Supervisor Nikki sizes John up, and it's not good news. Okay, did you did you purchase the ticket on your way up here? How many seats did you purchase on the way up here? Did you purchase one seat? Yeah. Oh, did you have to purchase two tickets? Because of your, your, but because of your comfort. Uh, I don't need the comfort. I can sit sideways, whatever it takes. That's the only hour trip. I understand, but like I'm not I said, purchasing no two tickets. I mean, if, if... With John refusing to pay, Val faces a dilemma. How does she keep the customer satisfied but still follow the regulations of the airline? Bless his heart. He's so cute. Looks good, Michael. How do you feel? You feel okay? You need anything from the store? Juice. You want to get some juice? Have you eaten yet today? A little. Yeah? Just use this. It's good for $12. You can use it up to $12, so feel free to use that up, and anything you don't eat, you can take on the plane with you. Okay. Okay? And then we're going to try and help you find a bag, okay? Is it okay if we just tie it here and you carry it by this? Boring, but you do have enough time to get something and then take it with you on the plane. Yeah, but hurry back, okay? Thank you. <laughs> oh. Michael boards the flight with barely a glance from his fellow passengers. He smells much better. Oh, he does. I gave him deodorant, so. Sweet. Yeah. Good call. Welcome to Southwest Airlines. Back in Chicago, Val's got a cheaper second seat for John, but he'll still have to pay up if he wants to fly. It'll be $68 plus tax for the second seat. If that flight goes out with the empty seats, I mean, you can get a refund on that, on that ticket. We wouldn't tell you you may be able to get it if you weren't able to, OK? OK. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. He was a real good passenger to have. He took it well. Very awkward situation. I don't think any of us like dealing with it. We have to, but we deal with it. I mean, because we get uh, complaints from passengers aboard the aircraft who had to sit next to them, and they're complaining, you know. I wish you wouldn't get this on film, but anyway. So far today, John's had his car stolen, he's missed a flight, suffered complications at check-in, and he has had to buy two seats. But the worst is yet to come. I see a thunderstorm, rain. I see another nightmare coming on. <laughs>
flight's arriving approximately an hour and 15 minutes late. We have a passenger on board who may misconnect with an international flight. And we'll see what we can do to help him get there as fast as we can. Welcome. She's been told to look out for two delayed passengers from Phoenix. These are our possible international But they're too flight. fast for her. Do we have an international who might miss? They just got, oh. They're up there. So you guys have checked bags? Check bags or no check bags? Do you guys know where to go? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys know how to get there? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go, guys. Dispatch, can you tell me what terminal kind of air goes out if it's two or Tom Bradley? Yes. China Air? Chancellor, yeah, they're going to Tom Bradley. Are they leaving at 3.55? Leave. That's in five minutes. Their chances are slim, but okay. Mr. and Mrs. Cheng are in no mood to admit defeat. There's no way they're going to make it. In Chicago, flights are now leaving, but everything's running late. John thinks he's got a seat on the next flight, but all he's got is a pre-boarding pass and his original confirmation. Gate staff are working on a first-come, first-served basis for standbys, and John's not at the front of the line. After the day he's had, his patience is wearing thin. Let me have another talk with her. Your boss come over and tell you to go by the pre board pass, right? I understand what a pre boarding pass is. Right. I understand what a pre board pass is. That, that means that you me. board first, not checking in. That's the whole other thing. In. When it's I'm checking, checking in, when it, exactly, when you're checking someone in on a flight, I'm checking them in and I have to do it by first come, first serve. Meaning people who have checked in here can get a boarding card number one, two, three, four. I did check in with you earlier and you didn't I know that, but you were number 81 person to check in, and I'm going by letters one, two, three, and four. I have to right, get well, in first I'm checking come. in now. Can you give me on the plan? Okay, yes, I can. When I call your number. 81. 81. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll be back, okay? But there are hundreds of passengers stranded at the airport and only a limited number of seats. I'm running on my last leg, if I don't get on that plane. They might have to wheel me in, you know? Susie's afternoon has become a workout. Take him down and try and catch a shuttle. Mr. and Mrs. Cheng's chances of making their connecting flight are tiny, but they're still running for it. approximately three terminals away, which is about a good 10 minute walk. Jeff, can you see if their uh, Taipei flight is running late? Uh, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> ha ha. Let's see if we can catch this bus. Do you want to get your wife over here? With only three minutes to take off, only a miracle can save them now. Back at Chicago, it's gone from bad to worse. They've run out of seats. We are out of seats. John's not going home yet and he's been in the airport for eight hours. I was here since 1230. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry, you didn't know that, but I've been here since 1230. Yes, you can, you can talk to her, and she knows what this is all about. Well, Nikki, you have a passenger here who needs your assistance. Okay, just one second. Nikki, when I got here at 1230, they was trying to get me on the 330 flight out of here. I was up here in line and told her this, and she's gonna tell me she was going by some silly numbers, okay? Now, I told her the situation and she didn't even listen to me. Okay. All right, I could have been on the flight. I could have been on that particular flight because I was supposed to be on the 330 flight. Okay, John. So what do you think? Okay, so I'm assuming that this flight is off the ground. Should be coming into this gate area. We should be hopefully within, hours. within the next hour we'll be going. I just appreciate you coming over, but she was really being foolish. Unfortunate for him, they were out of seats. So he got there at the worst time, the, the bad luck of the draw. That was definitely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no one's moving, that's the problem. So when you can't move, people start getting agitated. The Changs have arrived at the international terminal, but still haven't got a clue where they're going. I'll go get her. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> they came in late from a Southwest Airlines flight. Wanted to see if that uh, Taipei flight was close to China. Taipei? Taipei, yeah, because I was getting too late. We already closed the flight. Come on, you. I didn't close. Well, you got exercise. No, I'm getting hard pet. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
about to come back and check in at 9.30. 9.30, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. No choice. We're gonna take off now. It seems like Air China is gonna help you out. Yeah, thank Okay, you. you're welcome. Thank you. Have a good flight. Have fun in China. John's had his car stolen, missed his flight, bought two seats, and survived a thunderstorm. But now he's going home. Finally, free at last. Oh, I'm sorry. That's another script. This has been a trip that I would never forget. It's a bad case of terminal vanity on the airline today. From the passenger caught short in the terminal but not stuck for words with her mom. What are you doing? Get out of that wheelchair. To the Chicago staff, whose dress sense gives them a chance to meet their hero. To some California girls, whose bad language gets them into serious trouble. Somebody on the plane starts screaming in my head. In baggage claim at Chicago Midway, Agent Shanita is in the firing line. The airline has misplaced passenger Mark Ferry's bags. So what am I supposed to do? I mean, we have up to five days locally to look for your bags here. Five days? I need my bags today. I'm here for a funeral. I'm here for a funeral. I need my bags. What I'm telling you here locally is that we don't have your bags now, but once they get here today, which it should be within 24 hours, we will deliver the bags to wherever your friend stays here in Chicago. I need my bags, man. It's, you know, I got I a funeral to attend. A funeral. My I, brother died. I'm prioritizing my brother. And, and you know, you don't have to curse at me, but you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you take the bag, you put it on the plane. You know, it's simple. I mean, I don't understand it. How the hell you lose two bags? Gentlemen, um, from At LAX. Colorado-based passenger Therese Grimes is preparing to meet her mother, who's coming in on another flight. Right now, I'm doing my eye makeup because she will have a fit if um, I don't look, you know, pretty and gorgeous for dinner and stuff. She won't be seen with me. Time is short for Therese, and she needs a helping hand from a total stranger. Could you hold this? Thank you. Is that ain't right? Yep. What do you do? I'm a professor of planetary science. And I'm oh studying, my gosh, how nice. Mars and, oh, space and things, so that is so important. That is so important. Well, thanks. Keep studying. It. Oh my God, that's great. Good for you. I wish I would have done something like that with my life. So what are you going to? Are you getting so pretty? Meeting my mom. <laughs> all so this wait. just for your mom? Yes, all this just for my mom. And you should tell her that. Be a special lady. Oh, oh my god, you're so sweet. Good. And thank you for your work on Mars. <laughs> you're very welcome. That is so nice of you. What a contribution to society. Back at Midway, it turns out that Mark Ferry's bags contain some precious cargo for his brother's funeral. I got my chaps in there, my leathers. Um, a couple cartons of cigarettes, a couple knives, stuff that I need, you know, for the funeral. I mean, it's a Harley Davidson funeral, you know. My brother rides, I ride, um, and all my leather, my riding gear, everything is in my bags. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm riding his bike. He did not make the flight out of Baltimore. Okay, well, I mean, how does that happen? It's, a, it's human error. Look, did I do drug tests for these airlines or what? I'm not on drugs. I'm not, I'm not saying you. I'm saying the baggage handlers. Yeah. Back in L.A., Therese continues her routine. You're doing a very good job. Are you married? No. Have you ever? Once. How long? 20 years. Me too. Really? 15. How could you be married that long? I've been married 15 years, and I just got a divorce two How years. For two, year, two years ago, and I am never, ever, ever, ever getting married again. Yeah. Get out a pen and take my name and number. Okay. Um, Therese. How did you spell it? T-H-E-R-E-S-E. -E. How are you smart? 
Uh, I'm a rocket scientist, remember? Yeah. And you have a necklace. Okay. You're Bill, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Teresa's mother arrives in 10 minutes, and she still isn't ready. This calls for some rocket science. Bill, you have to help me close this, honey. Sure. Don't lose my card now. Okay, I won't. Big man, you can do that side. It's off to find mom. Back at Midway, Mark's bag has still not been tracked down. I pay a lot of money for these plane tickets to, to make sure that my oh. luggage goes with me. Oh, I know you, you did. Know? I mean, you guys charge me in the plane tickets for all of this stuff, and I appreciate your help. But the money I pay for round trip tickets for me and my son to lose our luggage is BS. You know, that's crazy. I just can't, de I can't deal with this right now. I'm out here bury my brother. I'm sorry. You know, and I gotta, this is the kind of I gotta deal with. Yes, what is the last name? Ferry. Ferry, yes. Any news? Two bags accidentally got buried under a cart of bags from the TSA when it went through security checkpoint. So what they did was they put them on flight 860 oh. before 5 o'clock arrival. I wish the baggage, baggage handlers did as good as work as these ladies here. We wouldn't have this freaking problem. Well, you know what? He's one of the nice ones because we get some really irates down here. He was really nice compared to what usually goes on. At LAX, Therese is a little lost. I am at the wrong gate, and I'm going to be dead if we don't get to the right gate. And I mean dead, D-E-A-D, -E dead. <laughs> did you ladies come from Chicago, from Midway? Oh, did you have a nice flight? Yes. Do I look fat in this dress? No. OK, feel fat today. And I love the, color. the flight okay. landed 10 minutes ago, and the plane yeah, is already empty. Here. Yeah, we were the last ones to get off. You're kidding. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> Teresa's mother is nowhere to be found. Mom? Mom? At LAX, Therese Grimes is all dressed up with nowhere to go. Hi. Hi. My mom's missing. I'm hysterical. She's 80. Would you page... Mary! <laughs> <laughs> Where were you guys? We were right here. They went down to the baggage claim area. Oh, thank you for not leaving. Well, that I stayed. You look beautiful. Oh, my God. Therese and her sister make their way down to baggage claim where their 80-year-old mother is waiting for them. What are you doing? Get out of that wheelchair. Right now. Mom, get out of the wheelchair right now. She takes a wheelchair just so she can get, like, privy service, like, ahead of everybody and stuff. But she doesn't need one, no. And... And I think she's interested in herself, and uh, I think she should be grateful that she can walk and get off her fat ass. You may think that I'm talking foolish. Upstairs at departure, Supervisor Yolanda Martin is waiting for one of America's favorite country music stars. Hello, how are you? I'm Yolanda. I'm going to help expedite this whole process, hopefully. Randy Travis is flying to Albuquerque with his wife and manager, Lib Hatcher. Two bags for you to check in, or? Let me think, I think three. Three bags? Okay, we'll add another tag. Yes. What's gonna happen now is we're gonna go ahead and have your bags screened, and then you can head up to the gate once they're cleared, okay? Get out of that wheelchair! Did you give me my hand? Thank you. Right now. I told you I hate this. Mom, this is disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. Get up and get out of that wheelchair. I can't. I'll help you. No 
You are not this is ridiculous. so grateful that you don't need a wheelchair. I do need one. Call me one. I love it. Don't you ever do that again. Okay. She owes me. But that doesn't mean I'm going to get any thank yous. <laughs> it is good to see you. Come. I hear you don't have All of Teresa's efforts to look nice for her mom have paid off. Oh, that's oh, beautiful. She looks like a different person. Different. What does she usually look like? A mess. <laughs> She looks beautiful today. Man, all those guys wore ugly clothes in the 70s. Over at Chicago Midway, rappers Hector Montanez and Juan Raigosa are getting ready for the airline's 70s night, which is taking place at Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs. They are hot favorites to win the costume contest and the prize that goes with it. Bring the mustache. Yeah. The mustache, yeah. You got the mustache. My mustache, yeah. Hopefully we get to throw out the first pitch, you know, and I've already promised Juan if we get to, I'll let him throw it out because I think I'll make an idiot of myself enough already just by dressing up, so I'll give him the opportunity. I would love the opportunity to do that. Nice. The tuxedo, they're baby powder blue and a uh, big Beautiful. ruffle shirt. So far, so good? Very good. The big afro. <laughs> mustache. And beard. <laughs> on the stage and the Elvis glasses, so, oh, you know, hopefully that, that'll do it, all right? This goes go. to... Where's Wrigley Field? This way? You hear it again? Wrigley Field? What are they doing? What are you doing? Forget about it. <laughs> Wrigley Field is a 45-minute ride from the airport, and if all goes well, it's going to be a night to remember. Back at LAX, Yolanda is escorting country star Randy Travis and his wife and manager to their gate. Choose whatever suit you want. We've already gone ahead and issued your boarding card, so you're all set. All you need to do is wait to board. Obviously, everybody that flies on Southwest Airlines is special, but if he's going to get mobbed, we definitely want to prevent that. These are your boarding cards. So all that you need to do when it's time to board, you're in Group A. You'll just show your ID and get on board. And you're all set. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for right traveling here. Southwest. Randy Bye -bye. might be the biggest star in the airport, but he's just flying coach class. In and out of Santa Fe, it seems to be one of the more convenient airlines to go with. It feels good, yeah. Yeah, I've never lost any luggage yet. <laughs> yeah. He may have sold millions of records, but Yolanda can't remember any of his music. Uh, I don't think I do. I feel horrible. I bet you if I heard one, I could probably sing the next line. If you tell me, you can give me a hint. <laughs> I'm going to love you forever and ever and ever. <laughs> this is bad. And that's and it. That's my Randy Travis tribute. Superstar. <laughs> Barry, you going to the game? Yeah. So are we. Cool. Give me a five. Cool. cool, we'll be cool. Me and you, what's your name? Addie. Addie, I'm Hector. Actually, Lobo, and this is my friend Pistachio. <laughs> Say hi, Pistachio. Goodbye, goodbye, where are you going? Woo! Really? The costumes may be comic, but there is some serious business to attend to for these die-hard fans. If the boys win the contest, there could be as many as 40,000 fans watching them throw the ceremonial first pitch. In Chicago, Juan and Hector have arrived for 70s night at Wrigley Field.
they are named the winners of the costume contest. Best costume tonight, we want you guys to throw out the first pick. This is a dream come true, I'm a big Cub fan. So uh, this, is, this is really cool to me. Juan's got one chance to impress the crowd and his hero, Sammy Sosa. I'm gonna wear it every day. <laughs> my friend, my good friend, what's your name? Frank. Frank, I know it. You can relax, the plane's not here, so. At LAX, it's the end of a long and busy day, but it's not over yet. Okay, so if we come back here in like 20, I'm sorry, she said we're drinking and I'm like freaking out, but I'm not gonna get back. Don't drink too much, so. <laughs> They've been drinking, so I'm hoping that they don't drink too much. I'm headed back to the bar now, and we'll see how they do when they come back. In Chicago, it's showtime for Juan and Hector. Oh, man. Oh, Wrigley Field, look at this. I always, I'm always going up there. What's going on with that? Back at LAX, some passengers have just been escorted off the Vegas flight, and Yolanda gets the cruise side of the story. You, along with the captain, decided that they needed not the captain wasn't down there. Oh, okay. I decided. You decided? Yeah, I don't want to take any points. Okay. okay. Surprise, it's the girls from the bar. You appear to be intoxicated. You were loud and boisterous. And How were we? The guy yelled at me first. Exactly. Yeah, so I want to try to help you for we tomorrow. Just How do we get our money back? Can we get our money back? Seriously? Yeah, if we need to, if we can In fact, she'll decide later. Okay. Just do it, Tina. We don't have a freaking choice. We got pulled off the plane because somebody complained about us. Because he didn't like my tone of voice. Hello? Mommy, we're going to try to get a flight. If we don't, I'm going to call you. I yeah, we're going to traveling with her anyway. Because what happened was so some on the plane. Stop. Started screaming what? in my face because he said we were being too loud. So I screamed in his face and I said, I'm sorry we're being too loud. So he complained about us and there was a outside the freaking at you know, she had a little grove trotter outfit on and she didn't like us when we walked up. Get off here's the your here's we're gonna your go ticket. somewhere else. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> For them, it's either Vegas or bust. Back at Wrigley Field, Chicago, it's the moment of truth. Uh, I'm excited, I'm scared, I'm nervous, but I'm, like, super excited. Yeah, I saw that about, but uh, here I am. Push. Push. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Get it on. You're gonna get it in. Back at LAX, the police are on the scene. Seems the girls left without their luggage. We'll be there tomorrow. We'll be there tomorrow. Then you stop crying. Stop crying. Life goes on. Things happen and you keep going. It's just Las Vegas, baby. 
They're still upset, but seem to be a lot calmer as generally they do when the cops show up. So, I'm, you know, I'm glad for that support, obviously, because they were getting to be a bit violent. No, I sat here for three hours for nothing. Okay, yeah, we're on the same boat here. In Chicago, it's time for a celebration. Wow, dude, that I didn't even know what was that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> I've never seen a guy in the I, I don't know what Tell happened, man. guys flopped This guy dropped the ball. I look, probably looked like a dork, but who cares? Sammy said hi, dude. Hey, Sammy. Sammy said hi. Look, look at you. Sammy! Sammy! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Over here. Very good job, man. Very good job. Thank you very much. Hey, like we could use a couple more bullpen arms. Let's go. <laughs> Back at LAX, the girls are escorted out of the airport by the LAPD. He complained, and that's what got us off the he yeah, complained. Right here, okay. They walked up and they okay. said, they walked up and they said, can you guys please come with us? So we had to get off the plane at that point because he got away. And as we walked off the plane, they laughed. Camera laughed. Shut, stop. Because we're having a great time. We have had everything booked. We're having a great time. Excuse me, you're having a great time. Let me let me screw this up for you. So it's because of me, my friends lost their flight. Maybe it's your bloody fault. Now my friends are suffering. Yeah, we are suffering because of you. It's my fault. It's my fault. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. In the end, the girls opt for the next best way to get to Vegas, driving. Airline. One woman's carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders in Baltimore. Just kick me off the plane, I don't care. There's a tie-dye tantrum in Chicago. Whatever, dude. You know, it just happens. And some serious stunts in Mississippi. We're gonna really shake our tail for you. Chicago Midway, troubles looming on the last flight to Providence, Rhode Island. We can, put them, we can get them there at 7.45, put them on this one, 4.55, get them there at 7.45. The flight's overbooked, and with no seats available for the next three days, 23 passengers will be stranded in Chicago unless Denise and Sandy can find them seats. Okay, guys. What's happening today is all of our East Coast flights, once you get out of Baltimore, Providence, Manchester's are overbooked. The last I mean, flight to Providence tonight is booked to 160, no unticketed, and no protection until Tuesday. <laughs> Up at the gates, passenger Patrick Kohler is on his way to a rock concert in San Francisco with his pet dog. I go to a lot of festivals and Grateful Dead. And I was, you know, I was trying to do a lot. I've been doing it like 16, 17 years now, and so a lot of tight eyes and crazy silver jewelry and stuff. Um, my name is Angel, and oh, yeah. I just wanted us, I'm a supervisor here, and I just wanted her, do you need assistance with this new Uh, no, I, she assists me. Her name is Snossages. Take her away from where I go. Excuse me, company, and like, I don't know, it keeps me from, I don't know. I've had her for nine years, you know. Yeah. And I am track Greyhound. Uh, I don't know, I take her with me where I go. Just take her and beer and do it. Snossages is an emotional assistance pet, which means she can travel with Patrick. But Angel fears Patrick has had one that. drink too know, many. You know, you know, I'm not intoxicated, I know that. I know. Get on a plane, I'm going to sleep. You know, I know, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. 
Pilot Randy Henderson has flown passengers across America for 23 years. Now, good afternoon, folks. Well, I guess it's really morning, isn't it? Uh, Captain Randy Henderson here. I want to welcome everybody on board. But this weekend, Randy's going to be flying a very different kind of plane. We're scheduled to do an air show in Natchez, Mississippi this weekend. The only potential problem right now is weather. You know, we've got a big weather system. We had one just move out between here and Natchez, and another one's, another cold front's coming in. Weather permitting, Randy's show goes ahead in just three days. Back in Chicago, Sandy and Denise have decided their only option will be to divert another flight. But there's just one problem. We know how many. Okay. He doesn't know anything either. He said unless they're 20, they're not going to do it. If we do have 20 people, we're looking for seats for. There is a possibility we'll be able to stop our Isla flight and run it to Providence first and then to Isla. We are robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> But with just half the magic number and only three hours left, things are not looking good for the Providence passengers. Everybody cross their fingers. Yeah. Please. <laughs> At his Dallas ranch, pilot Randy practices his signature maneuvers in his aerobatic plane, the Texas T-Cart. I tell people I fly seven days a week. I tell them I fly four days a week right side up for Southwest and three days a week upside down for Texas T-Cart air shows. Randy and his wife, Di, work together on his routines. Believe me, it doesn't just happen overnight. We debrief after every show and, okay, what can we do better? How can we present it to the crowd better? What does the crowd say? What is the feedback from them? Which part did they like? And we fine tune and grow on that. It's not only paying crowds Randy wows with his stunts. His dog, Billy, goes crazy for them as well. Billy does this spin on the ground, and it's just unbelievable. Chained up, he was doing it initially, and I, I, I mean, it, it, it scared me to death because I thought he's going to get tangled up, so I let him loose. And when I did that, I guess, he just went to the middle of the runway. It's a dog thing. I don't know. <laughs> Back in Chicago, Angels asked Anita for a second opinion. He said he's not in taxi, he's just going to sleep on the plane. So he seemed like he drunk to me. But he leaves in, what, 20 minutes. Anita decides to have a word with Patrick, but he's not making much sense. <coughs> Ooh, that's, that's pretty gross. I, I apologize. Yeah, that's real gross. You know, okay. you just, you know, don't, don't drunk yet, he's whatever. I gotta get buzzed, man. I'm just gonna go down and play Wake up, San Francisco. How many beers did you have? Uh, two on the way here, uh, two white Russians, and one just now, and I'm fine. About six drinks. Yeah. yeah. That's in the last six that's hours. Like, that's like what? In the last six, seven hours. That's a lot. No, it's that's not. No? No. I'm, I'm just totally chilled. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. What's your name? Anita. Anita. Nice Patrick. to meet you. Nice Patrick. to meet you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Patrick. You're thank you. He seems drunk to me. What is your? He seems drunk to me. It's your call. This is your zone. I mean, he's not. Well, I think he'd be harmless. I think he would just sleep on the plane. It's your. It's your call. The fate of Patrick and Snossages lies in Angel's hands. At Baltimore Washington International, a woman in line for a flight to Phoenix catches Chris's eye. She seems very upset. She's crying hysterically on the phone. Uh -huh. um, one of the customer service agents thought that she may be intoxicated. So I'm going to just, she's talking on the cell phone right now, so I'm just going to maybe try to wait until she gets off or just kind of very discreetly pull her aside and ask her if everything's OK. Man, I would think that her battery would be dead by now. Deborah? Are you Deborah? Come on, come over and talk to me. My name is Chris. I'm one of the customer service supervisors. I, I just want to come talk to you, Deborah. That's why I kick me off. I don't want to kick you off the plane. Just kick me off the plane. I don't care. Where? I just I need need to just ask you a few questions, okay? Roger, I need to call you back. Goodbye. 
I, I, I mean, I, I see that you're very, very upset, so I just wanted to come over and talk to you and make sure everything was okay before you got on the plane. All right? If you want to kick me off the plane, that's fine. I, well, how are you going to get to Phoenix? It doesn't matter. I, want, I also wanted to come and ask if you've been drinking today. You have a couple of drinks? I had two beers. So you're just a little stressed out? Very stressed. We did get a report that you may be intoxicated, but from talking to you, you just seem upset. I and over at that beer. Yeah. That's fine. What yeah. flight do you want to put me on so I can become sober? No, because I'm a Greyhound bus driver. I know what sober I, I think is. That, I think that you're sober. I just think that you may be upset. So I'm, I'm very upset. You think, do, you want to, do you want to take a later flight out? Or do you yeah, want, whatever flight, what flight you want. What flight do you want to take down? Okay, you do what you gotta do, because it's your job. Back in Houston, Randy's tracking weather that could threaten the air show. That is some real heavy stuff. Real heavy thunderstorms. And so there's a tornado watch box over the top of it also. Oh, it's still over the top of us here. There's the box right there. If that movement in there is to the east, then I'm not going anywhere. We can handle a lot of things, mechanicals and everything else, but the weather is something we can't do any, anything about. The worst case scenario is this weather will sit over Natchez all weekend, and I won't leave here, and the air show won't happen. Back in Chicago, Angel and Anita assess Patrick's condition. I just want your opinion. You think I should deny him? I think it's true. All right. Patrick, we're going to deny you boarding to Oakland today Why? because you appear intoxicated to us. I'm not intoxicated. Well, I appear intoxicated. Uh, well, I'm not. I can, whatever you want to do, I can pass any spray test you got. I don't have a test to give you right okay, here. Okay, well, give me one. Just based give upon me you one. Just one. I will do it. This you cannot stupid. fly today on Why? us. Can I just I fly told you so. I never had this happen before. Never flying. <laughs> yeah, I just like somewhere like, okay, cool, can I get on the next time? And like, figure it out, like, get out of here. We don't want you here, get out of here. And... Sausages <laughs> and Patrick will be traveling on the first flight in the morning. Uh, all right. Can't wait to tell my parents about this one. <laughs> but I always want to make sure that the passenger is taken care of and he's safe. And it's really unsafe for someone to be that intoxicated to be in the air because the air is thinner. And I don't want anything to happen to him. Over at gate B10, Sandy and Denise still need to find 20 passengers to reroute the isolet bound flight, and time is running out. Okay, thanks. Bye. Lunch party three just checked in at the counter. I love that. Well, that's three more. So now we're up to 12? 12, 12, 13. 13. One's not a company minor. They say Neil, it looks like we will probably have 15. Okay. They said the magic number is still 20. And I don't think we're going to get 20 people, so. Where are you going to, sir? I got bumped off a flight earlier. Is it just you and your party? It's three of us. I would love to get on this flight if I could. Six, Been up at 4 o'clock since this morning. Hey, you can. Oh, that's 18. OK, he's going to talk to the side and let him know we have 18 people. So now there's a chance. Because we have 18 customers that would be displaced if we did not get something going to Providence. So we're just waiting for a confirmation because it's not as easy just to say, okay, we'll take this. They've got the okay from headquarters to reroute the flight. We're, we have an Islip flight that goes to Chicago to Islip. We're going to take it to Providence to get you guys out and bring it back to Islip. Very great. good. Southwest is a great area. <laughs> yeah, it is. The Providence-bound passengers are happy, but how will the Islip passengers feel about taking the scenic route and landing over an hour later than expected? I'm not taking you off the flight. 
At BWI, the tears are still flowing, but Chris is none the wiser about Deborah's distress. No, it doesn't matter. I'm stressed and I'm crying, and they're not going to put me on a flight to create a problem on the flight because of what, 9-11? I'm not taking off the flight. I'm crying and I'm upset. And it doesn't matter to them because they don't want to put somebody who's going to lose it on the plane because she's got too much stress. Worried about everybody's bills, worried about making sure you're happy, making her sure just making sure. I, I'm going to talk to Deborah. I mean, um, Deborah, you know, she seems upset, but maybe not intoxicated. And she seems a little high stress. No, so I'm, I'm not intoxicated. But the mint gentleman seems to be trying to help me. So yeah, I am trying worry. to. I'm trying to help. Me. With a flight full of passengers to consider, Chris has just 15 minutes to decide if Deborah should travel. Back at Midway, Denise tells the Islip passengers they'll be going home via Providence. There's a chance we will not get you there on time. We're going to get you to your destination. I understand it's that, sir. It's in my and business. I understand that, sir. You know, I, what, how am I going to be compensated? So you want to be convenient? How am I going to be compensated? You could, you could contact the customer relations on no, that. I, I'm, Let me just say, you're going to yes. inconvenience Every, well, you know, 60 I'm losing or 70 money by getting back for an hour late. Of 20. The bottom line, we get everybody to their destination bottom tonight. Line, no, but the bottom, the bottom line, line is, is everybody's getting late. I own a limousine business. No, I got to be back at a certain time. And, and, I and, and exactly. And, and you have a right. right. Said, you are flying us to Rhode Island first yes. so that the air crew will be in Iceland on Louis Sunday morning. It doesn't accommodate our well, passengers. It's, no, no, no. It's to accommodate your crew because if you accommodated your passengers, right. you would you would stop first in Long Island and to Long drop Island, us off, and then, go then to proceed Rhode to Rhode Island, which is further Further away, and then come back to accommodate your. Person. And I understand, and yeah, and you have your opinion. And I mean, I can definitely understand their frustration. This is totally unexpected. Yeah. And uh, they had no idea this was going on. So I mean, I know it's inconvenience, uh, a group of people, but I think the bottom line, we're servicing a lot more, and we're making. Uh, eventually, everybody's going to get to their destination tonight. And I think that's the bottom line. Randy's found a break in the weather and takes to the skies, bound for the air show in Natchez, Mississippi. <music> 300 miles later, Randy arrives at the air show. Waiting for him is event organizer Corky Fornoff, one of Randy's biggest fans. The thing that I like about uh, Randy is, uh, in, is the passion. You know, when you find somebody that his day job is flying the airliner, and he's very good at that with all the tests you have to take and everything, but his passion for aviation is when he's not flying the airliner, he's out flying this other airplane, you know, and, and off of the strip right in front of his house. Wife Di and son Jed lend their support. Our father, as long as we're in heaven, heaven will be there now. Safety. It's a little bit more of a focus now since I've had a new son show up. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch him grow up. It, you know, it's a little bit hazardous. And uh, just like to be around a long time to teach him to do this. Be evil for that glory forever. Amen. Be safe. I will. Be safe. Mr. Jed, you be safe too, huh? Yeah. And I'll see you when I get back on the ground. All right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't go up with him. I kind of smell a little bit of alcohol on her. I can't make the decision, but I don't think that she's too intoxicated. Back in Baltimore, Chris has asked Beth for a second opinion. Um, Beth, she's, a, she's a one of the other supervisors. She's going to talk to you for a little bit and see what you might want to do. And, uh, you know, we just want you to be happy and comfortable on whatever plan that you get on. And, and you know, I understand. Put me on the later flight, because that's what you guys want to do the best. That's Where are you going? I'm going have lots of junk here in the airport while you're away. I had two beers. Do you want the receipt? No, I don't. Do you feel like you're safe enough to fly? I, mean, I wouldn't want to jeopardize the other passengers. But you can jeopardize me. Well, ma'am, we just have to make sure that you're okay to fly safe. I mean, in the event of an emergency, you have to be able to perform the emergency procedures. I'm a bus driver. I know your procedure. You're not comfortable, and that's why you're bringing it to my attention. So you can put your back down. What we're going to do, we're going to take you off of this flight and put you on the 810 departure. 
In the meantime, we'll get you a boarding pass and everything, so you're all set until you board. Um, okay, if you want to, there's a whole bunch of places you can stop and eat, get some coffee. Yeah. The only thing I would suggest that you not do is go back to the bar, okay? That is Thank the last flight for the night. Thank you. I'm telling you, it's not the alcohol. I'm telling you, I'm tired of being responsible for everybody else's issues. You've got a man who's trying to tell you it's over. You, you guys are sitting here and saying, hmm, we're going to take you off the flight. How would you feel? Here's your boarding passport. You don't need to check in again until you're bored, OK? So you go straight just right here. Let me see. I may not. Let me see. Let me write the gate on there for you, OK? Don't bother. I know how to read the monitors. Monitors. You need, Have a good day. If you need anything else, let one of us know, all right? I don't need to let either one what could have been construed as hostility, I think that she was just more stressed out, really stressed out. We don't want her crying hysterically, you know, 35,000 feet in the air, causing any kind of scene up upstairs because, you know, unpleasant things can happen. So we just decided to uh, rule on the side of caution and, and send her home. Deborah stayed away from the bar and made it home on the eight o'clock flight. Back at Midway, the remaining Islip passengers are given the bad news about the extra leg to Providence. This aircraft will make an unscheduled stop in Providence and then go on to Islip. Oh. You'll arrive in Islip about an hour late. Oh. We'll drop the passengers off and then you guys will continue on to Islip. Well, why don't you go there later and let right. them wait? Yeah. Any questions from you guys? Yes. I just finished crying for half an hour with my ears popping now. I've got to go up again, down again, up again, and down again. Can you suggest anything I can do? As far as with your ears? Yes. Right. I mean, besides chewing gum, to help, you know, and I apologize. As the flight takes off, Sandy and Denise can relax. We've been looking at this flight for how many hours now? It's Since like this morning. Uh, yeah, I think we've been dealing with Since this. It's about 9 o'clock this morning because we knew this was coming and we tried our best, best to prepare ourselves for it. Thank you Thank so much, you. Sandy. Whoa. Couldn't have did it without you. Glad you stayed. Good job. Back in Mississippi, and it's showtime for Randy. look out for us. He really did. Clouds raised up, visibility got better, the rain showers went away. Uh, I got back to the basics of, of entertaining. It's a waiting game on airline. One traveler can't wait to go home. I have children at home and a babysitter who needs to go someplace. I can't get home. Another can't wait for his medication. Well, if anything happens to my health, you'd be held responsible. Some can't wait to show off their talent. And one passenger can't wait for a smoke. Yeah, you know what he said to me? I don't give a You want to smoke a cigarette in that? That's, that's his attitude. Four thousand passengers are booked to fly out of Chicago Midway on Southwest today. But with long lines and a low pressure system rolling up the eastern seaboard, the staff is up against it. 
Just to let you know, my company spends $40,000 a year with Southwest, and we're this close to letting you guys go. And things like that is not going to be good for your company. Sheila Feinbaum spent two and a half hours at check-in, and her flight left on time without her. All other flights east are overbooked. The least you could do is have the common courtesy to give us what we asked for, and that is a guaranteed seat on a flight that we pay for. I, now, I you tell us to show up at the airport an hour and a half before our flight takes off. We do our due diligence and come here two hours before. I have children at home and a babysitter who needs to go someplace. I can't get home. If you want to wait just a moment, you can talk to Phil. He is a supervisor. That's fine. I'll wait to speak with him. Sheila may have a long wait. At LAX, Sayadul Hassan is on his way to a doctor's appointment in New Orleans, but missed his connection. Pauline steps in. There were, about, there were 11 of you who came in off that flight, and apparently the other 10 made it. I'm not saying it's your fault, but I mean, did you hustle? I may not be able to walk as fast as any other guys, right. but that doesn't mean I'm really slow, you know? Okay, I apologize. I'm not really sure what happened. I'll get you on to New Orleans today. You will get in. There's a 1255 flight, one that leaves in about 15 minutes. It gets you via Houston. And I can give you a confirmed seat on that one, and it gets you in at 9. Mr. Hassan is taking antibiotics for an eye injury, but his medication is on its way to New Orleans without him. When I got in the aircraft, you have no room to put my little bag luggage. Now my medication is over there, so I got to catch there as soon as possible. I can't wait. Medication is due every four hours. There's about three of them I take. So it's a very serious case. The best bet out of here is to get on the 1255. As it stands, we have about nine minutes. So who's going to help me with your medication? Can you? Stuff that you're going to need in the next four hours? Yes, it's I do. Exactly. Not eight, right okay, well, we can put me on another flight with the Continental, whatever it is, and your cost, you know, as soon as you can get me there. I see if they have a flight. I yes. doubt it they're going to have one that leaves in 15, in 10 minutes. As long as they get me by 6 or 6.30, I'm all set. It goes it's not, you know, held responsible for everything, you know? We don't have any more non-stops to New Orleans. Everything changes either in Las Vegas or Houston. He, for some reason, was made to check his carry-on, which had his meds, so that kind of makes the situation a little bit more hairy. I'm very upset. I may have to see a lawyer and get that straight, because they, these people need to run their show better than they think. At overcrowded Midway, one passenger is not taking the delay lightly. I'm terribly unhappy with this situation. We purchased tickets, and this lady here tells me that the flight is overbooked. How can you possibly sell more tickets than you have seats for? Summertime travel, then you need to make accommodations for that summertime travel. I'm sorry. That's all right. But I'm sure you can't be having an easy day. Believe me, we're all with you. We're all with you. Well, then maybe we should all do business with another airline. This is very disappointing. But I thought you'd tell me that you were overbooked. It is, ma'am. I'm trying to help you. I'm going to oversell their flight. OK, you have to How am I supposed to get on there? I'm just supposed to run when they call the flight and get on there and hope that I get my seat? And if you're telling me the flight is overbooked, that means that there's a put you. I gave you a boarding pass. Oh, OK. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for your help. Hey, Angel, how are you? Thank you both. Thanks. Thank you. You're all good. Thank you. Bye-bye. But Sheila's problems are not over yet. This flight, due to air traffic control, has been delayed. And so we're just a, a victim of circumstance today. There's absolutely nothing that can be done today. At LAX, Mr. Hassan and Pauline are still struggling to find a solution. I can't buy you a ticket on Continental either. I can refund this ticket that you have, and then you have to purchase a ticket on them and take it up with Customs Relations later on as far as the reimbursements is concerned. Wait I'm trying to get you home. I'm going to try to get you home and so that you don't get sick and get you to your meds as soon as I possibly can. There's a fly to New Orleans, but it's not direct. As it stands, we have four minutes. I have cards for you to get on this 1255 flight. You want to do it? 
What about the that gets you out of here. We need to get you home. We need to get you to your meds. Yeah. So you, it's one option. One option is you get on this flight that leaves, gets you in at nine. The other option is you opt to stay and wait for a possible flight on another carrier, which may but not exist. But what if I get in this flight? I don't want to get my medication. That's my main You're concern. You're going to be late taking it. You know I'm saying it's, it's better to be late taking it now than not having it at all. I'm going to take it. I'm going to be in Houston for another four, whatever no, hours. I'm going to be in Houston for 45 minutes. You see, Sam, we need to make a decision. If anything happens to my health, you'll be held responsible. That's, that's put it that way. You're gonna put something in writing that we are writing responsible because we're not. Funny, but I mean, I can't. I can let me. <laughs> I can fly you back home to where your medicine bottle is. That you can call a doctor and at least you can get your meds this evening before nine. That's the most I can do. Okay. Heavy fog on the east coast is also causing problems in Baltimore. Flights into Manchester have been canceled, and a human bottleneck is developing at BWI. Manager Mike is off to greet some passengers returning to the airport. This flight was on the way to Manchester, and they obviously had fog and weren't able to land, so they diverted back to Baltimore. Currently, the weather in Manchester is horrible. Uh, it's very foggy. We do have other flights scheduled. However, at this time, we've been told not to expect any of them to leave. It's the weather. No, the weather there. isn't that bad. I call people that are there. It's not that bad. Well, it's not that bad. I've landed in far worse stuff than that. And I've flown this stuff every single week for a year. Frustrated passenger Scott Milk is feeling a bit sour. I only go home every couple weeks. You know, I obviously want to go see my uh, my woman. <laughs> You stick me in the air for all that time, flying around for three hours, can't have a cigarette. I come back here and the guy, you know what he said to me? I don't give a if you want to smoke a cigarette or not. That's, that's his attitude. I'm sorry, who said that? That's a bad attitude. I'm sorry. On board a flight from Vegas to Fort Lauderdale are four professional bartenders. We're going down to Miami to do this competition called Nations. Uh, it's basically a once a year kind of thing. And it's one of the biggest of the year. Leader of Team Rio is Rick Barcode. We're, we're traveling together as a team to represent the place that we work for. And although we're, in, we're competing individually, we're here to support each other and uh, show the world what, uh, what we do back home. Rick and James don't just mix drinks, they're flair bartenders. Oh my goodness. Ready? Yeah, these guys have a lot of talent. At Midway, Philadelphia-bound passengers are allowed off the plane, but Sheila is taking no chances and stays on board. 90 minutes we've been on the plane. 90 minutes. They're saying that the airport in Philadelphia is shut down right now. They don't have any indication as to when they're going to open the airport up. We just want to go home. We want to go home. And it's very frustrating. It's, it's frustrating for us to sit at the gate. I mean, uh, you know, we, we want to get everybody on time, where they need to go all the time. Inside the terminal, patience is a virtue, and passengers find many ways to pass the time. In Los Angeles, Mr. Hassan waits for options on other airlines. Four airlines. Good. Continental, United, USA, and American. None of them have a nonstop. And and nothing gets there before nine. Nothing gets there before nine, no matter what. What else? So, that's it. That leaves us. Southwest is not going to pay for your ticket. They're not going to. We're not going to pay for a ticket well, on another you carrier. I'm a lawyer all about it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm trying to make it easy on you. Okay. Whatever you want to I'm do. on your side. I'm trying to get you there. I think you passed up the best it one. Yet, I How did I pass up? Well, I think R1255 would have gotten you there in, you know, earlier than all these other ones. You'd have gotten in at 9. Just one hour earlier, you're not mind. I know. But I mean, one hour beats, you know, two hours. Right. I can get you set up for the, our next flight out, 2.45, it gets you in at 10. That one late, you'd be in big trouble. Well, 
I'm glad I can have you smile in spite of all this. ETA, 10 p.m. I swear. At last, Mr. Hassan is on his way to New Orleans. Have a good flight. Oh, yeah, you know. Thank you oh, so much. Yep. All right. Have okay. a good day. All right. He shook my hand. Usually people just storm off and leave because they're upset. Kind of sorry he didn't make the choice earlier to get on the 1255 because at least that would have bought him an additional hour. While at Midway, the flight to Philadelphia is ready to depart. I have no words for my disappointment today. <laughs> I just... I have no words. I just want to go home. Meanwhile, with Manchester still locked down, Baltimore is clogging up. Orlando at 5 o'clock. 1120 inbound from Manchester is canceled. The flight that we were going to board here a few minutes ago, flight 615, our 150 departure just canceled as well. It looks like really dense fog they're having. So they're less than a quarter mile visibility right now. So they're unable to land or take off, it sounds like now. It's going to be a busy night. Carol breaks the bad news to the waiting passengers. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to board the aircraft right now. We've been told that there's an indefinite wait to get into Manchester, so they don't want to get you all on the aircraft and then have you wait possibly two to three hours. But we'd rather have you all wait here and be able to give you updates from inside the terminal. Go back home again, honey. They lied to us again. They told us to get in line. And now they said, oh, we want you to wait here just so we can give you updates here. Well, we don't want to sit here in the damn terminal waiting. No, they're just bullshitting over and over again, you know? Massachusetts brother. <laughs> you go, buddy. <laughs> but anyway, forget it. Don't, don't be taken off. Yeah, let me do it. Bye-bye. Bunch of freaking idiots. It's pretty stupid to tell people to go up here and stand in line, wait to get on a plane, and then, oh, we'd like you to hang around the terminal. Well, people get hungry, thirsty. We don't want to sit here. Tell us what's going on. <laughs> Meanwhile, in fog-free Miami, Team Rio readies themselves for some stiff competition. Uh, we have some of the best flare bartenders in the world here today. Uh, today's the qualifying. It's the nation's international flare challenge. There's going to be 14 competitors today. And we're going to take the top eight to go tomorrow night and compete against four of the best flare bartenders on, on the planet. Rick, I mean, uh, he's been in the Legends Finals almost every year he's done it. I mean, Rick is definitely a world competitor. James is on this stage uh, probably one of the first times, but he's he's done very well in a lot of the other competitions that I've run, and I'm, I expect him, I definitely expect him to be in the finals too. Hopefully we do all right. I'm one of the oldest on the uh, professional circuit. I think I'm the oldest competing here today. And, uh, and I'm only 33. The worst thing that can happen to me is uh, a few mistakes early on and it snowball or, or nerves get to me even before I've thrown the first thing and I get jittery and that can really, that can really hurt. For Rick and Team Rio, the real action is just ahead. Back at BWI, Sue Lee is coping with the backlog. We're just gonna have to sit tight. Like I said, if you're local, and you can uh, rebook for tomorrow. I suggest you do that because we are not going to be able to accommodate all the passengers if we are able to get the flights out. Meanwhile, the passengers cope in different ways. I'm seriously contemplating getting a hotel room and just putting my feet up for the night and flying out tomorrow morning. I'm going to stay with my father, who was in the hospital. We've got three diverted flights coming in from Florida going to Manchester, so. Let me see that for a second. Scott was looking forward to a weekend with his girlfriend. I ain't going home till here, because it ain't worth going home this weekend. Oh, so you're going to stay here in Baltimore? Yeah, there's no choice, because uh, oh, okay. it ain't worth going home for a few hours. Okay. Scott cuts his losses and heads home. Everyone else waits for news. Why did they let our flight leave? They should have never let our flight leave. As frustration mounts, Craig tries to calm the crowd. Are you guys all going to Manchester? Yeah. Come on over here. We're going to try to answer some of your questions. It is not anticipated that we're going to have anything going to Manchester for at least another two hours. So, like I said, take a deep breath. There's not a big hurry right now because at this point in time, we've got a lot of planes going nowhere. In Miami, the flare bartender qualifying round gets underway. 
Is everybody ready? The FBA presents the Sky Vodka Finest Call Nation's International Flare Challenge. Here we are, qualifying day one. Three, two, one, go! Two drinks in four minutes, 14 contenders, but only eight bartenders will make it into the final round. Welcome from the Rio Oswich Casino, Mr. Rick Barcode. This drops straight off the bat. And remember I said earlier, like, if I drop straight away, it's going to kind of snowball, and it did a little. I think I kind of regained it halfway through, but it was definitely um, not the show that I wanted to put on. All I can do is wait and see. Will Rick's error cost him a place in the final? James had his with a score of 3 and 4 2. Congratulations. Thomas Alley. The score of 290, Rick Varcode. Yeah. We all made it. We all made it. <laughs> it's going to be a fun night tomorrow. As night falls at BWI, the fog over Manchester lifts. We have got clearance to go on to Manchester. But with only one flight cleared to leave, seats are limited. Delandi, Moody. Not James Reagan. You. Lee, John Lee. Did you call on free? I wasn't there. I'm going to go to B16. B16. LeBlanc. Yeah. Keith? Yes. Oh, Keith shit. LeBlanc. All right, come on. Yes. I'm with I'm LeBlanc. OK, Fitzgerald. Got it. Where do I go? White. Gordon, right here. Right here? Yep. The flight pushes back, leaving many passengers behind. I left North Carolina at 8 o'clock this morning. OK. I went to, Paul, I went to Manchester. Well, we made a decision again. of how we were going to do it, and that's He's the way that we're going to so do it. So we end up losing. Passenger Thomas Haynes has run out of patience. We've been here since 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, 1 o'clock. I've already been to Manchester, circled for an hour, and came back. I'm sitting here. My wife's at Manchester, has no money to get out of the parking garage, and she's up there waiting for me. <laughs> In an airport for the day is not my idea of a good time. I have a five-month-old baby, and I have to get home. Please. Finally, the remaining flights are given the green light. Ten hours later, we're off and running. Back to Manchester. Have a good night. Almost 10 o'clock. And it looks like we pretty much wrapped up everything with Manchester. We had, at one point, we probably had four to 500 passengers trying to get to Manchester from either diverted flights or from canceled flights out of here. But uh, we've been very busy doing it. It's no sense coming to work if you can't have fun, right? That's it. What flight are you trying to go? Oh, you're trying to go to Austin. Are you taking that yet? No, it's just decision. <laughs> It's happy hour in Miami, and time for the boys from Bar Rio to strut their stuff.
And in ninth place... They may not have finished first, but no one leaves empty-handed. I'm so proud of these guys. I think we kicked ass. I honestly don't think that you could ask for a better outcome from picking four people from one casino. We all got what we came here for, and that's a trophy. For the boys from Bar Rio, it's time to raise a glass to themselves. Everyone's crying for help on airline. There are tears in LA. My cell phone is in my luggage. And it's going to plane and it's leaving. A call for courtesy. To put people like us on standby, I don't, I don't know that that's a marvelous solution. And cries of desperation at BWI. <laughs> my son is six years old. I can't believe you're doing this to my baby. <laughs> At Baltimore Washington International, the final touches are being put to a new terminal. We can't wait. We're really excited about it. It's been a few years in the making, so I'm really looking forward to experiencing, you know, something brand new. Might want to sleep here. Who knows? I might camp out in the corner. There's a party to open it to the public. I think it's terrific. And Herb Kelleher, Southwest's founder, is on hand to help. <laughs> Exalted transported. I've looked forward to this for at least six or seven years, and I think they did a fantastic job. The new terminal is up and running, but it faces familiar problems. They were totally inattentive and unprofessional, and where their customer service people absolutely failed. I have no seats to confirm you on tonight. After a delayed flight from San Francisco, the Freewolds have missed their connection to New York. Ten hours later, we arrived here in Baltimore, emerged from the plane after eating lots of peanuts. Ten hours it consumes a lot of peanuts, and there's no one here. So, frankly, what they've obviously done is compounded the injury. No one was there. Rachel's trying to find alternatives for the Freewolds. How about to New York City? We don't fly to New York. How about a train to New York City? We don't do that. How what about some accommodation? Um, if I don't get there, we just spent 10 hours on a flight. No one met my flight to sit, tell people what to do. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I can't control the weather, and uh, we don't accommodate for weather delays. I don't know. I don't know. Every phone number I need is in the cell phone. What is your cell phone? My cell phone is in my luggage. And it's going to that plane and it's leaving. At LAX, Rebecca modichek has been denied boarding. Yeah, well, I can't pull it. Well, could we call 411 and find somebody? Yes, yeah, call this number yeah. right here. Sure, we'll call this number right now. Oh, Rebecca just came to the ticket counter and her ticket wasn't paid for. She had a travel agency ticket and she came up to board the flight. <laughs> Oh, you don't, you don't need to right here. That's, That's a fax number. I don't know the number. There is another flight I could put you on. So let's resolve the situation, what's going on with your ticket, and you could leave later. But you won't make this flight right now. My luggage is on that flight. My cell phone is in my luggage. I have no cell phone. I have no way to call anybody. Because all my phone numbers, I don't memorize, and they're all on my cell phone. It's a human error and, you know, or maybe completely computer glitch, so nobody knows what happened. Rebecca's flight leaves in 10 minutes, and the clock's ticking for Gigi. No one's asking you to be responsible for the weather. 
that doesn't obviate the need to be decent to human beings. Back at BWI, Bernie looks to Rachel to put him out of his misery. We can put you on the standby list, but there's still a list, and it's still standby. To put people like us on, and simply say, hey, you're, we're going to put you on standby, I don't, I don't know that that's a marvelous solution. Like, pay for our hotel. Get us out for, on the first flight in the morning, fine. Pay for our hotel. Frankly, financially, I don't need them to pay for my hotel. But I think that that would be a courtesy. What I can do is give you a voucher for a discounted rate at a local hotel. You have to call this number, this 800 number. I'm They'll give you a hotel that. name, a rate, and a confirmation I, number. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do that. And then I, I strongly suggest you guys write into customer service. They're not being, in my view, very courteous. Yeah, That's the long and short of it. I will. I'm just so homesick. I just want to go home. Like, California was great and everything, but I just want to go home. In L.A., Rebecca's chances of getting home depend on Gigi. I guess she's going to get me on another flight. I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any other flight tonight to put her on. She's going all the way to New Orleans. Away from my family, my son, I've been working, so. I just want to go home, that's all. Just want to go home. Well, if you could make an exception, because uh, I will have to make that decision at this time. You know what? Go ahead and go. Thank you. Go ahead. But when you arrive in Las Vegas, yeah. look for flight 2224. OK. OK? Thank go you. ahead and go. Thank you. Thank you. Did you ask for purple? She was very upset. And I told travel agency about it. And they admitted that it's their fault. And they will pay for the ticket. Thanks. Thanks. Since the plane was still here, I just tried to put her on and just you know, get her out of here so she won't be standby for the rest of the night. Well, you could have been here two hours before. Well, I could have been here two days before, but they told me to be here an hour before. I mean, there's no okay. need for him to get smart with All right, me. let's go down here. Let's see what we can rearrange for you for another flight. At BWI, Sam Miller's missed his flight to Oakland. I was told to be here an hour before, and I got here an hour before, and I sat in line, and I missed my flight because they're understaffed or the line's too long or whatever. And then I got a guy over there that wants to get smart with me and say I could have been here two hours before. Well, I could have been here two days before, but I was told to be an hour before, and that's when I was here. There was no need for that guy over there to get smart with me. Well, I apologize for that. I, you know, I will speak to him. I don't know if I can get you to Oakland tonight. Let me see what I can do. Now, that bag may not make it, but... Um, so you're going to get me there, but you're not going to get my bag there? I can't guarantee that your bag would get there at the same... And the reason why is because you're going to be late checked. I will do my best to get that bag down there. I'm trying to get him through Indy and L.A. Unfortunately, that's the only way I can get him to Oakland tonight. Sam may be on, but what about his bag? I'll do what I can to get it on and get it down there as quickly as possible. So run on down to the gate. They know that you're coming. It'll be the first group of gates on okay. your right-hand side. Sam sprints to the gate, but will his bag be left behind? At BWI, the Freewolds may be fed up, but at least they're being fed by Rachel. She's making somewhat amends for a very bad situation. So I thought I'd give them a meal on us. She's giving us a voucher, which I'm allowing her to do, but... Uh, Just a little bit of goodwill goes a long way. So be it. And the Freewolds decide to stay put in Baltimore for the night. They put us on a priority standby for a flight leaving at 9 o'clock this evening. We decided not to do that. Uh, and because so what we, we would not get into New York City till midnight. So is... we're staying at a hotel here this evening. The cost of the hotel will be our cost, but so be it. And we'll take a first morning flight out. Across the terminal, Sam and his bag are trying to make it on the flight. But Janice has no record of Sam's transfer. Have you made changes? I'm sorry? Have you made any changes? Have I made any changes? You're trying to go to Oakland? It says flight two. Hold on, hold on. Finally, he gets the nod. <laughs> 
Sam Bag and Plane converge and make their way to Oakland. At Houston, passengers are receiving an offer they can refuse. Would you like to volunteer? Oh, no. oh. Would you be interested in that? No. It's it's that's not, not a good, good deal. deal. The 5 o'clock flight to New Orleans has been oversold, and Cindy's desperately seeking help. We are completely full right now. We are still looking for some volunteers who might have flexible travel plans. If there's anybody that would like to give up their seat on this one, we got a guaranteed seat for you on the 6.05 departure. Just about everything is completely sold out. We have a like every hour or every half hour flight. So, you know, that's a pretty high frequency for all of those to be completely sold out and completely full. So it'll be pretty busy. <laughs> $200 plus whatever you paid for your one-way ticket that's in the form of a travel voucher, which is like a gift certificate. Grab a friend, come on down. <laughs> we are still looking for four seats, four seats. That's all I need. Come on. Sweetheart, for $200, I can show you a good time. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> once again, folks? Going once, because if she doesn't, I can't. Going Come once? On. <laughs> Going go, twice? Go, go. What, are we talking cash here or are we talking a coupon? If it was cash, I would do it. No, it's not cash. Okay. Show me the money. What was that movie? Julie prepares some passengers for the possibility of being bumped. I want to own a dish. Okay. Unfortunately, right now, I don't have any volunteers willing to give up their seats. If and when I get some volunteers, I'll call you up and accommodate you on this flight. Possessing a valid ticket may not guarantee travel today. Another Friday night at the airport. We just got word that there's an intoxicated customer at Alpha 2, going to Buffalo. At BWI, Supervisor Howard's had an inside tip-off. My wife gave me the heads up on this. She's flying on that flight. She just called me and said, there's someone really drunk at that gate. But you know what? That's good to know. We, we get to have to have customers help us out, even if they are our wives. Can I talk to you? Yes, you can. Have you had something to drink tonight? Um, yes, I did, on your airplane. OK. A, a Shikon Royal and a Bloody Mary. Um, this gentleman right here stepped up. There was no problem. We were all joking around. He stepped up and grabbed me by my collar like this and pulled me. I'm just showing you. Okay. Pulled me. He pulled me and he said, um, you could ask those people over there. Would you what? like to? Would you like to ask them? Well, could you ask them? Okay, um, so why are the, why, why is there complaints? I, I don't know are who's you, complaining. Well, you know, the problem is, is we, we don't allow people to fly drunk. Oh, but you'll much. serve me drunk. But you have you have your own personal responsibility. I have my own personal responsibility, but you're telling me I can't fly if I've had too much to drink. But yet you're going to tell me what to drink and what not to drink. Come on. It's Come whose on, decision dude. is to ask for a drink? If you've had enough, you've had enough. I am on vacation, so I feel I can. If they are offering me, I'm taking it. You want to turn around and f me for it? Then f me. It's not acceptable. You don't have to say that. Okay, I, I'm and just saying. You know saying. what? You can speak a little bit softer. Too. No, I, I don't want to speak a little bit softer because I'm very hostile right now. in like 15, 20 minutes. So I still need six seats. At Houston, Cindy hopes persistence will pay off. Okay, folks, it's me again. <laughs> now you're gonna make me beg. So maybe you just weren't listening the first 17 times I made this announcement, so I'm gonna just repeat it again. All I need is one person to grab five of their closest friends and come on over here to see me. I might sound a little annoying right now. <laughs> Boarding begins, but with no takers, Mr. Chen finds himself at the bottom of the list. Unfortunately, I don't have a seat for you. The flight is full. So how to do? When I do job, how to do? At BWI, Elizabeth Tiberio has been denied boarding. So if I lose this flight, my son races number one in New York State. If he, if, if I don't see him, you'll we'll know. We can rebook you for tomorrow. No. You want to book me for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You want to do that? Yeah. OK, I need a lawyer. Can you give me a lawyer? I need a lawyer. Do you uh, my son does race. What's your last name? Tiberio, T-I-B-E-R-I-O. Why don't you come over here my, to the podium? No, my son's, my son's number one in come New York on. State come on. on a motocross. Yeah, you'll know it. You're gonna know. Come on, I over want here. a lawyer. Do you guys hear me? I want a lawyer now. They served me a call for the last 12 hours, and now they want me to miss my son's race in New York? No. These people suck. If I'm drunk, 
That's from Southwest, because I had, I had nothing on my way in. Um, this is what I had on the way there. And she took it and dumped it and said I had drank their liquor. So I said, okay, um, I'll drink your liquor. <laughs> I party, I have a good time, I pay my bills, I take care of my son. I have not been around for many years. Listen to me, I need to see this race. No, I f***ed up my own everything until now, and I'm not f***ing this up if I gotta walk there. We have a passenger that's intoxicated. We sure could use your support. At Midway, Butch Dennis is beginning a series of life-changing journeys with the help of ramp supervisor Jared. I'm trying to get my life back, so this means everything to me, this trip. Uh, the doctors, the facilities, everything. We went to the Rehab Institute of Chicago for therapy for myself. Time to muscle up, fellas. It's <laughs> all right. There's no problem, man. I was in a car wreck, so hopefully they can get me back to where I, at least close to where I was. One, two, three. The accident was in August of last year. Okay. Go ahead to lift this up over that. And I was a school teacher and a personal trainer, so. Everything could change in just a flash, whether you're driving, whether it's your fault or not. You know, someone hit me, so it wasn't my fault. Just one of those things you got to deal with. Meanwhile, back at BWI. Mr. Barrio, I think we're going to put you on tomorrow morning's flight. OK, I think that's going to be best for you. My son races tomorrow morning. I have done everything I can. Well, you really should not have had what you had to drink, because unfortunately... Uh, I have what? I've had two? But you, unfortunately, some people can take two drinks and... What have I done? That I can't see my son's race. Because, <laughs> because there's, there's, unfortunately, there are rules that we follow. Would but, you like to know what they serve me on the plane? Uh, you already told me, but it has no, not... You, no, I didn't. It's not about you. I'm not missing my son's race. I can't make it to do... I can't make it to my food. Well, yeah. we're going to get you out oh, of, the, out of the air at 9.55 tomorrow I'm a morning. I need a lawyer. I have my son's waiting for me to 96 years old. I've quit drugs. You test me. I have quit drugs. You know, test me. But I'm sorry. I've been away from my kid for a very long All you had to do is cooperate. Okay, listen. You know I want a drug test. I am sober. You're going down. We're gonna we're gonna put you on the next flight. Okay. And tomorrow. You're going down because my son is waiting for me to 96 years old. My son is six years old. My son is six years old. I can't believe you're doing this to my baby. <laughs> Me in six months because I've been rehab. And you'll get there tomorrow morning. I've been in rehab for six months and he hasn't seen me. And um and he'll see you tomorrow no, morning. That's okay. I paid a lot of money for a flight. But you'll go there tomorrow morning. No, I'm okay. You guys want to talk? Yeah. You really want to talk? Let's go. Wait, wait, get his name because he's yeah. a he's get his name. Um, I'm not doing nothing. Shoot, shoot. I had a couple drinks on his flight, and he's trying to tell me that I can't leave until tomorrow morning. My son is six years old. He races dirt bikes. There is no Calm way. Down. Down. <laughs> I, I apologize, sir. Unfortunately, I don't have any more so seats who, on the aircraft. Who I can complain? When I lose the job, that boss angered me, then fired me. Then your company need a ticket or I need to call a lawyer. At Houston, Julie explains overbooking. Just like with every other carrier, sir, we overbook the majority of our flights and expect no shows. Unfortunately, with this flight, almost everyone showed up. You fulfilled your end of the deal. You showed up and we didn't have a seat for you. So in, in that respect, we have to compensate you for that. We have another job. We need to go go back. I go understand, back sir, and I apologize. Unfortunately, there are no more seats. You apologize when I lose the job. How to do? I, I could give you a note, an explanation of delay you getting there. But uh, unfortunately, but, uh, I don't but have you a seat guarantee for you. my boss not file. Well, I, I can't make those type of guarantees, sir. This gentleman, unfortunately, was involuntarily denied boarding, which means that he didn't volunteer. He didn't want to give up his seat. So what I'm doing now is writing him uh, refund drafts for his compensation and uh, confirming him on the 605 departures. I'm also going to give him an explanation of delay to his uh, company, because apparently he was going to work and, and was kind of short on time. So, Mr. Chen breaks the bad news to his boss. Maybe I tried another company, you know, better the Southwest, I chose another one. Yeah. This is a very big wheelchair. Uh, I'm going to take it down and put it in a bin for him. We've got to disassemble some of it. 
Excuse me, ma'am. At Midway, Jared takes the strain for Butch. It just makes things a little more difficult. You just have to use a little more mental than physical now. All right, this is a device we just got to lift it up, lift it up to the belt loader so our guys don't have to lift it. We're less injuries this way. It's about three or 400 pounds, easy. Oh, they're excellent. This is my first time traveling this way, and they've done a great job. So now I know the way they do it and everything. I feel a lot better. It won't be a problem next time. I feel good about this. You know, I really feel good because we really helped, some, helped someone today. All right, guys. I even gave him my card and told him when he comes back, call me, and I'll be your form. Butch continues to make progress and is now taking his first steps since the accident. Something's going on other than me. You're using me for it. I can see it in your eyes because I'm smart. I'm, I graduated third in my class. I may be a stripper, but I'm not stupid. Because I will follow up on this. This is my boy. Come over here with me. Right. I'll talk to him. At BWI, the cops are getting the story straight. She was very loud and obnoxious and began speaking too loudly. And then I came over and she dropped a couple of F-bombs. I said, ma'am, you need to quiet down. I said, well, there are other people here, young kids, that don't need to hear what you have to say. No, no. Third in the class. <laughs> class, <laughs> class of three. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to rebook you for tomorrow morning. If you act like this on the ground, I'm real concerned about what you'd be like in the air. Let me get my wits about myself because I graduated third in my class and I'm, I'm going to do this the right way. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> if I miss my kids' race, there's no way I'm missing my kids' race. I went to rehab for my kids' race. There's no way I'm missing this flight. If I miss this flight, I need a ride. But the cops decide to escort Elizabeth from the terminal. Ms. Tiberio uh, obviously had an awful lot to drink on her way from San Diego. And she came down here to share her state of mind with us. She had uh, made some headway in terms of coming out of rehab. I'm not so sure how much headway she made. And it gets worse for Elizabeth. What happened to her? What'd she do? She's still being belligerent. Uh, you know, I just can't do that. The police escorted her off the concourse. She continued to show hostile behavior. And she was belligerent. And next thing you know, she got arrested. So she won't be staying here at the airport. She'll be staying in a different location tonight. She may not be able to make tomorrow morning's flight after all. about control on airline. A passenger goes haywire at Midway. Screw you guys. Hear me? The whole family, screw you. Staffers are on cruise control. <laughs> and one airline employee loses it in Baltimore. Chicago Midway, Thomas Wire was pulled off an earlier flight to Tampa for being intoxicated and told to come back once he'd sobered up. Yeah, hey, I waited. I've been here from 6.30 in the morning. I know. Till now. I know. What time is it? What time is it? Right now it's a quarter to seven. Really? So it's almost 11 hours, right? Now I talked to you. I talked to you. I talked to your brother. 12 o'clock. I, I don't care who you talk to. You're talking to me now. Okay. Well, he's asking what? for me to what? refund your ticket and you not travel or go on the cruise. He don't want me to go at all? They told me, like, get rid of me. Well, they didn't necessarily me me. say that. But am I any different than where I was when you took me out the plane? Well, you're not staggering. You're standing straight right now. I wasn't standing before. I was sleeping on the plane with my shirt off. I took my shirt off. I know. That's why you took me out of the plane. You got to take my shirt off. I took you off the plane because you couldn't walk straight. Okay. Right now, I want my flight. Refunded the ticket, sir. 
I don't care if you get the So if he's refunded the ticket, there's no way for you to travel there. It's not good. This ain't good at all. Okay. So you let's, let's go let's make a phone call. call. Him. Okay, let's go talk to let's Jim. Go. Several thousand feet above the terminal, the pilot of Flight 1004 is forced to make a dramatic U-turn and return to the airport, just minutes after takeoff. Do they get off? Do they get off? Just have them remain on board for the immediate moment. We do apologize once again for the inconvenience. Our maintenance personnel should be arriving here shortly. We uh, hope to get you on your way in here just as soon as they give us the okay. So uh, once again, folks, give us a few moments and we'll get, get you on your way. How far did we get before we turned around? He, it was on takeoff and then he circled around and came back. Well, the stick shaker, I'm sure, came on because this angle attack's broken. And, and it sounded, like I said, without seeing it, it sounded like he said it's broken. And I don't know if that means it's ripped off or what. But I'll give you a call back in just a couple minutes. Okay. For some, the delay could be costly. So we got married, and our family's in Ohio, and they're trying to celebrate. They're waiting for us. us. We just got married. We have about 20 minutes to get there. Nice. They're gonna hold this celebration. You're cutting your losses. You're cutting your losses? You wanna come back another day? Of course. Oh, we, I love, love you guys. So we gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ohio today. I understand. If the maintenance team can't fix the fault in time, the flight will have to be canceled. Well, actually, we rotated the airplane kind of a little bit of roll to the right. Back inside the terminal, Thomas pleads his case to Anita. It's very bad for you. Oh, well, yeah. My brother, screw him. No, hey, screw them all. These are my lives. I'm the same way I was four hours ago. I'm a plane, mm -hmm. off the plane. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing. I feel like I'm a criminal in the airport. Why are you I'm the same person. But I don't That's want it. you to be the same person that you were before. That's it. This is me. You got your phone list for your brother's phone number? Actually, I really didn't want to go with my family under screws. Because maybe they get sunk or something. I don't care what happens, but. This is from Southwest. I have Let me talk to him. But right now, I really don't want to go. And now she's helping me out real good. She's being a mediator of people that are like. Don't want me to be there anyway. Hello? Yes. Do you not want me with you or what? What do you want to do, Jim? Jim, what do you want to do? Well, I'm telling you, Jim, what do you want me to do? You want me to just go home and like, screw you guys? Because if that's the case, screw you guys. Hear me? The whole family, screw you. Trust me. Wash your hands of me right now and tell me that right now because I'll walk. I'll walk right now. I'll wait for a stupid bus or whatever I got to do to go back home. But don't ever, ever, ever ask me to go somewhere with you again or be part of your life again. Hear me, Jim? I'm not kidding, Jim. See you. Bye. You know what? I'm not okay and Midway sucks. Because you know what? Midway is the worst place in the whole world. Worst. I've never been dealt with this. My family lost me, you guys lost me, and I lost you. You lost my family with me. My family sucks. You guys suck. Sorry, I took my shirt off. Sorry. Yes. He did walk away. Okay, bye-bye. He basically just said it was hard, but the best thing for the family to do is to cut him off. So the brother just wanted me to get his bag. He would pay for his bag to get to the to his home. Thomas is running out of options. At Midway, a mechanical problem forced Captain Eric Lindstrand to abort a flight to Columbus and circle back to the airport. Well, what happened is right after we uh, lifted off of the field at uh, Chicago, the uh, we get what's called a stick shaker and it's the control yokes just start shaking just it's a warning indication uh, normally associated if the airplane is at a stall position which is not a good position to be in we just felt it would be best uh, safest action would be to turn around and come back here into chicago let them fix the issue and uh, continue on to columbus which is exactly what's going to happen 
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's going on. The, uh, the component that, uh, that broke, we've got two of them on board. With the one busted, it generated an error between the two, which caused the indication up in the cockpit. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and take the bad one off the airplane, and we're going to press on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our paperwork filed and uh, hopefully get out of here just as quick as we possibly can. Hey, if I was the black cloud, I'm out of here. Here you are, because it's your first <laughs> days. Hey, See I enjoyed it. Thanks you guys for all have the help. Good. All right. Yeah, hey, thanks for all the help. All right, Eric. See you later. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we get everybody to take the seats, we're going to be out of here. Thank you. That's good. I want to have that party over here. For those on the front line, life can be difficult. You, Southwest. Distressing. It's obvious that Southwest is morning. And downright demanding. Why? I want to know why. You need to lower your voice. I just spent $2,000 and I explained to me why. So a few of the airline team are swapping the high drama for the high seas and taking a relaxing cruise to Mexico. It's about time we all get together and have fun and not worry and not stress out and not be at work where we can all relax. Oh yes, after spring break and how busy it was and after the past year, I think we all deserve this break. I'm the king of the world! for the last place dancer, for the worst limbo dancer. Kissy, oh! <laughs> kissy, bye bye. <laughs> In Chicago, Anita's attempts to reunite Thomas with his family haven't gone unnoticed. That stupid over there, she should have never gotten in the middle of my business. She should have never gotten in the middle of my family and me. Never. Mediating between me and them? She don't know me. Am I drunk? No. Am I intoxicated? Maybe. Not. Wrong again. But you know what? I'm pissed. They ain't my family no more. No. From this point on, Midway Airport has cut me off from my whole family. They can kiss my ass for the rest of my life. I can die without them. And I can die without me. I will never go to their graves. I'll never go to their funerals. Nothing. F Midway. F everybody here. I'm going home. I don't care how I get home. I don't care how I eat. Screw them and screw them the rest of my life. You know what? They're not family. I hope to God that the boat goes down somehow. <laughs> and now, and guess what? It didn't work out anyway. I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I swear to God. This is so funny and pathetic. <laughs> At Baltimore Washington International, passengers and staff are suffering the after effects of weather delays. We've got to get you guys sitting down because we've got to deal with people that are trying to get out of here now. And the pressure is starting to show on Jennifer. <laughs> Tony Spittler missed her connection to Jacksonville. We just flew in from Providence. Our plane was delayed. Our flight was delayed until 9.20. So they put us on another flight here, and they, I asked about the connecting flight, and they said, oh, don't worry, that flight's delayed as well. You'll have 20 minutes to get to it. And then my connecting flight leaves two minutes before my plane lands. They still haven't brought the supervisor over here yet, so. The earliest I could get you out would be Sunday night at 810. I mean, I, unfortunately, there's been so much going on. I mean, I, I apologize for the situation. I did not, I wasn't, I wasn't, my ops agent didn't tell me that. Okay, everybody on canceled flight 230, listen up, listen up, listen up. I have been advised by my station manager for everybody to use our confirmation numbers, call the 800 number to rebook. That's not right. That's, that's not reasonable. That's not right. That's what I was informed by my manager. And she's as high as up as at the station you can get here. Looks like Tony could be stranded for two days.
Having been left behind by his family, Thomas seeks assistance from Colleen. I like, I don't have nowhere to go right now. So can you like help me out with that? So I, I can, right now. I can help you look for a distressed passenger rate for a hotel, but I, I won't provide that for you, sir. So you can get me right home? I live in Rockford. I am not. I am not. So how can I get home? I'm not sure, so sir. You, like, you, you can go down and you can check the shuttle services downstairs. No, 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 no. I'm asking you, what can I do right now? I'm sorry, sir. I, your trip home is not our responsibility. Oh, I can no, help. Wait. I can help. How am I going to get home? Please. I can help Please. you. Okay. I have no money. Is it my turn? Is it yes, my turn? Yes, okay. Yes. I can help you look at a shuttle service. I can help you get the information, but I will not. You can't help me at all. I can't. I will not pay so for. So I got to walk home anyway. I'm not sure you're how you're going to get home. Tell me I got to walk to Rockford. Tom, I'm not sure how you're getting back to Rockford. So you don't care. It, Tom, you're asking me to pay for your way home. I'm asking I'm, for some help here. And, and I have I, no help here. Okay. What am I supposed to do? I have no help here. Something, anything to help me. The police will call social services for you, Tom, if you think you need well, social services. Well, I need services. a ride home. I'm sorry. But I need a way home. You know, if you need Please. to call a friend, get it. I don't know we'll let you, Okay, Tom, I don't know what I can do for you then. If you want the police to call social services, we can do that. But I'm sorry, it's not. I need, I need help. I need okay. some kind of helping hand. I'm sorry, anything. Tom. I'm a sorry. A bus pass, anything. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't I'm do that. I'm sorry. In Mexico, Nicholas and friends make their first port of coal and check out the local tourist attractions. Well, we, we're at the winery. We're really excited because they said they have 40 different wines, 40 different types of wines to taste, so I plan to taste every one of them. You only have two hands and one mouth. I'm tasting all these, see? <laughs> I should get some more. No, you don't. <laughs> it's like an like orange sherbet. Oh, yeah. oh don't make that make that face. Oh, that was good. <laughs> God, this is Don't you just want to lick the inside? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it is good. One cup, Denise. Remember what he said, not full. Gina, look on. This is how you taste wine. You take, you swirl, you smell. You swish? No, you can't. I don't swish. <laughs> what are you, gargling? <laughs> taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Gina, you can chug it, bro, chug it. But it's quite tasty. It smells good. Um, it has a nice, nice smoothness in the, on the palate. I don't drink wine. <laughs> While it's high spirits in Mexico, back at BWI, Jennifer has lost touch with Tony Spittler. I'm trying to get people to Louisville, trying to get people to Buffalo, trying to get taking care of the Tampa people, and pray I still have hair left on my head when I leave here tonight, or this morning, whichever comes first. Tony's request for a supervisor has fallen on deaf ears. I had a soup here, and unfortunately, I guess she went over to do Tampa. Um, so to be honest with you, I don't know. I apologize for not knowing. All I know at this point is that I work here. You know I've been standing here for an hour and a half? I know that. I mean, I, I apologize, but... Tony puts in a call herself. Yes, my connecting flight left two minutes before my my flight got here. But no, they're like, oh, we're all booked. And I've been standing here for an hour when she said she was going to go get a supervisor. And then she was like, oh, well, the supervisor came over here, but I guess she left. I've been standing right here the whole time. At Midway, Thomas is still trying to convince Colleen to help him get home. Right now, I'm here. I'm stuck here, uh, 90 miles from home. I have no way home. So how am I going to get home? Tom, that's your Please. responsibility. I'm sorry. My responsibility? Yes, it is. When she got in the middle of it, in the first place. It's not Anita's fault that you did not get on the aircraft. Right. She walked up and said, can I talk to you? Took your shirt off, took your shoes off. The crew shoes. asked, the crew I asked. slippers. OK, the crew I got asked. slippers. Okay. That's shoes. My turn. My turn, Tom. Yeah, well, no, I'm talking crew, now. You, you asked when you were denied boarding, and I'm explaining it to you. You're she taking off the me. aircraft, and Anita gives you the opportunity to come back and try to get on another flight tonight. I came back. Several she, she told me and that she already worked out with my brother and said, forget it. 
Right. You're yeah. Because yeah. you're still yeah. drinking and yeah. you're still impaired, and so Anita yeah. makes a decision that you cannot get on the aircraft. That is not Anita's fault, Tom. So, no. wait, 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 wait. The second time I came back, she, you, you, you said, I'm too drunk still? Tom, we can't be involved in the situation. No, well, you, you are involved because I need a way home. I'm sorry, Tom. I need a way home, please. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm not responsible for I that. I need a way home. I'm sorry. You, you're going to have to contact a friend or somebody to help. I got no friends. Back in paradise, things are a little less hectic for the vacationing employees. We were having a good time, didn't have to go to work, and just hanging out with everybody. We don't get to see each other. They're in Baltimore, Houston, LA, and Chicago, and we don't get to hang out together. We see each other on television. We don't get to hang out together. It was really nice. We had a good time. We miss work, but we don't want to go back. And tonight's a really special night. It is Denise's birthday, and uh, we have a special surprise for her. She does not know. Her birthday is actually tomorrow. So, so we've been really avoiding she have it. A clue. Yeah, we've been totally avoiding it. We haven't even been talking yeah. about it. Nobody's mentioned yeah. it. She's Nobody's gonna be taken aback. I can guarantee that. We've been good little secret keepers. Yeah. There she is. Good See chance. that smile of hers. Anniversary of your 21st birthday. <laughs> I love you, Nicholas. I love you. But then you can also think of it, you're half of 100. You know what, Nick? <laughs> and here's to many more to you. Thank you. In Baltimore, Tony finally tracks down a supervisor. We ran off our plane, we were sitting up front, ran over here, and our plane was gone. There was no way we could have done that any faster. And I cannot Let me go see. over here and look at the computer. OK, I can put you on the first flight in the morning. Because they were telling us there wasn't any flights until Sunday night at 8. Well, if they're all booked off, right? I'll overbook it for you. Have a flight for tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Finally. Service but it took way too long. That took way too long. And I'm still mad because I wanted to go home tonight, which is an inconvenience, you know, to my family. So at least I'm going home. Over in Chicago, Thomas's persistence continues. Can I borrow 20 bucks from you? I I don't have to. Because it might be like $16. It's for going to be a little more than that to get can, back can to Rockford. Can I uh, borrow some money? No. Tom, help me get home. Okay. I'm, I'm not. Asking, please. I am help me not. Get home. Tom, I am please, not please, sending please, you to Rockford. Please help His brother's me. on the phone now. Please help me home. Yes. While you're on the phone with them, I'll try to call downstairs and see if they can get some information if there's even a shuttle bus available to Rockford. I'm not even sure if there is. But while you're on the phone with them, I'll try to do that, okay? Do you want to speak no, with them? No, I'm a family member no more because you guys created this problem with me. No, he we didn't. He is no longer a family member to me. Tom, we didn't create this problem. Yes, you did. You created, she did. She got in the middle of us. They're not my family no more. Hang up the phone. I don't need to talk okay, to you. Tom, you were denied boarding. No, you are one one time. She took me out of the plane. Twice. She took me out of the plane. I can't want to talk to her. All right. 7 o'clock. You want to hang out and call downstairs so we can try to see Call the cops. Service. Have me arrested. I got seven minutes a day. Colleen. I'm done. I'm done. Hang, hang on a second. I'm I'll see you. Okay. Yeah. I'll come home if I have to. I don't care. Really, Anita gave him every effort to still make another flight today. She gave him several hours, and he had that opportunity to take advantage of it and kind of stop drinking, and clearly he chose not to do that, so Anita was forced to make the same decision, but that, that was based on Tom's choices today, not ours. With a long road ahead of him, Thomas will have plenty of time to reflect on the day's events.
Timing is everything on airline. One traveler takes time out to show his irritation. And I'll be letting the FAA and Southwest corporate knowing too. Oh, thank you. While others have had a belly full of waiting. Everybody's out here going, what the heck's going on? Explain what a through passenger is. And when Superman is late, he takes on Denise. And I'm thrilled that Southwest is in such a giving mood, you know, that they just passed my seat on to someone else. At Baltimore Washington International, a mid-afternoon flight to Providence has been canceled, leaving over 20 through passengers from Tampa stranded. Uh, we're actually uh, just canceled this flight that we're waiting for, and we got another flight that's going out. We're trying to see if we can get all the throughs at least on the next flight that's leaving a delayed 420 that's delayed to 520. So, I'm trying to see what we can do. Now, Tammy enlists the help of Debbie to board the extra passengers. But could Debbie's devilish horns be a bad omen? And we'll go ahead and put them in later for you. How many throughs we let you 27. 27 throughs. Okay. okay. Debbie, have them stand up there in the center aisle, and when I'm come, I'll come up and get them. Okay, thank you. If they're through, they're coming off flight 2571, that, then just have them have their stubs and go to B11. She's going to go ahead and put them on. She's due to leave in about another 12 minutes. Thank you. Bye. With precious little time left, Tammy needs to wrangle 27 people quickly. Is there anyone in the boarding area that just got off this flight going to Tam that came from Tampa going on to Providence? At LAX, the 5 o'clock flight to Oakland has left on time. But two customers, Patricia Segovia and Alicia Ross, have not been quite so punctual. Alicia, we miss our flight. You guys are playing. No, no, I'm serious, I'm serious. Patty, I kept asking you what time it is. And then you left your wallet. Your wallet dropped on the bathroom floor. This lady was oh, like, you see? <laughs> Where were you? Drinking. <laughs> Okay, so what we'll do is we'll switch this over for the 5.30. You're supposed to make a story like, oh, we got stuck at security, and we were held up in a line. Yeah. I couldn't find them after that, and, you know, they wouldn't let me on the plane with no shoes. <laughs> yeah, some drinks. Screw it. <laughs> Guess we'll go have another. <laughs> so you don't have time to stop at the bar. <laughs> Thank you, bye. bye. They've got 20 minutes to kill, and the bar is only a few tempting feet away. <laughs> At Chicago Midway, passenger Jason Aide has missed the 11.20 flight to St. Louis. I got here, okay, and they told me the flight was booked because they gave my seat away to someone else. Well, I paid to be on that flight, right. which I understand I got to go on the next flight. It's at when? 2.10. Two, two two ten. But I don't think I should have to pay the full fare considering I paid to be on this flight. You need to be at the gate 10 minutes prior which to I departure. Was. Which I was. Where was he at? I don't know, he, can run, he, he checked in upstairs at 1057. Right, and it doesn't take me an hour to get down here. I'm kind of fleet of foot, you know? Okay, you checked in at 1057. I did. That's within the 10 minute rule. No, you have to be standing here in no, front of and, us. And I was, I, I was. We were full when you came down. Okay. If you're not down here 10 minutes prior to departure, your seat is given away to standby passengers. When you got to the door, right. we were completely full. There was no seat to give you. Okay, that, that's okay. fine, but I was here within 10 minutes is what I'm saying now. And they were checked in at 11.15. Right, but my point is... And your flight left, it was leaving at 11.20. But my point is, when I got there, if there had been a person there to direct me to come here, I would have made no, the it. the seats were already given away when you got here. They were checked in at 11... <laughs> that, that's the problem. I you leave at 11... I'm just trying to explain. You leave at 11.20. Yeah. At 11.10, well, right. exactly. At 11.10, we start clearing standby. Whether she was there or not, your seat had already been given away. And I'm thrilled that Southwest is in such a giving mood, you know, that they just passed my seat on to someone else. But there's no reason why I should pay the full amount I paid, considering I was here. There was no one to serve me there. You know, I don't, I, I don't actually think you understand. She could not have done anything for you at the door because your seat was already gone. Thank you. Okay, right. let's slow down. Backtrack. We're gonna get you out of here. Right. 
Meanwhile, at LAX, the bar still looks attractive to Patricia. She still wants to take one. I, I want to go to that bar over there, <laughs> but she says no, so I think we're stuck here standing in line. <laughs> I'll come in, sir. Just give me a minute. <laughs> They were in the bar, but they didn't seem intoxicated at all. So, I mean, there are people who can hold their liquor. I mean, that's why there are bars in an airport, and there are some that can't. And We have happy drinkers and non-happy drinkers. They were the happy drinkers. They knew when to stop. We're not taking any chances. We're going. Perhaps it's not entirely surprising these ladies want a drink. This is my first time flying. Have you yeah, ever missed you see, a flight? Well, that's why I didn't know anything. I thought they would be waiting for us. The next thing I know, they weren't joking. No. They left us. Is it really? <laughs> this is my first time. time, yes. With nerves calmed, Patricia and Alicia take to the skies. Okay, bye-bye. 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 Back at BWI, Tammy's rounded up the missing through passengers from Tampa, and now Debbie's boarding them first. Any other through passengers that were off our canceled flight, come on down. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I was on 2571 originally, and you're saying through passengers for 2571, but everybody's out here going, what the heck's going on? Explain what a through passenger is. With the flight already delayed and other passengers now taking priority, original passengers like Gary Reich are not happy. They canceled one flight. They sent us to another gate. We sat at the other gate. They told us to go to another gate, went back, exchanged a boarding pass, came over here. They said I couldn't go through. Then I went back and got another one. So this is now the third flight, and I've been bumped back from A seating to B seating, and it doesn't look like all these people are going to fit in this plane. Okay, now we're going to take pre-boards and pre-boards only. Still keeping in mind, pre-boards is only for those float folks with the blue pre-boarding sleeve. Debbie and Tammy breathe a sigh of relief, as in the end, there's room enough for everyone. All in all, I think we did a pretty good job. Good to go. That was almost smooth. <laughs> almost. <laughs> the plane is now fully loaded, so why isn't it pushing back from the gate? At BWI, the 435 flight to Islip, New York has been oversold. Suli and Gina have got too many passengers and not enough seats. So right now, I don't have anything to book you on because we're way overbooked. But you can volunteer your seat and we can put you out tomorrow morning. This presents a big problem for Mark Watson and Veronica Grisera. Veronica has a seat, but Mark doesn't. Well, we're in an oversell. And I don't have a seat for this gentleman. He's got a wedding to go to, so right now he's got to get there, but I don't have any seats. We are in need of one seat at this time. We will give you $200 plus the value of your one-way ticket. If you are interested and could help us out, please come see us. Thank you. Hi, what are we going to do? Back at Midway, Jason isn't making any headway with Denise. My argument to you, ma'am, is you gave my seat away. Exactly. See, you gave it away when I was here prior to the sacred 10-minute rule. So you should not have given my seat away. Maybe, maybe we're not understanding each other, but the no, seat was not. given away at 11.15. The flight left at 11.20, so if you were not here at 11.10... You earned every cent of your $90,000 salary, I'm telling you. You should ask for a raise. Or they probably gave it away. Actually, you pay... Uh, you have a discount effect. You have a discount effect. I do? Yeah. How much is it now, ma'am? It's going to be the same. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, come on. You jacked it up for the holiday a bit, don't you Well, think? which is pretty good. I think it's pretty good fare. Well, yeah, but you make 90 grand a year, you know, it's nothing to you. Okay, and that's going to be B16 at 210. What time is it now? It is now 11.34. Well, I better get down there if I want to make this 10-minute roll. You already have a boarding card, sir, so you're all set. Denise, you're the ball. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He never actually explained what took him 30 minutes to get down to the gate because security's not backed up. It's not really bad. But he's on the next flight, and I'm really happy, but that's the best we can do for him. He said he's going to uh, contact someone, so he needs to, he'll do whatever he needs to do. But he's, we got him on the next flight, and that's what's important.
back at BWI, the Providence-bound flight has a problem. The flight that we just put all those folks on to Providence from the canceled flight is now taking a mechanical. And uh, at this point in time, I'm unsure on how long it's going to be. The part that is necessary to fix the aircraft, we do not have on hand right now. Uh, it's not a part that breaks on a regular basis, I'm assuming, so we just don't have the part. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to have to accommodate these passengers in another manner. Debbie hurries back to the gate and into the line of fire. For a, for a location, Baltimore, that has a maintenance department, and they haven't got the part? What's that all about? And two flights, two planes that don't work? This is ridiculous. I'm not flying them again. Plane number three. <laughs> Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> bad. For Gary, this is proving to be an expensive flight. No, we're supposed to do an aerial um, shoot in um, Providence tomorrow, and we fly the uh, pilot and the uh, photographer up from Mississippi, and their travel time is $200 an hour apiece, so it's $400 an hour just to sit here. I'm going to go over and load them up on the next flight. Uh, it's due in here, like I said, around 6 uh, 40 or so, and then we're going to get them on their way, start to finish. I'm not going to abandon the sinking ship now. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at gate C8, Gina and Sue Lee are still looking for one seat to get Mark and Veronica to that wedding in New York. You need one seat here at the podium at C8. If you are interested and could help us out, please come see us. Thank you. Right now, I'm just here? hoping that somebody volunteers. If not, we'll have to involve him and I would put a priority standby for the other flights. We have a standby passenger on board the aircraft. When you're standby through a city that's overbooked, we, we have the right to pull you off the aircraft. So that's what we're going to do. We're just getting uh, Moses is the last name. <laughs> Justin Moses. Yeah, so we can put you on the flight. <laughs> I do anything to get to Long Island. <laughs> You know, there's always oversell situations. Usually something comes through, so hopefully it was good. Otherwise, we would have gotten some money. Right? Yeah. Some money. Thanks to Gina, Mark will make the wedding. Hey, so I'll take a seat, I guess. But will the pulled standby customer, Justin Moses, be quite so grateful? Meanwhile, the now heavily delayed passengers for Providence are still waiting for a plane. Um, so far, people are taking it well. I think if, um, since the captain did talk to them a little bit and they know what's going on, they're a little more at ease that they had to get another aircraft. So. Finally, a replacement aircraft arrives before any of the passengers blow a fuse. We apologize for any inconvenience and thank you guys for your patience um, here in Baltimore. And we're going to set everything up for you guys to get on this flight as soon as we board. Um, I think that is up to you guys as quickly as we can get out of here. So, like I said, thank you for your patience, and we do apologize for any inconveniences. Success. <laughs> Southwest caters to all types of passengers, but a recent rule change has affected Louisville-bound passenger Mike Grosso. <laughs> Mike was asking me about our pre-boarding procedures, which really doesn't include passengers, tall passengers. Southwest was one of the user-friendly carriers that when you came, they would, they would see you and you could pre-board because of your height and get a seat with legroom. Well, now apparently, on the beginning of 05, the rules have changed and they left us out. And it's, and my issue is, how can I find a seat if it's free boarding that I can fit in? There's not enough leg room, and it's, it, and, and not that it's horrible. So I will, I will make a note to uh, Southwest and say you guys changed the rules and kind of left somebody out. I can understand. If I was that tall, I would probably feel uncomfortable too. While Angel looks for a way to accommodate him, Mike looks for a seat. At BWI, Gina is beginning to regret her decision to arrange a seat for the wedding guest in favor of standby passenger Justin Moses. I'll manage that way that his uh, wife's having a baby. She's hooked up to all the monitors and, and everything's kind of status quo and they're trying to hold her off for as long as they can. All right, I love it. Thanks. 
Be quicker to run a car and drive. He could be there in three hours. He might have to do that. The thing is moving forward. She's dilated and and uh, Happy faced and all that good stuff. So she's uh, she's uh, getting a morphine drip and some other things are going on and uh, looks like it's gonna happen. In Los Angeles, arriving passenger Jeremy Stevens has just taken his first flight on Southwest, and it has not gone well. Well, I made a uh, reservation about a month ago for to go for my birthday to see the Grand Canyon. Never flown Southwest, thought I'd try it. Um, when I called, I'm very allergic to peanuts, and I asked, please don't have them served within a five-seat perimeter of me. And they said there would be no problem. I got on the flight. They served them on the way there. I had to miss uh, 12 hours of my trip because when I take the antihistamines I take, they knock me out to prevent these reactions. And I got on the plane today, and they came and served peanuts all around me again, and now I'm reacting. And to add to it, the people on the flight, the whole way from check-in, the whole way here have been very rude. It could be in the air, and someone can react to it. That's really... Wow. Lucky I took the antihistamines because it can go to the fact where I start having respiratory difficulties, and that's when I need to have epinephrine. Very embarrassing. That's when I have to inject this into my leg to prevent me from dying. And I was basically told that I was a jerk because I asked for peanuts not to be served. Meanwhile, back at Midway, tall guy Mike Grosso has been permitted to pre-board. It's all about headroom and leg room. Hey, have a great day. We're dealing with you know, a little bit of a height issue, which extends down to your legs, too. Can have a little extra yeah, yeah, this is good. Thank you. It's a small thing, but it's a huge thing. This is our first class here at Southwest. Well, it's first class for tall people, and thank you very much. Oh, no problem. Enjoy it. So we have a certain procedure on our pre-boards, and there's a certain criteria. So in this case, this gentleman really is very tall, and he's very uncomfortable unless he has an exit aisle. Perfect. Over at LAX, Jeremy is displaying an allergic reaction to the airline. Right now, he's got an itch to scratch. I'm a registered nurse. I worked on the ambulances. I know the mechanism of injury that these things do. So I've taken the antihistamines already. I have my epinephrine if I have to. My problem yeah. is how it was dealt with today. 99% never have a problem. And this is the form she was advising you to present. This is the way we've averted problems such as this. And the flight attendant, unfortunately, was never made to work because, unfortunately, as you know, we didn't get this one. The, my problem is how it was dealt with today. The stewardess was very rude to me, and then I never saw oh. the rest of the flight. Oh. You know, I could have been going into a medical emergency at that point, anaphylaxis, and she didn't come back. Nobody, you know, I'm just very upset. Okay, well, I, I apologize for that. Um, I have the number to cancel the frequent flyer thing, and I'm just not going to fly the airline again, honestly. Well, sorry, it turned out that way. It shouldn't have had to. She she was not aware at all that it was an open up flight. When she did become aware, she was rude. That's my point. Okay, well, I'll let her know your thoughts on that. And I'll be letting the FAA and Southwest corporate knowing, too. Oh, thank you. Okay, have a good day. I was doing my service, and I handed him the peanuts, and he said, you know, I can't have these. And he didn't tell me he was allergic at that time. And I said, okay, I'll be right back. Well, I was going to offer him pretzels, and when I came back to him, he said, I can't have these. I'm allergic, and the people around me shouldn't be having them either. And I said, sir, I wasn't aware that you were having an allergic reaction or you are allergic. He says, well, it's on my ticket. And I said, well, unfortunately, we don't have assigned seats, so we don't know that. And I said, did you tell the flight attendant up front? And he said, no. And I said, I apologize. We didn't know that you were allergic. He says, well, none of these people should have them anyway. And I said, I apologize. Well, by that time, it was the end of the flight. I thought when I reserved it and told them that I was allergic, and they said, OK, we'll make sure to make arrangements that there won't be peanuts on the plane. And I wasn't aware that I had to tell someone else or I needed this special peanut-free ticket. From a consumer standpoint, being with the allergies that I do suffer from, I don't feel safe flying with Southwest at this point in time. Mm -hmm. 
Over at BWI, Justin, the father-to-be, watches and waits. Ladies and person. gentlemen, this does serve as your final check-in opportunity for Southwest Airlines Flight 1034 on time 435 departure going to ISA Long Island. Thank you. I still have Mr. McGrath. He decides to consider his options. What do you think the chances of me getting out of that? I'm trying to decide if I should rent a car and drive up or not. Let's, let's put it this way. It's everything going to Long Island tonight is overbooked by at least 15, 20 people. Okay. And it's pretty slim. So if I were you, I would rent a car. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. Good luck, man. Yeah, thanks. You bet. You're going to drive, you know? Got to get there. There it is. So. It usually takes, like, on a Friday, God, it'll take, like, seven hours. Oh, well, that's true. Night. I forgot you went to New York on a Friday night. Justin cuts his losses and hits the road. Everything um, is heavenly overbooked tonight to Islet, so the chances weren't that good. So if I could have got him out tonight, I would have. In the car, halfway to New York, Justin gets a call from the hospital to inform him that he's the father of a healthy baby boy. Coming up on Airline. A mother at the end of her rope. I mean, I didn't even walk our kids at the airplane. A passenger on the ropes. It's falling asleep there, yeah. You are, you are passed out, actually. And someone get me a rope. Cause we're dashing! They say that all the world's a stage, and at the airport we've got front row seats for performances that range from the Oscar winning to the downright embarrassing. We have two kids traveling by themselves. They will not let us walk our kids out together. You know what, Southwest, don't want Southwest. It's not about Southwest. It's yes, about it is. Security rules at Midway are making Debbie Prisbillo angry. She's got two kids, and only she or her husband, not both, can accompany them to the gate. They're going to see their father for the Christmas holidays. And both me and their stepdad wants to walk them down because we're not going to have them for the holidays. So both of us want to say goodbye to them, and they won't let us. We have to limit the people that go through security, and that's what I'm trying to get to. It's, it's, it's a security reason. I cannot handle watching two kids by myself. I can give you a pass for one person to go down. Anybody could grab them and kidnap them. So what's your answer to that? You'd rather get the kids kidnapped during the holidays? Ma'am. Me and what? Debbie's standing her ground. Time to bring in reinforcements. For Oakland passenger Paul Johnson, there's a problem with his ticket. He's lost it. That ticket then was stapled onto the back of your boarding card. Okay. We need that ticket. So you know who I am. You know I bought the ticket. And so I what understand is the that issue? thing. If you lose your paper ticket, you yes. have to repurchase a paper ticket. So you're saying it's, I'm being I'm being penalized because instead of picking up a phone, I walked up to the counter. You're not being penalized. You lost not, your ticket, and I'm trying to help you. These are the ways. But, but I if can I have to buy a new ticket, I'm yeah. clearly being penalized. Do you want to go back over and find it? I mean, you've just come up the I have looked everywhere. I, all I did was, yeah, I went, I went to every place that I've been, and did they don't have it. The... My name has been called. The flight is going to leave. This isn't appropriate for me to be without okay. the possibility of getting on this flight. Right now, they could hand me a boarding pass and put me on that flight. It's just that simple. Take a good customer and keep him happy, or take a good customer and make him irate. <laughs> In Chicago, Jesse Atkinson is holding auditions to find Midway's airport idols. We're going to have auditions for slots for 10 people. Um, what it's going to involve is some singing and some dance combinations and do like a little show for everybody, for the gates, for delays, for the kids. Emma, are you ready to audition? <laughs> are you going to audition? Are you ready? Are you auditioning? You're going to audition, right? You gotta come. Come on, bounce He's got quite a few names on that sign-up sheet out there. I think it's gonna be great. So. Have you auditioned? No. <laughs> I don't think we should hold auditions, because for people who don't make it, I feel bad. It's gonna be chaos. I can see it, though. That's usually oh. what happens to me. And with people already comparing Jesse to Simon Cowell, he might well be right. 
I'm, I'm being serious. I don't think they're gonna hate you by any means, but he's just very truthful. Like if someone's not a good singer, that person will know they're not a good singer. In LA, passenger Paul Johnson still can't find his lost ticket. Unless you want to purchase another ticket in this moment, you won't make this one. Whether I have something wrong, done something wrong what myself, I'm to you or I'm an innocent victim, it doesn't ticket. matter. I'm trying to help you. You bought the ticket, you lost the ticket, now I'm trying to help you. You can put so me on this plane, I'm that would be help. Anything short of that is not helping okay. me. So I'm sorry I can't help you. This is the last time I'm going to fly Southwest. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars with this airline, and I intended to continue, but this is not acceptable service. I'm sorry. You can, you can override whatever policy you have and put me on this flight. You can do that, and you're not doing that. Because I've always had flexibility and excellent service from that. That's the exact opposite of what's happening here today. It's a slap in the face for them to acknowledge that I am who I am. I paid for a ticket 20 minutes ago, and they're not, and they're going to make me buy another one 20 minutes after the fact. That's an insult. In the end, Paul buys another ticket and flies out of L.A. One very unhappy camper. This was supposed to be a really slow day. What happened here? Right now, we're blocking up this, so I'm gonna get you checked in. I'm already checked in, but I wanna know about my kids, though. Why can't we walk them down? Well, in Chicago, Ginny Boner has been called to deal with disgruntled mom, Debbie Prisbillo. We just don't give out um, passenger information on your children to anybody. So if anything... To anybody, I'm their mother, so that's not anybody. We had to buy two tickets. I don't wanna walk her down, he wants to walk him down. What is the difference? Right now, we have um, the holiday traffic, everything's congested, and we do have to follow security. We're only allowed to let one parent go. You know what? I think your security reason through. is wrong. And I think you're just making this up because any other airline would do it. You should have both adults bring their children, you know, to, to the gates to board. It's ridiculous. It's the holidays. I want to say goodbye. Both of us want to say goodbye to our kids. I mean, it's our first Christmas without them. We both want to say goodbye to them. Is that so difficult to ask? Debbie is a force to be reckoned with, and she's not taking no for an answer. Debbie's determined to stay with her daughter until her plane leaves. Her husband and son are already through security, but she's confident she can blag another security pass from baggage services. You didn't get a pass at the... Um... No, they did not give me a pass for her to walk her down. Is she traveling with someone else? Her 12 year old brother. Who's already down there. Who'd he go down there with? His, his stepfather. <gasps> Little does Debbie know, but Shadia is double-checking with the folks at the ticket counter. Hello? Hey, who is this? Hey, Phil, this is Shadia. Everything gets done upstairs. The only reason they do come down here is when they have more than one person walking them through, and they denied her the pass. Hopefully, they could get this resolved, or one of them will walk her down and stay with her until the plane leaves. But Ginny's caught on to Debbie's game. Shocked when Deborah made her way through bags. I was shocked that she left her husband and separated the children. She had our back against the wall. There's nothing more I can do, you know, than make a bigger scene out of that situation. But Debbie does seem determined to make the most of the situation, making up rules as she goes along. There's no legal guardian down there of her. That's a stepdad. That is not a legal guardian. By the state of Illinois or any place, any federal government, a stepfather or step parent. Is not a legal guardian of anybody. So you know what? You messed up. So you will stay with her until she leaves. Otherwise, I will sue you for leaving a child by herself without a legal guardian. On the other side of the airport, staff are warming up. The auditions are underway. I I can sing. Come on, you can sing. Okay, Zakia, so can you call on the first person? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, done. That was awesome. I can't sing. I can't. Kiss nuts roasting on <laughs> With every flight, Southwest flight you take. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. So you can't sing. When you know you can't sing, you know you can't sing. From Second Avenue. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, what fun. Oh, what fun it is to have in a one horse open.
open sleigh. Hey. At least Big Head is in the way. All is calm. Heaven and heaven. And heavenly peace. Ooh, they're rough in there. That's it. That was good. They had me singing, and I am not a singer. You guys woke him up? I woke him up, and um, well, he has food on the front. You can smell the alcohol when you approach him. At LAX, Mike Carr confronts passenger Sean Doherty. You're dropping some stuff here. Yeah, I know. I'm all right. Gosh. Yeah, but sir, yeah, unfortunately, I was falling asleep there. Yeah. You are you are passed out actually. But right now, we're not going to get you on the next flight. You're not you're not cleared to fly. I'm doing all right. You're doing fine, but you're you're not fine enough to fly. <laughs> you're all right, Mr. Sir. <coughs> sorry. Okay. So you check some volume today. Do you have a doctor prescription for that or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing to do when you're drinking and now taking that kind of medication. It really makes it even worse. Yeah, I know that. Like 175 milliliter about at 12 o'clock. You drank 175 milliliter at, seven, at 12 o'clock? 12 o'clock, yeah. That's only two hours ago. That's a lot of vodka. Yeah. Why did you drink so much vodka? Just felt like I'm it? Hard. You're an alcoholic. I appreciate your candor with me. I'm not I'd like really to... under the influence. I'm just a little tired. Yeah, but 175 milliliters of alcohol in two hours, that's a lot. Sean. I'm almost 40 years old. I mean, I can't have more drinking. I'm going to have to wait to get on another flight three hours later. Sean's mission is clear. Stay sober. But can he do it? Good luck, Jesse. <laughs> They're not going to be that bad. <laughs> The results of the airport auditions are in. So this is the cast list for the Woo! Christmas Cabaret. All right. That's it about May. You did an audition, sweetie. I'm putting the casting list up for the Christmas Cabaret. Well, hopefully they thought I stunk and made me an L. <laughs> We've been trying to find out who's on the list. Um, nobody, they're not talking at all. Well, you know, Jesse is like Simon off of American Idol, so. <laughs> He's gonna get all type of different responses and everything from that. I don't think I'm that bad. Okay, I'm very truthful when it comes to it, but I was really nice to those people. I just said, oh, that was good, and I let them go. I, I mean, if I wanted to slam them in front of everybody like he does, it'd be a different thing, but I didn't. But everybody should be happy. It's not that big of a deal, so. Okay, here's the first one. I don't want to be hanging around when they look at it. Here. Okay. I'm number one. I didn't make it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Where is the list? Where is the list? Excuse me. Let's see. Try to get in. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Didn't make it. I said it wasn't that serious. It is that serious, because, you know, it's something it's to do. Oh, yeah, you can check it. you get death threats, Jesse, you're on your own. Can you believe he had me embarrassed myself and didn't pick me? I know you're talking about, but I couldn't cast her. I know, but like, I mean, it should be like a thing for everybody. But I couldn't cast everybody. Here, Nicolasa. Jesse's in a tight spot because V's his boss. Now you gotta explain to Viola why she didn't get cast, because she's upset. She's right here. He's big. We'll talk in the back. What? Right. You weren't bad. No. Oh, I wasn't good either, huh? So how did she get on there? I didn't see her audition. She auditioned the second day. I didn't see that. Yeah. I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think they'll get over it, because I don't, it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> it was just for a little Christmas show and some fun. <laughs> Debbie has put Ginny between a rock and a hard place. There was no option except to issue a second security pass. I saw her heart was breaking because her kids are going away for the holidays, so. This is my first Christmas without my kids. You feel better now that I can walk you down? It's all smiles, for the time being, anyway. Right, there they are. I love you. Have fun, huh? Okay. I will. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Okay. They're supposed to fly to Houston to meet their father, but that flight is delayed and another plane is using the gate, bound for Los Angeles. Ginny has put the kids on the wrong flight. 
No one, not even Debbie and Bob, has realized Ginny's blunder. A little bit more relief that you get to see the kids go off. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, the phone call two hours later finding out, you know. That something happened to one of them. Yeah. At least we can go home a little. With peace of mind. Yeah, that knowing that they got off a of At LAX, passenger Sean Doherty has gone missing, and Mike fears the worst. I hope I don't find him in the bar area. Maybe he's uh, getting some grub. I just saw the gentleman, he's sitting in the bar having a beer. I guess he's not flying today. At this point here, there's no way I'm putting him on a flight. I'm all right. No, you're not. I told you, I can't have any more beer. I can't be drinking. I know, but you know what? You've made a choice now, and I have to make a decision. I'm not going to let you fly today. I'm all right. Sir, you having a beer, I already told you. You can't be drinking. I told you you had, you drank all that alcohol you shared with me, right? Now you're in here in the bar, an hour and a half later, you can't be drinking. I told you, no alcohol. You want that, or you want to fly? I want to fly. OK, you need to leave that, and let's go. Listen, come over here. Don't mean to embarrass you or come down on me. I'm not trying to be a hard guy here, but I have a job to do, and you have a job to do, and your job is not to drink anymore tonight. Because at this point here, it doesn't even look good for the next one. Let's go have a seat. Sean's got three hours to sober up. Will he make it? In Chicago, V's just found out that the Clark children bound for Houston were pulled off a plane going to Los Angeles. And guess who's at fault? Well, they thought you knew what was going on. They didn't question you. You are kidding me. I'm B11 right now with the kids. Well, I think the whole time I said they were going to Los Angeles. <laughs> I messed up. This is the biggest bonehead move that I could ever make, but I'm gonna go and make sure the kids are okay. She was panicking. Uh -huh. She was all around, walking all around the seats and everything. Liar. The plane would have left, then we would have gone to the whole different place and my dad would have been worried. I feel like a goof. Jenny is going to have a hard time living this one down. <laughs> we cracking jokes about you, Jenny. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? Hopefully we'll get this one right. <laughs> Are you guys ever going to forget this trip? <laughs> Are you guys going to ask for me next time you come to the airport? Crew change. If you still there. I hope uh, you're right. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm sorry. OK. Huh? Yeah, right one, right? Yes, you're on the right one. Jenny's off the hook. The kids make it to Houston, where they're met by their father. A lesson to be learned in all of this. <laughs> Probably a lesson for myself. <laughs> Double check details. It's the final rehearsal, and despite losing more than half his cast, Jesse's determined not to let his audience down. Every rehearsal started dwindling down. My hopes were kind of going down the drain, too, as all the cast members were going down the drain. I wasn't seeing him anymore. But whether I have 15, 20, or three people, I'm really happy with it. That's all that matters, I guess. Back in LA, Mike has to make a decision about Sean. Got you. The flight's going to be in here at 745. It's going to be leaving at 810. I sobered up. Yeah. Well, you're getting there. Not 100%, but you're definitely more lucid, I can see. Great eye contact and stuff like that. You've been really cool about the whole thing, so I appreciate that. All right, do you want to head okay. up to gate two with me? Yeah. All right. See you later. Happy New Year, buddy. Okay? okay. Be good Thank to you. yourself. He understands, and he's just, I think, doing a lot of reflective now, so thinking about what his day was like. I hope he doesn't have too many days like this in the future. So but I am pooped. As they say, it's a wrap. But in Chicago, the party's just getting started. Hey, can you make an announcement in your gate area about the cabaret 
in about 15 minutes over at B15. I'm nervous. I got a first and never a dog. I'm like, look, I still don't know the words for the second verse. OK, well, let's move all the stuff down there, and we'll set up down there then. Are we at 15 yeah, or where? this at 15. Well, Viola's here, so we're gonna, she's going to back oh, me up. No, I'm not going to back yes, me up. <laughs> we have enough room for the dance thing. We just have to be a little squished. I need every bit of support I can get. I'm a little bit of a crowd. Ooh, that's even. More nervous. Here we come, a caroling along the concourse B. Here we come, a wandering so fair to be seen. Cause we're dashing and we're dancing. Yes, we're dashing and we're singing and we're dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle, 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 bells. In the meadow we can build a snowman. Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Ba -doo -doo. OK, next up is uh, customer service supervisor Anita. So But wait, there's more. How much would you pay? Courage to get up there and do that in front of the crowd. It's wonderful, <laughs> very spontaneous, maybe. <laughs> I didn't know we could move like that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. The lady in the blue shirt, she was like loving it more than anybody else. The little girl in the front, they loved it. You guys were excellent. Everybody thought so. I'm sure um, all your fellow co workers thought so. No complaints, really good. You wouldn't sing with me, but. Hey, I didn't make the cabaret. Okay. Okay, so why would I sing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have, you know. Oh! <laughs> you know, it was their loss, huh? Is that done next year? Woo! We'll have to talk about that. I heard Sony Records on the phone for you. Hey, let me go. Let's go to the car. <laughs> Turbulence everywhere on airline. It's a bumpy ride in Chicago. Yeah, we've bought our we it's it's April. 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 Gina goes with the flow at 37,000 feet. Ooh, it's pretty gross. It's all over the seat. And there's a spit and run in Houston. That guy spat on the older black guy. Like that, you know how you spit. In Houston, a man's been detained by police after an incident on a flight from Baltimore. That guy spat on the older black guy. The guy you saw right there spat on that older black guy back there. He was getting off the plane, and because he thinks he caused the disturbance, he spat on him and ran off the plane. Wanda steps in to get the details. And you're detaining them? 
You should be running after the guy that's Are you involved in this? Yeah, I am involved in this, but I'm not being detained. Okay, he was there. I'm not detaining you, okay? okay? I know you're not. First of all, all I'm trying to do is find out what happened, okay? okay? You know you should go and talk to? I was not there. There's a guy up there that security is holding. Somebody went after him. Well, you okay. should talk to him, after him instead of worrying about her who tried to stand up for an 80-year-old gentleman. All I'm trying to do is find out what happened. Okay. If somebody well, would explain to me what happened, and that's what she was doing before you what, what, interrupted what, 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 This has gotten out of control, because all I, I was just trying to get what happened from you guys. So get this. At the end of the flight, the older black guy sitting there with his wife, this white guy who's sitting in front of him, as soon as the doors open, spits on him and runs off the plane. This Nick, this is, is like... This is like... This man was spat on, this is like 80 years old. This is like pre-Martin Luther King. Let's go talk to the guy. The older black guy's up there with the guy who spat on him. Gina Toronto's undergone intensive training to become a flight attendant and passed with flying colors. Four oxygen masks will drop from the compartment overhead. Pull down on the mask until the elastic tubing is fully extended. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Secure the mask with the elastic strap. After the four weeks of training, that's when they presented the wings. So yes, I was honored and relieved. It was, it was a bunch of emotions, happy, excited. I was started tearing up. But, you know, couldn't run the mascara. It, it took a lot to get used to at first, but being on the plane, you know, I have no complaints. I love it. Most new flight attendants are nervous and clueless, and she's neither, so she's doing a great job. They see that you're doing something wrong. You know, they give you constructive criticism on just how to be, you know, better. Coffee? Coffee? Are you talking to me? Everyone picks up on my New York accent, because I was born and raised in New York. She's funny. When I first flew there, I thought she was joking. Everyone thinks like I'm Latino or Puerto Rican or Greek. I get that a lot, but then they're like, oh, you're from New York, I hear Italian. In Houston, the cops are called to deal with the incident against passenger George Baltimore. The man that's sitting over there blew a white man, I'm so ashamed of it. Spat on him, spat on him. Oh, bless his heart, 73 years old, he was spat on. All the things, you know, he probably lived through civil rights, everything, 73, and look what he has to go through in Houston, and Houston's the most awesome city. He didn't disrespect you, he disrespected himself. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he, he degraded himself and disrespected himself. You know, the whole day after. Yeah. But he better thank God it wasn't me that he spit on, because I tell you, they would have had to secure, they would have had to take me out. It was just wrong. It's just racism is what it is. 2005, and stuff like this still exists. Do you believe that? I, it, I, I don't, but it does. And my son's in Iraq fighting for men like that who spit on our senior citizens? No. George, we bless you. Enjoy you, Houston, you. sir. Oh, thank you. Adeline, you enjoy Houston, baby, OK? George gives his side of the story. He says, have a nice day. And I said, I sure will now that you're going. And he turned around and spit on me. Like that. You know how you spit? That's what he did. He spit on me. Right in my face. He run, and I tried to come up here and caught him. I just wish I'd have caught him sooner before, they, before the airport people caught him. I'd have spit back on him a whole lot more. The gentleman who spat wouldn't straighten his chair to give a, another customer room. The only reason that Mr. Baltimore actually got involved was because his wife asked him to ask the gentleman to straighten up his seat, and the gentleman wouldn't move his seat at all. She's upset. He just turned around and spit on You have to know a lot more than just peanuts and coke. Gina's finding the job's not always glamorous. There was um, an accident. Someone had an accident in the front lavatory. My, my passenger just broke the news to me. Nice. Yeah, lovely. I've never um, had to clean a lavatory since I've been here, so I'm ooh, scared. Ugh. It's all over the seat. I need a mask. I really do. It's a busy day at Midway, and passengers are finding long lines all over the airport. 
After attending a cooking conference, Kayla Peterson and her kitchen compadres are heading home to Omaha, but making little progress. Why is it a two and a half wait downstairs? Because it's a lot of people traveling. It took us an hour to get to security. Lovely. This is a busy summer. There's like 20 of us that they left, and we got stuck out in that chaos. Which a check in? Yeah. They, you guys need to redo up. something about that. You can always write a letter. Don't worry, I probably will. We had a 9:40 flight this morning. We got here at seven o'clock. Got downstairs. It, we waited two and a half hours. When our flight plane was leaving, we were still checking in. Then we got to security. It was another hour and a half wait, and they are overbooked by 10 on each flight. So we will probably not get out today. From the same conference and in the same situation is Jody Bowden and her posse from Philadelphia. We're hostages. <laughs> we just want to go home. We all miss our kids. We've been here all day. Three hours in line in the parking garage. Yeah, I've never had to wait in a parking garage before. We have five more women to get on two more flights, and they're all fully sold out. We're not being offered compensation, even a cup of coffee, not a thing. You're five of 27 other people trying to get to Philadelphia and miss flights um, because of the lines this morning. But will they all make it on to the final two flights? In Houston, the details of the dramatic spit and run are falling into place. It was total chaos uh, because originally when I first got the call, they said it was about some bags being checked in the jetway. So that's what I was prepared to deal with. I wasn't prepared to deal with all of this. They went to Baltimore to see their grandson. They just got back from Iraq. So, uh, of course, you know, a happy uh, trip turns into a nightmare. The police have taken the man in question into custody. He asked Mr. Baltimore, well, I hope you had a pleasant trip. And Mr. Baltimore replied saying, well, I did now that you're gone. And then allegedly he went and spit in the guy, Mr. Baltimore's face. I talked to my office agent. He said that it was actually a tic-tac that he spit on him. He walked off the airplane rather briskly. And that's when Mr. Baltimore got off and went after him. I ran up the jetway and tried to talk to him. He stopped for a second and said, all that happened was a tic-tac fell out of my mouth. I told him that I, I didn't really believe his story. He followed him up there to security checkpoint, and uh, they called HPD. I'm not a judge or jury, but if you do that, I really do think that you should have to answer it. I did see HPD take him away. I don't know what's going to happen to him, but he should not have done that. Back at Midway, tempers are beginning to boil over with the Philly chefs. Dejected. You know, no, just really pissed. <laughs> I'm really mad, really upset. Yeah. There was very little sympathy, very little understanding, very little, I'm sorry for your situation. Just, I can't Don't do worry, anything. We're working on I can't it. do anything. Yeah. Like that. As another Omaha flight leaves Kayla and the chefs behind, they demand a little compensation from the airline. Give us like $200 for food. You're starving here. And I can give you a food voucher, but, um, it's, it has to be used all at the same place. Meanwhile, the Philly chefs find someone's poached one of the last seats. He called the 800 number and changed his reservation when there were st still seats available on this flight. It's incredible. I don't understand how he got a seat when none of us were able to get a seat. So I've been told it's been sold out. We've been on standby since 8 o'clock this overlooked. morning. When it first happened this morning, he called immediately to the 800 number gone on his laptop. Why didn't so anyone tell us that we could try to get a seat earlier today? I mean, we've been like going from gate to gate to gate, and nobody ever tells us anything. Everywhere. Now there's maybe only four seats there. So one of us is going to be left all by themselves in Chicago here, and I'm not and happy about that. If there was one seat on that plane, one of us, one of us should have been on it, not that guy. You have standby people standing here that have been on an 850 flight in the morning. These people have had their reservation. That doesn't... We have, we've bought our tickets. We have reservations. We have reservations. Okay, but they were on earlier flights. Okay, we can only get two of you on here. Okay, we can't. I have two seats. Okay, we can't. 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 Meanwhile, at 37,000 feet... So finish up your drinks and you'll be fine. We want cups, cans, and glasses, and all those other trashes. I'll go ahead and pass them to the aisle. They don't know it's me yet until I walk out. <laughs> it's all in a day's work for Gina. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you.
you. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. But as the day draws to a close, Gina's flight hits some serious turbulence. After 10 hours at Midway, the Philly Five become the Philly Three. Which two are going to go on this flight? Kathleen and Elizabeth. I got a room to stay in. I'm not worried. <laughs> oh, the plane is going. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Liz. Goodbye, Bye. Kathleen. <laughs> but they may have to bed down at the airport. But the hotels are booked up. How's that? <laughs> They're all booked up. Because oh, our own God. hotel that we checked out of that we could have stayed in and had another day to sightsee has told us, oh, we're booked up tonight. Good things you guys are leaving. At Baltimore Washington International, Sue Lee's reminded that drinking and flying don't mix. So I've got to get this cleaned up down here. It's just a question of finding the culprit. If he's intoxicated, he's not getting on any aircraft. I can tell you that. Well, I'm waiting to approach this passenger. He's definitely intoxicated. But... We're going to have to stop him from getting on the aircraft. Sir, can I talk to you for a minute, please? Sir, talk to you for a minute, please. Um, we had a patch of turbulence that air traffic control didn't warn the pilots so he could sit us down. And we were up um, getting drinks, but everyone's OK. If you're up and you're moving about the cabin, what you do is you go up to the ceiling, you come crashing down, and then you go halfway. The turbulence is over, but it's affected Gina's performance. I screwed everything up. I don't know what I did. So now I gotta ask everyone what they ordered. So I just have a plate full of drinks. Sorry about that. What an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, to make our final descent down into uh, Ontario. I didn't get all my drinks table. out. Raise your seat back and tray table to their full of rides. I knew it. Position. Make sure anything you run on board this airplane tonight. with the whole toilet thing, and then I didn't get out the drinks. But you know what? We were sitting for 20 minutes, so it happened. They understood. They were sleeping. They don't pray even now. So we'll keep it like that. <laughs> At Midway, the Omaha chefs have hit the jackpot. To customer service and Karen helped me out there and she got us lights worked around so St. Louis we could go to St. Louis and then we could go to Omaha and she got people to give vouchers up so we could get on the plane and I think most of us on that got left this morning are gonna get on all 20 of us so that's exciting. We're still waiting. What did you do? What did we do? We've been here since seven and we talked to Karen. Customer service. She's, a, she's awesome. Yeah. I have to take care of my Omaha people, then I'll, Philadelphia's next on our list, I promise. Well, we're going. We're going home. The Philly Three corner Karen. Uh, nothing that we could do is going to compensate you for your time today. Nothing. No. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not tired. Absolutely But I can give you a room. I can do a hotel for tonight and get you on the first flight in the morning. But they cling to the hope of getting home today. No, I'm still waiting on that next flight. flight. We're on that list. In Chicago, Carrie's pulling Ellen Derry and John Omersinski from a flight to Tampa. They boarded the plane with a beer in hand, sparking fears that they're intoxicated. A lot of the times when they see that alcohol cup, it just puts up the red flag immediately. And they just automatically start to think. And then once they've made that call of that's it, that's it. We have no say in it. That was freaky. It was weird. Everyone's paranoid, I guess. Hey, Tony, if you didn't already get that bag, uh, you can let it go. It's just the way it is. The man at the bar over there, he said that you could walk anywhere in the airport and drink. We walked through, the first attendant said, drink your beer before, you, you know, we sit down. And we did that. We walked all the way back to the back stewardess, gave her our empty cups, and had a seat. Four or five minutes later, they came up saying that we were drinking, or how you call it, intoxicated. Ellen's job depends on her making it home tonight. It I take care of like four different drinks. Getting four days off is a big house. 
Back at BWI, soldier Demetrius D. Harrell may not make it back to base this evening. Um, I got a report that when they brought you off the aircraft, that you were very intoxicated. That's better now. Well, I see that you got sick over here. I'm not going to let you fly tonight. You can fly tomorrow. But I can't let you fly tonight. Well, I have to get back tonight. Well, I can't let you go tonight. Not as intoxicated as you were when you came off that flight, mm -hmm. and as sick as you've been, it's too risky. I'm really good now. No, can't do it. I'll have to stay. You have to stay here. You have to stay here in Baltimore. He can't stay here. He got That's what I'm saying. Key. I have to. Well. Excuse me, sir. This is between this passenger and myself, and not between you to come and tell me what he can and cannot do. We have what we call an eight-hour rule. Uh -huh. You can't fly for eight hours. So therefore, I cannot put you on an aircraft. You may think it's out of your system, but it's not. It's going to re intensify right back again. But will Demetrius so. obey Sue Lee's orders? All of us? All of us together getting on? 10%. Back at Midway, Karen comes to assist the Philly Three. We do have some customers that we've stranded at the airport due to long lines this morning, and they've been here all day. If you could volunteer and take the compensation and spend the night in a hotel and go out early in the morning, um, we would really appreciate it, and the customers that we've stranded here all day would really appreciate it. Jody Hi. Baldwin. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Deborah Thompson. That would be great. Yeah. That's it. Have a good one. <laughs> Kevin, you're not that cute. Arlene Jones. There was a small group of women um, that, uh, again, were very upset that there weren't really many options for them. Standby was not looking good. Yay! <laughs> we did look at soliciting people that wanted to stay overnight in a hotel rather than forcing them to. Yay! So they end up getting home tonight. Um, again, it's been a long day for them, but I, I know they appreciated it, um, but they were still very upset with us for probably everything they went through today. Meanwhile, in the terminal. The rule is if you deny somebody intoxication, that's eight hours, but I don't, I, honestly, I don't think you guys are, I don't think you're intoxicated, intoxicated at all. I would feel more than comfortable putting you guys on the 805. That would be no problem. And I would give you dinner or something here just for the inconvenience. Their flight departs in 14 minutes, but are Ellen and John too distracted by their free dinner? We're going to look for John and Ellen. <laughs> their 805 is boarding and they're not down there. BWI, Demetrius is being deserted. Now, are you going to go on the aircraft? Yeah, I'm Okay. Yeah, I'll well, be good, man. Okay. Uh, Hennessy and flying doesn't mix. <laughs> well, I'm coming from Baltimore. I'm headed to Norfolk, Virginia. That's where I was headed, so unfortunately, I have to sleep in the corner, so. He said he feels better now, but I told him, I said, Enjoy the eight-hour rule. I can't put him on the aircraft. Do you have your boarding cards? Yes, why well, certainly. I'm feeling great now. I still wasn't able to fly tonight, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> well, I have to go sleep down with the others <laughs> down at the end of the tier. So. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, I mean, he thinks it's funny, but reality hasn't set in yet. Well, I have a flight tomorrow at eight o'clock, so seven o'clock. So, <laughs> I guess that's when I'll leave. <laughs> Once he gets there in the morning, has to explain it to his officer. He'll, he'll realize it wasn't so fun. At Midway, John has been located. It's time to go. It's boarding down there. You guys ready? Okay. okay. So they're getting ready to board, so we just oh, really? went down there to get you, but you weren't there. But as the 8.05 departure nears, there's no sign of urgency from Ellen and John. Hopefully they didn't drink too much, and uh, hopefully they'll start moving soon. Terminal, please. Social Services, your final boarding call. Ellen Derry and John Ominski. 
Please report immediately to gate B20 for the departure of flight to Tampa. Last two. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You guys are okay. Same seat, same oh, location. Okay. Same thing. Accept the rules on airlines. Some passengers don't understand them. You're not gonna let me talk. I'm trying to. Explain. Why? I want to know why. Others are more accepting. So I have no problem with your rules. I just want to know what you want me to do. And one passenger gears up for a lifetime of obeying them. Get on the bus. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let's go. At Baltimore Washington International, Gina's got a tough situation on her hands. There's deadheads, meaning that Southwest Airlines flight attendants that need to go to Norfolk to work a flight out of Norfolk. They have no seats left on the aircraft. She needs to find two extra seats on a full flight that's already boarding. We're the last two people to check in, and I can't get any volunteers, and I'm going to have to you off the aircraft, sir. That, that won't work. That's unsatisfactory. Comp compensate you for it. I'm military under orders and I need to get back. You're on orders? Yes, I am. They're on orders. I can't pull them. Great. Who were the last two before that? Two of the crew. Marcia and Jane and Dad Tor, please come up to the podium here at B15. Hi, is it I call your name? Yeah. Okay. Um, right now, like I made an announcement, I couldn't get any volunteers. I can't do it. I'm going to Florida tomorrow. I got my son waiting for me right now. I can't do it. Um, I'm going to explain what we have to do to get these flight attendants on the aircraft. Well, I don't know why you picked me. The le I'm doing it by the history that you guys checked in on the flight. I got tickets here to non-refundable. I, I, I have I to be there. Sir. I understand. I don't know why you picked me. My I, son and them waiting for me right now. I can't do it. Can I have your... Can I explain first, please? I understand, I'm but my I'm no, from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. I'm, they're coming from Elizabeth City, North Carolina to Norfolk to get me. This is my first time flying. I don't know nothing. Please let me get on there. Yeah, I honestly, I can't. Um, Carlton, Carlton, give him his boarding pass back. I need him at the podium, please. What's what? The guy in the green shirt. In Palmdale, California, Michael Lindsay is preparing to leave home for the first time. He's been accepted into the Naval Academy near Baltimore. The Naval Academy has always been, in my mind, a prestigious college to go to, and I've always wanted to become a, a pilot. Uh, I know that they're building me up as a person, trying to build me up as a person, not tear me down. Like the saying goes, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think about it, and I've practiced it over and over in my head, that last kiss. Um, I know he's going to be in wonderful company, and I know he's, like I said, he's just going to grow to be an awesome young man. So my tears are probably very selfish tears. And Mom isn't the only one who's going to miss Michael. His sister Jennifer and his dad Will are also sad to see him go. We've talked about this over and over and over again. This is, uh, you know, 15, 20 years, I can be calling you Admiral. He says, well... 15, 20 years, I could be piloting the first ship to Mars. It's all pride. Back at BWI, Todd Torre has been denied boarding. If he misses this flight, he may lose out on a $2,000 holiday. I got children away from me. Sir, can I do this? Sir. I, I, I'm not trying to, I paid for this. This I, is not refundable. I understand that. If you could let, just, can I talk, I, there's please? There's to talk about. I got a plane to make. I got family to make. You're not getting on that aircraft, sir. Why you pick me? I, 
the order you guys checked in on is. Ma'am, I came you in. Were number one, what you were number one. What are you guys doing? Look, this is, you please cannot just pick people okay, like that. We're going to call somebody. I promise we'll I call somebody. I cannot do this. I cannot do it. I'm That's wrong. I'm denying you boarding, sir. And Why? I apologize. You can't call me. What is apologize? What do you pick me for? It's from the history you guys should What history, ma'am? Ma'am, can I get on the plane, please? Can I see your boarding pass? This is what you go by, sir. Can I see no, your boarding man, pass? Man, this is not right, ma'am. You this got another. Right. I don't care. I paid over two grand. Look, I have to get on this plane, ma'am. I understand that, sir, but there's not No, you're not, not understanding an nothing. There's, it's not an option. You're not getting on that airplane. Why? You're not going to let me talk. I'm trying to explain. Why? I want to know why. You need to lower I your voice, I just spent $2,000, and I explained to me why. OK, everyone is. Nobody else has to hear this, sir. I don't care about anybody else. You, they don't care about me. All I voice. know is I need you to be need on the to plane. You lower your voice, Ma sir. I ain't got to do nothing. I don't have to do nothing for you. Sir, I'm asking you to lower your voice. You're going to have to make me call the police. You call the police. <laughs> Tell them, explain to them why the hell you're pulling me off the damn plane Hey, for. I need the authorities to be 15, please. At Chicago Midway, Andrew Appleton is traveling with his son to Indianapolis. This is Marcus. He turns 6 September 13th, and he has cerebral palsy. And so it's a neurological disease of the brain. And uh, pretty much travels with me everywhere I go, so part of his life. Andrew wants to hold Marcus during the flight, but Southwest flight attendants are sticking to the letter of the law and have taken them off the flight. Colleen explains why. Any child over the age of two must be in a seat. So it's a safe it, for takeoff and landing, and it's a safety issue. It's not Southwest Airlines, it's a federal regulation. So the flight crew was questioning him for safety issues, no, nothing more. Is there any way Marcus can be in his seat for takeoff and landing? I mean, I, I mean, if that's what you want me to do, I don't think it's safe, but. No, I, I, yeah. I want Marcus to be comfortable, comfortable. and safe I mean, as well as you. With his condition, he has no control. So it, all a seatbelt's going to do is gut and, you know, wrench into his gut. So I have no problem with your rules. I just want to know what you want me to do. Right now, what we're going to have to do is talk to the crew when they get here for this next flight. They have to advise you of the regulation, just like the last flight attendant did. Exactly. And right. if you choose to. Uh, I choose you know, to. Not to, so. Well, so if I don't put the seatbelt on, what are you saying? I can't fly? They just need to come up with a solution, because I don't want to stop flying. And I'm sure there are hundreds of other kids out there that don't fly because of this. So you know, I don't know what to do. The Lindsay family say their goodbyes at LAX. Michael and his mom start the 2,500-mile trek to the Naval Academy. Getting to the airport was fun, but when we started getting on, on the plane, it started getting tougher and tougher as you progress. Michael may be nervous about his new life, but he's happy to talk about it. Are you, are you just visiting or relatives? Or? I'm going to the Naval Academy, I'm sure. Well, maybe you'll be fine for us one day. There we go. You know, <laughs> it could happen. It's really nice to have you guys with us, and good luck to you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Ma'am, this is not right. This is totally... At BWI, Gina's called in reinforcements to help calm Todd down. Call whoever. I don't give a damn. Call Bush. I don't care. I got to rebook you, sir. You're going to rebook me for what? You can't stay here no more, man. Oh, God. Can I see your boarding pass? Yes. See, this is crazy. I need to get on the You need to turn around. Ma'am, I ain't got nothing to do with Look, I cannot be here tomorrow. I have to be somewhere tomorrow. I understand that, and I'm sorry that I have to do this. I don't feel you're sorry. I don't feel you. I don't believe you. What you're doing to me is you, not only my family, everybody, what you're doing, you don't understand what you're doing here, man. No. What the f is this? This is not customer service, I know that. Back at Midway, Andrew is giving the full story on why he and Marcus, who has cerebral palsy, were taken off their flight. So when we got on ready to take off on the runway, they stopped the plane and said, you got to put him in this seatbelt. And I said, I can't do it. Take us back to the gate if you want to. And the pilot said, we'll go ahead and go. So we left. The next flight to Indianapolis has arrived, and Colleen decides to talk to the flight crew. 
I have a regular car seat that I'm having baggage service bring up. Right. And I'm, I'm, you know, he can gladly use that to complete his trip. Right. But he's, uh, he's clearly handicapped. I don't know, you know. So do we stop him mid-trip, or do we give him the car seat and offer some assistance? I don't. If we use the car seat, then he'll be completely strapped in. Obviously. He will be strapped in, but he has no support. Yeah. I'm going to yes. offer the car seat to Dad. Yes. Okay. And um, I told him, we, it was just after 5, we couldn't get a hold of Dallas, but I told him that, you know, we have advocacy, spe advocacy specialists that we can contact. But I'm going to go ahead down and talk with Andrew again then, okay? okay. And hopefully the Sounds car seat's good. here. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Now I have car seats in the baggage service office that will offer some support. And I'll be glad to give you one of those to use on the flight, okay? Um, It'll offer some support, at least for takeoff and landing. And then if you need to hold Marcus during the flight, that, that's not a problem. But if that's what you want to do. Well, that's what we have to do. It's a federal regulation. Then you want to get our car seat? I mean, it's in... Do you have a... It's in the... Do you have a, a different car seat no, that we can seat. use? I mean, his car seat? I don't think it'll work too well, but yeah. At BWI, Todd's flight has left, and the police have calmed him down. I spent over two grand to take my son to Disney World. If I don't go, it's over. I lose my money. I work hard for my money, and I promised my son I don't want to let him down. If I don't make it, I'm, I'm mud. It's all over. The time frame and everything is so crucial. And, I, and I'm sorry, sorry. This because is... they're non-refundable. I blow it. It's over. I know. And, I, and I've never had That's to me. do this ever, sir. It just it never it doesn't happen a lot. Okay. And I've been with the company three years, and I never physically had to deny somebody boarding from the history. You only do what you have to do. Gina has managed to get him a seat on the next flight in an hour's time. I'm sorry I yelled no, at you. I know. I, I didn't want to call the police. I hate it's calling cool. you guys. Oh, that's all right. But I'm mean, like, calm down, please. No disrespect. I'm from New York. I'm used to cops. Okay. All right. Gina compensates Todd the cost of his flight for the delay. If I was a passenger, I would have been uh, very upset. And I totally understand the way he was acting. He, he just wouldn't calm down. And I, I understand that they were upset. Totally, totally understand that. And I felt horrible. It's 6 a.m. Michael and his mom have arrived at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Your name? Mike Lindsay. Okay, welcome aboard. It's definitely sinking in, and uh, I don't know, I guess I just can't wait to get it going. I feel like, you know, all the years he's grown up to be such a wonderful young man that it's time, it's, it's okay for, to, for me to let him go. It's not long before the new recruits are taken for induction. He's just going into a place where he's going to be well taken care of. So it's exciting. Julie will get one last chance to see Michael at the end of his first day at the academy. Andrew, you can go ahead. Back in Chicago, and everyone is chipping in to help Marcus with his car seat. Thanks, Anita, for bringing that up. Yeah, exactly, relax. This is his bag, dear. He's a big boy. It's not certain. No, we got to have the other one. It's not certain. Yes, we need the other one. Okay, so we're going to have to get the other one. Okay. It's not FAA approved? Okay. We're going to need ours. This one's not FAA approved. We're going to have to retag it. Meanwhile, in Annapolis, Michael's new life takes shape at the Naval Academy. I think he's going to find that all that anticipation and all that apprehensiveness is really not, probably not as bad as he thought it was going to be. Outside, waiting on you guys. Some of them look so frantic, and I think, God, if I saw that frantic look on my kid's face, you know, I would just, it would melt. 
You will face right, file off squad. One, two, three, single file up the yellow line. There's going to be stress, and there's going to be challenge, and there's going to be development, and we don't want it to be easy. Okay. My name is Midshipman Lieutenant Junior Grade Reeves. I will be issuing you your first period of instruction. He's probably going to hear my voice and a lot of their words. Sir, yes, sir. Yep, this is why mom told me to do this. Okay. I can you my bus. No! One of the things that we want to do is uh, to reassure the, the parents uh, we're going to take care of their sons and daughters and, uh, and they will uh, become uh, better people through the process. At LAX, Thomas Lubbering is carrying a torch lighter. Since 9-11, this type of lighter is not permitted on flights. He wants Southwest to hold it until his return. You know, it's not expensive, it's just I've had it for 20, 15 years. So why can't we make arrangements that this would be, we have a, a place, and if you don't pick it up within 60 days. But unfortunately, if we kept everybody's lighters. Right, hundreds of thousands here, a day, I right. don't think so. So is your suggestion to hire somebody just to take care of things that the you little incidentals with these people that used to never be a problem, and now it's a problem. But unfortunately, with all the changes after 9-11 and everything, and these couldn't... But these terrorists are affecting everybody, and it's not right that little stuff like this, because I could have matches. They so where's the locker? The Don't they have lockers that are quarter, and you put a not locker? Not since 9-11. Nothing that Everything the, the not mailboxes not are sealed. There are no mailboxes here. People used to just mail things back to themselves. They can't do that anymore. Those are sealed. The lockers are sealed. And those are all things that are beyond our control as a carrier using this airport. This is really a, a, a catastrophe, and how many people are upset every day because of this? At Midway, Anita's found an FAA-approved car seat for Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we travel. <laughs> oh. I know. We did travel. Gotta put this through here. Yeah. I'd rub it in here. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you should go. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> get a little more room. Then he knew the best way. It fits, and Marcus is cleared for takeoff. I think it was resolved well. I, I think that um, obviously we have to follow federal regulations. I mean, there's a reason for them, and we want to do everything we can to assist people with disabilities. Now, can I get up and leave him here and go to the bathroom? Yes, I'll stay with him. Okay. Back in Annapolis, it's time for the Navy's Oath of Allegiance ceremony. Julie waits anxiously to have a few last moments together with Michael. Back at LAX, Thomas has a theory as to what happens to confiscated torch lighters. Let me ask you something. Don't you sell everybody's lighter and everybody's pocket knife? You got them up there by the ton, and then you have a big auction at the no, end. That's TSA. I'll say what I'm saying. So somebody's not, making money on it. I don't know that it. they sell those items. I don't yeah, know what they, they do. They, do. they, they sell confiscate them. them. They I know that much. And then they sell them by the do. pound or whatever, and so somebody's making money. You might want to ask them what they do with them, but I know they confiscate them. I don't know what they do after that. Okay, so that's my memory and history, and it's now yours, right? And there's no options. There's no, here's, here's our 
receipt, you don't get it, you can't claim it, it's not even an option anymore. Right. The TSA upstairs, if you would like, has a bin that people put stuff in, and you're more than welcome to put it up there so that you don't have to give it to Southwest Airlines. Well, it's not that. It's I just mean, we also don't want the items because then it's our responsibility to dispose of them. All right. Uh, that's just exasperating. I know that Mahoney Boise is not you. You didn't make the rules. I feel like I'm in a foreign country now. And that really is annoying. And, and it's not something that I've created, it's something that someone else has created and really pushed me to where I went, what is going wrong? He hasn't flown that much since 9-11 and a lot of the rules have changed and he was unaware. So we just wanted to try to educate him. So leave these at home, unless you pack it in your luggage, but you probably should just leave it at home. In Annapolis, Julie awaits her last moments together with Michael. Michael! <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah. Why? <laughs> you look so handsome. It's the last time she'll see him for several months. So you haven't been picked on yet. Cool. This is a good thing. Do your best. I keep smiling. All right? That's what's going to get you through this. Remember, your sense of humor. All right? See you in August. Yeah. All right. I did very well. I just, you know, looking at his face and looking how confident he felt and he what didn't break down because I think if I had if he had broken down, I would have broken down. <laughs> That was hard. That was hard. But I held back. going to be a tight squeeze on airline today when there are only three seats for a family of six to squeeze into. All of a sudden now she says I got three. Now we're down to three. In Come much, on. In a matter it's of... It's not right. A lost ticket pushes a passenger to the limit. I am not a frequent flyer, okay? okay? I catch the oh. bus on a damn train. And an LAX ramper flexes some serious muscle. Chicago, Anita meets Joe Wood. Hello. Who's waiting for a very important passenger. I'm Anita, I'm a customer service too. Okay, How I'm you Joe. doing? What are you coming here to do, Joe? I'm coming to meet a lady friend of mine. I'm okay. picking her up. And okay. this is quote a blind date. Oh. But I forgot, you know. How did that happen? Well, she sighted, but I'm blind. So I guess that's a half a blind date. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna help you down to the gate, walk you down to the gate, okay. so that you can meet her when she comes off. How'd the blind date happen? Joe met his date through a mutual friend who gave them each other's phone numbers. So far, all they've done is talk. Over at LAX, ramp agent Rod Young is in serious training, and it's not just to help him with baggage handling. In a couple of days, he will compete in the Orange County Bodybuilding Championships. This is my first show in two years. I'm hoping to go in in heavyweight division, which is 198 to 225 pounds. You have to be in that category. And um, I'm hoping uh, I place high. The first rule of bodybuilding is eat, eat, and then eat some more. Rod chows down every two hours. This time I just seen eating. He's always giving everybody a nutrition tip. I've always seen him eating like salads, you know, rice, and stuff, stuff that's really healthy. <laughs> I know he like to eat. He eat all day. <laughs> that's the only thing I know about him. I got like two days before the show. So today's Thursday, so Saturday's the show, so it's like nitty gritty time. I'm down to the wire right now. Back at Midway, Joe and Anita wait at the gate for the Detroit flight to come in. Why don't you tell me what your perfect girl is? I don't know, it just depends on who you talk to. Common interest. Okay. 
do things together. Uh, good personality. And the body helps. <laughs> So how long have you been talking to her on the phone? On the phone? Two weeks, yeah. So I'm like, okay. You must have had heavy conversation. <laughs> Was it heavy conversation? Yeah, it must have been. It must have been. You must have said the right things, huh? I guess. I guess. I don't know. Well, it's on Anita phone checks phone on the flight's progress. Minutes. So it's on time. It's on time. So, Joe, it's on time. So she's doing it in about 10 minutes. Okay. Well, we'll polish this off real quick. Over on the ramp, Rod's taking every available opportunity to prepare for the competition. Right now, I'm um, practicing my posing routine because I'm two days out from the show. Look, look at my arm compared to Rod's arm. <laughs> Heck no. Usually you start practicing your routine about six weeks out from a show, so that way you can do it in your sleep. But practicing his routine at work doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, don't worry, Rod, I got it. My wife was sick for about two and a half years. She had a brain tumor, and when she was on her, um, on her deathbed, she told me, basically to, you know, do a bodybuilding show and compete and, um, and win. And, and it just, it, that lit a fire under me and it just, I was totally inspired by it and it just made me work harder and harder. And every, every rep, every set, every beat of sweat in that gym is for her. The flight from Detroit has landed in Chicago and Joe's hoping his blind date is on it. She's not gonna be the first off. She's probably nervous. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the first off either. She's gonna be in the middle. Yeah, I wouldn't be the first off. She She's gonna have to take a deep breath and get it. Yeah, I wouldn't be. Uh, I think this is Joanne. <laughs> Joanne? No, not Joanne. Okay. Five foot seven, strawberry blonde. Strawberry blonde. Uh-huh. Okay. Blue jean girl. I got a wheelchair coming out. This is this is not her. Oh, I think I heard of Joanne. No, not yet. Over at gate B-13, Kimberly Johnson is missing something for her flight to Detroit, her ticket. Yeah, she, yeah. Did you lose a ticket? Is that what happened? Yes, I kept everything in here. Morrow has stepped in to help. Down, when she was checking me, she set it down. That's the only way, reason. At security? Yeah, she said it down because I had it Did in my you backtrack? hand. Did you go back to security and ask them to see if they got it? I haven't been back there yet because I thought I had everything right here. Go back to security, see if they have it, and, uh, and make your way back. Okay. Kimberly's going to have to move fast if she's going to make her flight. Yeah, she ain't walking fast enough. Her flight leaves at, at uh, 8 o'clock, and going through security, she lost her ticket. So now she has to go back to try and backtrack to see if, if it's left at security. If it's not, then it's lost. And uh, with the lost ticket, it's just it's a lost, it's a lost ticket. You have to purchase another one. At Chicago Midway, Joe waits as the last of the passengers and crew leave the jetway. They're still coming off, though.
especially with the kiss and everything when they when they finally saw each other. So mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a, a steamy night. We'll see. For Rod, it's the day of the bodybuilding championships. But first, he's got one important stop to make with his nine-year-old son, Trevor. I came up to the cemetery to see my wife, Michelle. Um, I come up here every uh, morning before show to get her blessing and to um, help me basically to do, do well in the show. Before she passed, she told me, you know, do a show and compete for me and win. And uh, I promised her before she passed that I would. And uh, hopefully the show today, you know, you know, I train really hard for it and do the best I can. I love you, Mommy, and I miss you. When my son Trevor was born um, in 1995, and she was diagnosed in 1997, about the middle of 1997. So right when he's two and a half, three is when she got diagnosed, and she was sick for about two and a half years after that. I just wish uh, I had five minutes with her. Not only for me, but for my son. I just wish he knew uh, what a wonderful mom he had. <clears throat> a wonderful person she was. And uh, just five minutes with her just to hold her again and tell her how much I love her and miss her. <clears throat> this one's for her. Over in Baltimore, Victor Liberatore and his family are trying to get home to Buffalo after a long day's travel. What am I going to do with four kids, a job till Tuesday, ma'am? That's what I'm saying about guaranteeing your seat. I don't do that. How do I guarantee? But I can't, I can't be responsible because that plane is late getting here to guarantee. It's not, it's not about so far. Yeah, but, but, but I paid for this just to go home. I don't want to go home Tuesday. Victor's flight from Jacksonville arrived too late for him to secure boarding passes for him and his family. And now the Buffalo flight is oversold. That ain't right, ma'am. What's happening is, book the flight, to fly from Fort Lauderdale to Buffalo. We flew from Fort Lauderdale to Jacksonville, Jacksonville to Baltimore. We got here and they said we don't got tickets to get home. It's overbooked. It's your way or no way, that's the way it is. Back at Midway, Kimberly is trying to make her flight to Detroit. Come back. She's been all the way to security, but has she found her ticket? As long as you got it. Hey, Dee! Right. Where's, where's your ticket? No, she doesn't have it. Your ticket, ticket. You got it stamped, oh, that's fine, but you needed your ticket. Here, hold on to this. Now what? This is your, well, there's an 835 flight. We yeah. have, well, now that we missed this one, we, we need to find out where that ticket is. You know what's weird is that she said that she left it at security, but if she left the ticket at security, there's no there's no staple holes on this or the other one. Wait a minute. You said that you reprinted this for her? This is the reprint that I gave her. This is a reprint. So the original... So you gave her this, so the original is lost. It looks like Kimberly may have to pay to get on the later flight. Can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and go back to security? Try and find the same person that wanted you and that, that checked you and has to speak to their supervisor, and maybe they might have it locked up or off to the side. You all right? Oh, she's pretty upset. She has a reason to be. It's uh, 810 right now, and the next flight leaves at 835. Rod arrives at the bodybuilding championships, and he doesn't waste any time getting down to pumping up. It boils down to this. So. The first challenge is qualifying for the final lineup. Rod knows if the judges don't move him from the center, he'll make the finals. I 
think I did pretty good out there because they didn't move me from right in the center spot. So I'm prejudging I was in the middle, so that's a good sign. So we'll see what happens tonight. You still need to get your compensation. Again, just, your name is still on the list. If anybody does volunteer, we're certainly going to call to accept. It doesn't look like we're anybody's going to call. Got it's flight time in Baltimore, and Adrienne is still dealing with the Liberatore family. Well, when I got here, when we got here, she said it was five seats. The plane to Buffalo had room for all but one of them when they got to the gate. So I'm saying, well, and I'm saying, well, what are we doing here? And I got a little pissed off, and I'm going to be honest with you, right or wrong. All of a sudden, now she says I got three. No, we're down to three. In, Come on. In a matter it's of not right. us standing here facing the shock of well, what, not being able to get on a flight as she's want, handing somebody a boarding pass. I don't want to speak for her, but she, you said that when, you, when they came up, that they only five had seats. Five seats. five seats. You told us we had split and up. And six in but, your party. But you know, you're right, okay? But all of a sudden, you're looking at me saying, we don't have seats for you. And as you're saying that, and we're going, what? You're handing somebody a boarding pass. Come on, that ain't right. All Adrian can do is refund their tickets, but it's not going to be enough to get them home this evening. Um, yes. Yeah. But I got four kids that got to get to school. I got a job that I got to get to. Work. So you're going to compensate me this. I mean, it's going to cost me probably that for a car to get from here back home. So I gain nothing and I got to drive 10 hours. 10 hours? Four kids. I understand that. When you intentionally overbook flights by 6, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, right now, you have intentionally overbooked one flight to Buffalo, of all places, by 14 people. It's a 10-hour drive home, honey, with four kids. She's going to compensate me. Big deal. It won't even cost the gas to get home. Back at the Orange County Bodybuilding Championships, Rod has made it to the final five. It's time for his routine. Here is Rod Young. Rod now has to wait for the results. In Chicago, time is running out, and Morrow needs to work fast. Hey, uh, can somebody do me a favor and let me know if uh, flight 9, 1823 to Detroit is already boarding? Or... 1820 is boarding right now, Morrow. Shoot, well, I gotta try to help her out. Yes. Yeah. What happened? She said I want to you have her ticket? Stand. No. Is that Who screened her? Best? Yeah. She went to the selecting light. Like, right. Her. And she states that somebody, while she was being wanded, somebody went ahead and took the ticket, put it off to the side while she was being wanded. We have no, nothing on our checkpoint anywhere. Nothing was turned into us. Nothing was extra was left over on our lane at all. No boarding passes anywhere. Miss Johnson, when you came through security, you know you did you have this? Are you for sure that you had? I'm not a frequent flyer, okay? Okay. I catch the f bus or the damn train, and I should right, get I'm that. just trying to. What? I got. Now you're talking over there. I have, I have to pay again because they, my ticket is then, then ran up out of my envelope, and now I have to uh, pay again. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying to explain to you is that we're trying not to have you pay again. Okay. But once I don't know what happened to it. I got lost. everything in there that I had when she gave it to me downstairs, all the way around there when I first walked up in this. Up in here. Yeah, Gloria, no. you didn't see anything no, left I, off to the side or anything that when she left? We have more than to double check again. Could you but please, because we got it. a flight that her flight is already boarding and it leaves in like, at 835. If we can't find the ticket, we're going to have to try and see if you can purchase another one before this flight leaves, because okay, this is the I last flight out tonight. Because I don't have the money to purchase another ticket. Okay. It's, it's the last flight. It's the last flight out today.
Back in Baltimore, Adrian and the Liberatore family are deadlocked. But I know what you want. You want me to give up the three so you can give them to somebody else and get me out of here. That's what you want. Anything you don't want to do. Yeah. What the hell do you overbook by 30 Because they got, you know, listen, they got your money. They got your money for that a length amount of time, okay? And they use it. After a final call brings no volunteers for three more seats, Flight 2128 to Buffalo leaves the gate without the Liberatores. Two blue roller bags, one duffel bag. I just need your driver's license, whoever you want the checks. Is that okay? I don't want no money. I don't want all my money checked. I don't want no money. I'll get it all. One way or the other, I'm getting it all. Then when we get back, I want to let her. I'm going to call the news everything, okay? Because they shit us on this deal. Don't put that on there. Decided. You decided for us. Victor decides to refuse the standby option and accept a full refund with compensation. Now, there's only one way home. What's the outcome? I'm going to have to drive 10 hours to get home. That's the outcome. Back at Midway, Morrow and Kimberly aren't seeing eye to eye. She refuses to pay for a new ticket. Where'd you get that? Okay, All right, so somebody turn it in. Somebody turn it in. Thanks, Brian. I'll get back to you later. Appreciate it. Now they've only got a few minutes to make it to the gate, and it's at the other end of the terminal. All right, pretty lucky, huh? Is it all right if I run up ahead of you and let them know you're coming? Please. Please Can I hold on to this? Yes. You want to take this too, okay? Someone else. No, no, no. You hold on to that. Just walk fast. Oh God. How you doing? Better? Good? Oh, still, I haven't got on there yet. Here we go. This is your gate. Yeah. I just want to make sure she gets on. Thank you. There you go. Have a good night. You're welcome. I'm glad she's on her flight. It's, you know, knowing that it was the last flight, I'm glad that TSA cooperated, that she actually showed she was trying to make an effort to find it. I like that. Get a little jog and exercise in it, too. It was nice. Oh, Back at the bodybuilding contest, the final five await the announcement of the winner. Here's the top five in the novice heavyweights. Fifth place goes to Mr. Wolf Blade. In fourth place, we have J Dave Jacobson. Third place is Ronnie Taylor. Second place is Joe Croninger, and winning our novice heavyweights tonight is Rod Young. This is what it's all about right here. We've got all creatures, great and small, on airline today. Party animals are on the loose in Chicago. When they're that rowdy going to a football game, it's nice to have a door that you can close. There's something wild prowling the terminal. I want to know where there's a tiger at my gate. And it's quite a different animal in L.A. But I was told that his genitals were exposed. allow animals to fly only in exceptional circumstances, but the airport often resembles a zoo. It's Friday afternoon in Chicago, and for these party animals, the weekend has started early. Hi! We're going to San Diego. To San Diego. To watch the Packers beat the Chargers. Exactly. <laughs> It's so much fun and the trip is so much enjoyable. The flights are great. Everybody's happy. You can't beat it. You just can't beat it. The fans might be having a ball, but the coaches on the sidelines are keeping an eye on them. We have the potential for a situation um, that could arise with this group, so we're going to have to kind of monitor their behavior. It could get a little confrontational if, if the group is large enough and they've been drinking long enough. Go, Pat, go. 
Go Pack Go! Yay! <laughs> They're just party animals. Green Bay Packer party animals. I gave you a I think there's uh, 59 or 60 of them. I don't know how many of them are in the bar right well, now. What exactly are they doing? They're just getting a little loud and boisterous, and on, so we're just going to have to watch and see. If the rowdy cheeseheads are too intoxicated to fly, Run, a penalty flag will be thrown, and 60 fans will not make the game. I called for backup. <laughs> In San Diego, flight attendants Sam and Janie prepare for their flight to Chicago. All I hear is that there's somebody by the name of Penny and Pete. Pete and Penny. Are, and I don't know are, who they are or what makes passengers. them think they're so special. <laughs> oh, is that who's riding with me? Yeah. There well, they are. Penny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Aren't they cute? This is Peter Penny. This is Pete. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> I've never flown with penguins before. I've had yeah. nuns on my flights, but never any any real penguins. <laughs> and it's just a, is it a fundraiser that you do tonight in Chicago? Um, no, is it we're, that you we're do? actually we we have the night off, but then tomorrow we're gonna go visit one of your partner schools, and we're gonna go oh, talk to the kids down there. Got so it. we're gonna meet them and then fly home. It's right at the bottom. This is yours. And then Pete, this is yours. You gonna hold that? Put the bloopers up just like that. <laughs> Pete and Penny are from San Diego SeaWorld and are frequent flyers, visiting schools all across the country. You may notice that we have a camera crew with us today. You may be thinking it's because we have penguins on the plane today, but you are absolutely wrong. Southwest Airlines is doing a program about businessmen who cheat on their wives while they're out of town. If you feel you need to have a cigarette, you can step out onto the wing. If you can light it, you can smoke it. We'll be showing gone with the wind and blown away today out on the wing. It's our pleasure having you with us this afternoon. Welcome aboard. Okay. Okay, have a good At time. LAX, Yolanda enjoys some local creature comforts. So cool. Look at you. Hi. Oh, he's friendly, too. I didn't think they were this friendly. <laughs> You're trying to kiss me. That's the first kiss I had in months. Yeah, that was a finely trained animal a few minutes ago, but now. Oh, look. <laughs> Look at you. Now oh, you ruined them, Mary. You might as well take them. Oh. Well, they're all dogs, but not as nice as this one, you know? <laughs> I'll see you later. Bad boy, bad boy. Back in Chicago, the merry band of cheeseheads continue their celebration. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! them to think that you know that we're giving them a bum rap right off the rap off the, the beginning I just want to give them a fair chance and let them know that they probably won't get on if they're gonna continue drinking this is just getting louder and louder As far as the fans are concerned, they'll soon be on their way. Well, I'm not sure how the crew's gonna feel about some of them. Some of them were pretty loud and boisterous. So right now, the supervisor's at the gate monitoring the situation, and we're just gonna see what happens in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Okay, if they're denied boarding, we're gonna have to put them on the next departure, which leaves at 5.55, if they're fit for travel. I'm gonna head over, V. You coming? Will these Packer fans make it to the end zone? It looks doubtful. Back in Chicago, the flight crew will umpire the decision to let the fans fly. They're allowed to board and make their way to the Packers showdown in San Diego. Go Pack! Hey, go Pack, go Pack. I would hate, though, to deny one of them boarding because I, you can see that it would have been, it would have been 
it would have caused chaos. I think it was um, handled really well. The customers actually um, were fine. We weren't looking forward to pulling them off anyway. They're loud. They weren't so loud in the, out there in the uh, gate area. So when they came down the jetway, I was like, oh, word. When they're that rowdy going to a football game, it's nice to have a door that you can close. There's only so much beer on the plane, so it's got to end. <laughs> San Diego, beware. The cheeseheads are coming. At a cruising altitude of 30,000 feet, the seatbelt sign is turned off, and Pete and Penny can stretch their wings. Hi, Penny. How you doing? I love them. <laughs> There's a lot of cameras on <laughs> It's soft. It's furry. I wish I could see it. It, uh, it feels adorable. Pretty now. There we are. <laughs> People who sit in an office all day. What oh, suckers. <laughs> At LAX, Yolanda has been called to gate five following reports of a passenger's rather strange display. Are you sure that he doesn't have any pants at all on, or is it? I was told that his genitals were exposed, so I'm here and I'm gonna try to figure out who he is and call him up, and that'll give me an opportunity to see him stand and hopefully deal with him. Okay. Has the plane landed yet? Sir, can you come with me? I just need to ask you a question. For those who are still waiting for Just right over here. Yeah, would you mind stepping over with me just for a second? I'm a supervisor for Southwest Airlines. Basically, the passengers felt uncomfortable. Okay, they had noticed something just a little different within the passenger. It looked like that he wasn't wearing any undergarments on, that he was in decent exposure exposing a little bit of his private parts, and they said he kind of had his legs open, just not really caring at all. I mean, and it's a lot of kids running around there, and they don't need to see that. I mean, it's just too much. So they just didn't really feel comfortable with that person being on the flight. There was a couple of passengers that had some concerns about your genitals being exposed, and, no, no, and no, that, no. so you're wearing shorts or something under that? Please no, tell me. That's not true. I mean, if they... Okay. So, I had three I different know. passengers, so I had to oh, come yeah, and yeah. investigate it because I have to determine whether or not with the complaints if I can go ahead and allow you on board. So yeah, if you have yeah, something underneath, do. you do. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> Yolanda still doesn't have the answer she needs. I'm not certain as to whether or not he has something on under the velour kilt skirt type situation. But obviously, I can't ask him to lift it up, so well, it's okay. going to be one of those things where George he said he did. George just the other two passengers said he absolutely doesn't have anything on me. So I'm kind of between that. It's going to be a situation where I have to kind of watch and unfortunately try to see what I can see, for lack of a better phrase. I mean, I don't know. V and Sandy meet a four-legged passenger on a stopover in Chicago. Oh, Sandy's walking one of the customers um, who's seen impaired. She's walking his dog so that he can um, take a potty break. His name's Higgins. Some of our customers, they flew in earlier, and they have a two-hour layover here in Chicago, and they're taking a flight to San Diego, which is a long flight, so. They asked if we could possibly take him out. So we can go to the bathroom. He's a yellow lab, and he's a assist dog. He's a assist animal for his owner's visually impaired. We're just going to help him out and take him out on our ramp to use the bathroom. Well, that 
was quick. That's all he needed to do? I don't know, we'll see. Oh. Good boy, again. Park it. His owner had told me that the command for him to use the restroom is park it. So he said just continue to say park it, and if he's got to go, he'll go. I mean, he did right immediately when we walked out, but I'm not sure if that's all he has to do. What do you think, Higgins? Is that it? Are you done? Higgins, park it. Hey, when you got to go, you got to go. Here's Yola. No, do I don't you? think so. I don't have a dog. Good boy, Higgins. Whoa, well, I'll be. I guess one of those things you got to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Higgins's command performance gets him back on board. People will ask me, you know, how does he fly? I go after a couple martinis, he's great. <laughs> you know, I mean, he does, you know, he's a great flyer. <laughs> back in LA, Yolanda shares her insights with a colleague. That they said that you can see his genitals. He's wearing like a little velour miniskirt. <laughs> Don't look like that. It's hard enough to keep a straight face. He calls it a kilt. It's like a little black velour miniskirt type thing. Hold on. Are you ready for that one? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. And the other passenger said that they could see his genitals, that he wasn't wearing anything under. When I went over there, he stood up. I couldn't tell. He told me he had something on under it, but I couldn't tell because he didn't move in a way where I could tell if he was exposed or hanging loose or whatever you want to call it. So he's on this flight, um, and we kind of, I kind of have to watch him because obviously if he doesn't have anything on under that, he can't go because it's like a mini skirt. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. She calls a manager to see what sort of procedure fits this unique situation. Okay, so just tell him that he needs to put something else on if he wants to travel. Oh, where did he go? Okay. Okay. But our kilted friend has vanished, and Yolanda knows she needs to find him. Yeah, I don't see him. Uh, I think I lost him. Pete and Penny arrive at Midway to a fanfare fit for a celebrity. They're ready to go to Chicago. Uh, we'll try this. This will be fun. Oh, so cute. It's great. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hi. 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 Do you know each other? Look at that. I'm looking at a penguin. Nestled in their luxury accommodation, the VIP treatment continues. Room service. Hi. Come on in. It's dinner time. Go ahead. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. <gasps> Yum. They'll soak up the star treatment tonight, but tomorrow it's back to work. At LAX, Yolanda spots the skirt-wearing passenger across the terminal. Sir, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry to bug you again, sorry. but I just had to speak to a, a man, another manager about the situation. Uh -huh. If you're gonna travel on Southwest, we're gonna have to have you put something else on. Do you have something to change into? <laughs> Sir, do you wanna just take a minute and change? Why am I being harassed? With well, it's not an issue of harassment, sir. There, there are a couple of, sorry, there are a couple of the passengers that that felt like you were indecently exposed in what you're wearing. That they're saying that there's nothing under your kilt, or and that we're going to have to ask you to put something something on. I don't think that's. I don't think that's appropriate. You know. Yeah. I mean, what do I have to do? Do I have to show well, you my no, underwear? Well, no, 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 you don't, you don't do have I, to. Do, no, you don't is. need to show me your underwear, sir. OK, well, You don't need to. But if, if, the sh if the kilt is short enough to expose yourself when you sit down, then that's something that. Ma'am, you, you have to tell everybody who's wearing a skirt or a kilt. This, is, this ain't right. 
Okay, the only way though you're going to be able to travel, and I've already spoke to another manager about it, is to, to put something else on, and I'm sorry. But what if I had not had a pair of blue jeans? Then I would actually go out of my way to try to find you something to yeah. put on. And even if I wasn't wearing anything underneath, what difference would it make? Does somebody go around and ask you if you're wearing underwear? Well, Whether no, you're but wearing if, a skirt or a dress or anything, right? Do but they? If, if they Do sit, they? if I'm in a public place and I sit down and they can see, my so, private parts, then yeah, they have a right if they're going to fly me on their airplane to tell me that's not okay. You got to put right. some short. Do you have shorts this that you, is, you can wear? Right. Do you have shorts this that right, you can not wear? Right that I, I'm being harassed. I'm sorry. I'm, harassed. I'm, I'm sorry, glad you sir. Got it on tape because you know what? I can. I'm going to sue. Oh, I'm sorry. And I need to know your name. Would you I'll write give your name you. Yeah, when that? you come out, I'll give you everything. Okay. Okay. Threatening legal action is fine, but first things first better find something to wear on the plane. At Chicago, something strange is on the loose inside the terminal. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's cool. There you go. I want to know where there's a tiger at my gate. How are you doing? Why are you dressed up as a tiger? Oh, whatever reason you want to come up with. For a tiger? Any reason you want. Any reason? Any reason. Okay. I think he's an entertainer, especially with the guitar. Or he could just be looking for attention, because <laughs> he sure got it. <laughs> Your tiger face. Will anyone solve the big cat mystery? He had no, he had no particular reason why he wanted to be dressed up like that. The only conclusion we could come to possibly is a performer. He's on his way to a hospital or something to entertain, but we don't know for sure, and he didn't give me an answer. So I respect his privacy. and. It might have been the warmest thing I had in my closet, right? And maybe I wasn't prepared for the weather here. But maybe not. I don't know. He doesn't have stripes. Brian, happy Brian. Leverett Smith dons a pair of jeans for his flight, but he's not done yet. I mean, I understand and your concern, indecent, but you have to understand do you know, do you know the definition of indecent exposure? It's a deliberate, willful, and a lascivious manner to expose yourself in public. It's not by a woman walking down the street who has no underwear on or anything and the wind blows her skirt up or whatever she's wearing or dress. It's not considered indecent exposure, so you're way off base. Well, what I'm saying to you is they felt like no, you were well, indecently well, exposed. I didn't say that you, you were. So, you know, they, you know the, if they the, can see the, your private yeah. parts when you, you sit down, ma that's a problem. Ma you know what? I just, you, you, I don't, it's, you don't I'm even sorry. know the definition of a law. I'm not it's saying like, you broke a law, sir. I'm just saying that in order to travel, this is what we needed to have happen. I've traveled I'm on sorry. Southwest Airlines for the last five years like this, and I've never had a problem. Suitably dressed, he heads home to Albuquerque to slip into something a little more comfortable. Oh, Megan, what's going on with, with the, the tiger? We really oh, haven't found out <laughs> what's going on. He's going to Detroit, though. Do you know what's going on with him? No. Back at Midway, the tiger mystery continues. Good, how are you doing? Damn. Flying out to Detroit today? Yes, I am. Yeah. So we got a tiger in our tank today? Yeah. Uh huh. Just kind of curious as to why. I can't give you an answer. Oh, okay. Just decided to do it. Just... Is life art or is art life? Yeah. You live? Uh, Oh, yeah. Keep on living, I guess, huh? But you say you're not gonna divulge any information on why you have it on either, huh? There's no information to divulge about it, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, have a good flight. <laughs> okay. Rockstar here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you go. Give him a show while you're on there, right? Well, well, that was enough.
It's a battle of wills on airline, with one man's struggle to get to El Paso. I want to go home. This is the thanks that I get. A woman fighting her emotions in Reno. I literally used it to wrap up and hold and cry. And a man on the warpath in Chicago. This is prejudice. Yeah, it is. I'm being treated unfairly. Right, now you've got me mad. At Chicago Midway, Angel's been called to handle a dispute between two passengers. The ladies jumped in front of me. I told her to get out from front of me. Come on, where? I, I told them that I stepped in front of you. There you I don't appreciate this at all. Seems the woman in question has a B boarding card. But as the bees had already boarded, she stepped in line ahead of the other passengers in the C line. Excuse me, I'm not invisible. I paid the same ticket she paid. She could just jump in front of me and act like I don't exist. Ken West and his fiance have C boarding passes. Let me get this off my chest. I'm not invisible. She jumped in front of me. I asked her that was very rude. I don't appreciate it. So then she turned around and started cussing me out. Okay, I didn't do nothing. So then she turned around and cussed me out some more. I said, I, I think you need to go somewhere else. So then she stepped out of the line. Now all this is because of that? What did I do? You don't have to yell, sir. We, we just Excuse me, I'm there. upset. Okay, well that lady over there is crying as well. We have witnesses. I don't understand this. Excuse you didn't call her over here and interrogate her? Okay, she was very upset. About what? Yeah, okay, so about about getting in front of me there. and cussing me out? Sir. Right, I'm sorry. I'm insulted. Okay. And I need the, 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 the apology somewhere around here. I'm a paying customer, ain't I? Where are you trying to go to? Las Vegas, home. Okay. And you're on this. Let me see the next flight. Why do I have to have a next flight? I can't let you board on this flight. Why? Because right now, a lot of people are intimidated and frightened of him. Because what the people way, the way are intimidated shopping. and frightened? Okay, I'm not going to go into names or anything. You know what? My brother is a people. police officer. Do I need to call him? This is ridiculous. If they, no, well, no, let me just say one, let me say one thing. If he does not fly, that woman better not be on the plane either. Wait, wait, I it's as simple as that. Lady that cussed me out, jumped in front of me. I asked her not to do it. She got out of the way. Now I can't fly home. He's upset because he's a little louder than this one, but this woman went off. Oh, hell no. And threatened There's food at all in this bag. Whoa. At Baltimore Washington International, TJ inspects a bag containing some tiny stowaways. Oh, look at them all. Look at that. Yeah. No, TSA just sent it over. Somebody just checked it upstairs. All kinds of dried food and a whole ant colony, apparently. Oh, oh man. Dang. Yeah, this ain't going. I can't go. The whole bag's not gonna be able to go yeah, if there's ants in it. Put the whole bag in this There's bag. There's like hundreds of them in there. Here. They announced down in the gate area to go and get the passengers to come down and get the bag because obviously the bag can't go. If we don't get a hold of them, they'll go to Chicago and their bag, I guess, will just stay right here with us. So. In Seattle, Bonnie Walsh Ward is embarking on an emotional journey. You have a good time, all right? Thank we'll you. see you later. Have a okay, good one. Okay, appreciate it. My first husband was a captain, David W. Walsh, who served in Vietnam and was an infantry company commander, basically grunts, out in the field for six months when he was killed. Bonnie is reuniting the remaining members of her husband's division in Reno, 35 years after they served together in Vietnam. We now have about 150 people coming, and this is the largest gathering of a rifle company. Bonnie's hoping the veterans will help her get back something she lost after her husband's funeral. You know that there's this phrase, you're gonna wrap yourself in the flag? That's what I did. 
and it wasn't one of these, you know, rah rah patriotism. I literally used it to wrap up and hold and cry. Well, I couldn't refold it. So I brought it, and the guys are going to refold it for me. Back in Chicago, Angels called Karen for backup. Okay, this gentleman's upset because he said a lady in line jumped in front of him. She wasn't in line, and she jumped in front of me. Okay. Now, I'm being okay. escorted out, and I can't get my flight home. Okay. Andy? Because of what? You say somebody said I'm intimidating? Okay. Yeah, I'm mad. Somebody cussed me okay. out because, in public. Because you were louder than she was, but I okay. guess they didn't say anything about when she threatened his life and called him okay. a Oh, what man. happened first? First things first, sir. You need to come down because we do not transport customers that you know appear to be a threat to the flight or anything like that. You need to calm down. Let me find out from Angel. If this what woman happened. gets on the plane, y'all gonna have some trouble with me. Sir, you're, you can't get on the plane acting like this. So you need to calm down. Oh, well, if out. I'm not getting on the plane, then the person that started this mess cannot get on the plane. I don't have any so consequences. Far. I ain't done nothing wrong. Okay, well, let me find out what's happened so far. She stepped in front of him, and he got upset, so he went off on her, and that's the story. Yeah, I got, that's what happened. I had asked, I said, are you an A, B, or C loading? And he said, C, and I said, okay. And then I just got in front of him, because I thought, because so, I'd asked the guy in front of him, are you an A, B, or C, and he said, B. And I said, okay, so if he's a C, then he's a B, then I go right here. Okay, that's what happened. Okay, did you exchange words with him at that point, or I said, I'm sorry, is what I said to him, and he just started talking. I'm at that, you know. We're, we're going to see how he is if he calmed down, and we're going to look up the next flight to see if it's available. Back at BWI, TJ's now at the gates in search of the owner of the ant-infested bag. Still haven't gotten them, so we're going to go see if we can track them down. I'm going to make an announcement in the bar, see if they might be hanging out in there. Any Mertz in here? Anybody need Mertz in this bar? So what are you trying to say? My mouth is bigger than yours? Pretty much, yeah. Good luck there. We've got the boarding path deleted, so until pretty much when they try to board the plane, it's going to pop up that they don't have a boarding pass. At that point, we can pretty much intercept them okay. at the gate there and <laughs> find out what they want to do with the contents of the bag. Because as of right now, that bag is definitely not going. Initially, they thought you were on their flight, and I think you thought you were on their flight. At LAX, Yolanda's been called to help a confused passenger. It was scheduled at, at 6, at 6.55, I at think. At 6.55? Because no, the only ticket that it. you have here, I have, I have what you're looking for. The only ticket that you have here is for 8.55. The, he changed that. I, w I would have been, been here at that time. No, it's 8.55 tonight. You still have time. Because right. It's I, had a, I have a lot of time. Right. I have a lot of time. I, I, I have time to I use. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, I could have been at home eating and, and, and all of that, you know, right. and, and having a good time. But now I'm here stuck. At BWI, TJ's search continues for the owner of the ant-infested bag. First name is Mert, M-E-R-T. Spell the last name, Ustunal, U-S-T-U-N-U-N-A-L. And out steps Mert, 12 years old and accompanied by his uncle. Mert, did you, che you check in a bag downstairs? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting ready okay. to go. That bag is filled with ants. They can't go on the plane. Uh oh They will not go on the plane. That Something has to be done with that bag before Okay, can I, you can go. Take it with me. You, you can take it with you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And we'll go ahead. Yeah, we're getting ready. Okay. Mert's Turkish, and his grandmother came from Turkey two or three days ago. He was visiting, and he's going back to Chicago. So she brought from Turkey je homemade jelly and nuts and a lot of food for him to take back to his parents. Obviously, it had ants in it. So if you want to go on down, you're all set. All right. Okay. See you later. Have a good trip. Bye. See you. Bye. Good luck. Mert boards, minus his grandmother's Turkish delights. 
In Chicago, Karen tells Ken West and his fiance their options. Um, it appears as though um, whatever happened over there was it wasn't any more anyone's fault that I guess she asked you what group you were going into and you said C or and she tried to I guess cut in front of you. She didn't try. She walked okay, and stepped in front of okay. me. And he just said get away from I'm me. I'm not going to be disrespected. Yes. Okay. I'm a hard working man. I, I don't break no laws. I ain't got no business being treated like this. Okay. Okay. But we sir, we have to make a decision based on what we feel comfortable your situation is at okay, this now, point. We have not been able to you, reason with you or talk to you without you yelling you, and screaming at us. If you want to help me, then you get her over here. Okay. For what? The only reason she can't catch the flight for okay. for me. Your reaction to and from what Andy and the ops agent witnessed, your reaction after all this is what we have to deny you boarding for, not what happened in the little altercation between two customers. The Excuse way me. We, if you were being detained because you did nothing wrong, would you be happy about okay. it? Well, I have a choice right now, sir, to either deny you boarding for the day or to put you on the next flight, depending on how we're going to handle the situation. Then I guess you need today. to make your decision. Okay, and okay. I I need your cooperation to make the decision. If what this, do you want me to do? I just need you to. Tie me up, put me in handcuffs, no, I just need shut to, me up. No, I just need you to calm I'm a down. bolsterous person. I've always been that my okay. whole life. Well, if you're going to continue to be that way, sir, I can't transport you to Las Vegas today. That's the, that's what I need you to do. Then I will just have me. to get my lawyer then, my man, because this is not acceptable. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> in Reno, Bonnie's Alpha Company reunion is underway. <laughs> I know you just said, Bonnie, is that you? <laughs> Many are meeting for the first time since serving together in Vietnam 35 years ago. We swore to one another years ago if we ever got out of this place alive, we'd try to get in touch with one another again and have a reunion. Well, that dream for me is finally becoming a reality. Oh, oh well, thank you for looking for me. Bonnie's husband led the division and made an impression on all the men, including company chaplain Max Sullivan. What I know about Bonnie, she gave us her best, her husband. No, oh, Max. He's he, was our a great, he was a great commander. And I happened to be there at the time that he was killed. And of course, didn't know Bonnie until several months ago. Mm -hmm. But since then, she's a super gal. <laughs> he was such a bigger than life individual that was uh, really a favorite to all the people in the field because he he was more concerned about keeping everybody safe and alive than he was about whatever it was that people above would want him to do, you know. I feel without them, I wouldn't have felt whole. And for them to honor me with such kind words and such attributes. Back at LAX, passenger George Washington is still confused about the time, but now Yolanda wonders whether he should fly at all. You determined that he smelled like alcohol and uh, I didn't really anything. smell it. I mean, okay. it just started being loud, and okay. he just looked to me to be under the influence of okay. something. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so I did What's check your well I did check your reservation and um, uh oh my concern is what I'm trying to determine now is whether or not you're fit for travel because of sort of the conversation you've had with the captain and the ops uh, agent. This 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 gentleman I, I had no problem with him at all. Any which way. Okay. I'm a military man. All I told him was, look, I work real hard for this country and this is the thanks I get. Is that what you were saying? You're injured from and you're just coming back from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And this is the thanks I get? Here's what I have to determine. Phoenix, Phoenix, El Paso, anyway. All I do all I do I want to make my final destination. That's all I want. I want to go home. I already been everywhere. This is the thanks that I get. Well, I'm certainly not trying to to put any undue stress on you. I want to go you. home. That's and all. I, and I want to get you home, sir. If your flight doesn't leave till 55. I want to take you over okay. to the gate. Thank you very much. Okay. You, he's just really upset. I mean, he's just come back from the war. He's injured. Um, obviously, home means a lot to him right now, which I can totally understand. 
Little does Yolanda know, not everything is as it seems. If you're not going to come down, if you're not going to just accept you just what keep has happened. just at me like I did something wrong. In Chicago, things are at a stalemate with Ken and his fiance. Put my shoes on. I cannot put you on board. Put my shoes on. Somebody telling you they're going to take you, not let you go home because if you they're telling you you can't get on your flight. Right. If you continue to act the way that you're acting, yes, I cannot transport you on there. I cannot put you on an airplane with flight attendants serving you and serving other customers. I cannot put you on there knowing they that this is the They didn't do nothing wrong to me. Just the people that I do me that wrong. I are having a difficult time even trying to talk to you. The you won't even get the woman off the plane. The captain has made the decision. And she gets to get on the plane and so somebody me. else. Wait a minute. If he cries, will he get, be, get to go on the plane no. too? No. If he cries, I bet he can cry no. too. Whatever the ops agent Andy witnessed, or he, they, they told this the This is prejudice. Yes, it, it is. is. I'm uh, being treated up early. Discrimination. Okay. Right. Now you've got me mad. Okay, well, we have to, we're going to have to deny this. Point. Okay. No. Yes. This, no. Is, this is unacceptable. Who is your manager? Excuse me. He was just. He couldn't get past the fact that he was being denied boarding on this flight and the other customer was not. Based on what the ops agent observed firsthand, the ops agent felt what he witnessed that that customer, the gentleman, did not did need to be denied boarding and the lady did not. All I did was tell the lady that was a rude move. That's all I did, and I wasn't even allowed. Now they're telling me they might not, might not even be able to fly out of here today. There was just no reasoning, reasoning with him and that we just need to deny him boarding for the night, which is a very difficult decision. We never want to, you know, disrupt somebody's flight like that, but I just felt it was in the best interest of the customers, you know, that would be traveling tonight. In Virginia City, Nevada, Bonnie is taking a moment away from the reunion to reflect on memories of her husband, David. Last night before going to Vietnam, he left his school ring, his college, Lafayette College ring, in uh, my purse. And he just simply wrote me a letter while he was flying to Vietnam that said, by now you will have found the ring I left. When I get back, I'd either like to have it back or exchange it for another. In either case, please take care of it. And so I considered that somewhat of a proposal. Shortly after they married, David went on his second tour as a captain of Alpha Company. That company was everything. To David. It was his job, it was a responsibility. The people, the men in it, they trusted one another, they gave their lives for one another, they took bullets for one another, and he was as much a part of me, and I became a part. And to finally meet these people, and to be able to say, thank you for being such good soldiers, and thank you for remembering your dead buddies, including my husband. Thank you for being that band of brothers. Bonnie heads back to the reunion in Reno, where her husband's burial flag will at last be refolded. At LAX, Yolanda's got George to the right gate, but decides to make one final call before boarding him. Hi, are you um, George Washington's, you're his dad? Okay, I just wanted to make sure he seems um, really upset and he's traveling with us today on Southwest Airlines. <laughs> um, well, he just seems to be a little bit upset. He was crying and seems to be, did he just come back from Afghanistan? Uh-huh, what happened? I think I've been had. <laughs> His dad said he fell off a roof and had to get a hip replacement because he's not. That's not funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that he's um, not been in the military. <laughs> I was like near tears thinking he was a war veteran, but apparently. According to his family, he just fell off a roof. They say George Washington never told a lie, but in L.A., anything's possible. In Reno, the remaining members of Alpha Company line up again 35 years since serving together in Vietnam. Bonnie finally experiences the flag-folding ceremony she's been waiting for. PFC Jerry Douglas Clark. April 11, 1968. 
Staff Sergeant Wayne Clifton Sear, May 7, 1968. TFC Roger Allen Fesident, May 7, 1968. TFC Burl Denton Hewitt, May 13, 1968. Very happy President of the United States. God bless you. Stop, January 18, 1969. Special, special support, Jean Leroy, it's just um, very, <laughs> I didn't think I'd cry again, but just to have it done right. And with the uh, people standing, I thought we were going to do it back in the hall, with such a sense of, it was to all the members.